roll now. <laughs> no pictures, please. Good luck. Big, big value. <laughs> Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrin has done it! Two main event cycles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Prague and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's day four of the main event, the day we play down to the final two tables here at King's Casino at the Hilton Prague. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Nick Walsh. Hello, hello, thank you so much for having me. 46 players remain, returning for day four from a starting field of 1,285. And if we look at the full list of players, there is a lot of talent in this field, Nick, including several former champs. Yeah, absolutely. Very stacked field. Very exciting times. A record-breaking EPT turnout. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I got a couple favors in the field. Let's see if they can pull it off. We will be back tomorrow when we play down to the final six, and then we'll bring you the final day of this tournament on Sunday as we play down to a champion. Live tomorrow at 12.30 Central European time, same as today. On Sunday for the final table, live at the slightly later time of 1 p.m. Look forward to hearing from you over the course of today and tomorrow. As things stand, CPS is on. Chat Pro Saturday will be a thing if you're using the live chat on Twitch or YouTube. But there is still plenty of time to ruin it for everyone and have it vetoed. <laughs> So let's check on the chip leaders coming into day four. It's John Kite from Norway, who's going to be on our first feature table, who has the biggest stack, 2.2 million. Behind him, a former EP. And with 46 players remaining, everyone's locked up at least 18,260 euros. Tomorrow, we're going to start paying out those six-figure scores. And on Sunday, someone's going to be receiving more than a million euros, that top prize of more than a milli for the champion of the EPT Prague 2023 main event, along with the main event trophy. Lots of exciting poker to be played over today, tomorrow, and Sunday from the last EPT of 2023. Our first feature table. We've got John Kite, we've got Marley Sprague. We also have Preben Stocken. Stocken blocking. Plus, our French colleagues, Benny and you, tell us that Sir Shashin and Adrian Gouin are very entertaining a little bit crazy and have a big following in their home country. Guyon and Serge are crazy, you don't say. Romain Retier is the other French player on the main stage. Table two features O'Dwyer and Mulder, second and third in chips. So a very good chance we're gonna flip tables when we get to the first break of the day and give those guys some time on the main stage. There will be a redraw when we get down to 24, the final three tables, and play will stop tonight when we hit the final two tables, the final 16. Now, should things go the distance, should we play six full levels and not be at 16, we'll stop there. But I think there's a very good chance we get to 16 players, we get to two tables inside of six levels today, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and James were discussing this earlier. Play has been very speedy. I haven't seen any 
slowdown or necessary need to call clocks thus far. Lots of pros in the field. They pretty much know what they're doing. Very, very well rehearsed in these games. There's my boy, Jan Kite himself. Love to see this guy go far. It is worth highlighting that right now we're playing a 56 big blind average, and you're not wrong, Nick. It has been going at a fast pace. But Joe, we've seen time and time again, once you start getting to the bigger payouts, and once you get to the point in the tournament where there's a money jump with every elimination, it does slow down. It definitely slows down, but just to say, yesterday several people were out of time bank cards by the time we got to the end of the day. So not to say that things weren't moving fast, but people have been taking their time with their decisions as well. Can't really blame them as well. So many tough spots against so many tough opponents, yeah. right? But actually, you're right. I mean, there was plenty of time bank cards used, but they were really interesting spots, so we didn't mind watching them, right? Didn't feel like a drag to observe. Of course. So one of the French players at the feature table, Serge Cheshin, is an online qualifier. Won his seat into the EPT Prague main event for 250 euros, but has played a fair few live events. Had an 80th place finish in the 2022 WSOP main event and also cashed EPT Prague in March of last year. Blinds are 10K, 15K with a 15K big blind ante. The clock is running and we are good to go. I haven't played with anyone else besides him, I think. I haven't played with anyone in the whole tournament. Uh, Not one. I did. Person one more time. This table? Yeah, I played yeah. with you for like five minutes at the end yesterday, but yeah, that's yeah. it. Everyone else is new. I guess it was truly random. It is Grigori Roden under the gun who folds. Alberto Ruggieri is out. Preben Stocken has passed. Queen Jack for John Kite. Do you think he minds his name being anglicized, Nick? Going with John Kite rather than Yon Kite? I'll, 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 I'll actually tell you a funny story. I'm not even sure if it's pronounced Yon Kite, but we, we have a back and forth about how nobody ever pronounces his name right, so he doesn't even correct anyone anymore. So I just said, I'm going to call you Yon Kite from now, and he goes, ah, you're not a million miles off. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting how so many of the Nordic players have just accepted that their names are going to get anglicized and just they go with it. I mean, you know, plus... Joe Smith it is. <laughs> Joe Smith indeed flying high like a kite though that's fine too I'm sure he's happy as long as his name ends up at the top spot I'm sure he doesn't mind height what you call him it's all good well he raised with Queen Jack Ooh. he has paired his Jack but it's trip kings for Shashan the French qualifier 97% favorite and leads 25k lead we've been warned about this play already haven't we James lots of unconventional poker being played. At least we were warned as much from our French commentators. And now checks the turn, having bet 25,000 on the flop. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that lead is extremely unconventional, but that's kind of what we were warned to look out for from Shishan. Mm. Well, it's a bet of 50,000 from Kite on the turn. Kite's going to get all the info he needs, I think, right here. He's a kite blowing in a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking the Hollywood here, actually. It looks pretty legit, too. Looks like a legit decision, right? It's not uh, The Oscar goes to Shashan here. Let's see how he plays the river. Check calls the turn. River card is the nine of spades. So the open-ended straight draw gets there. <laughs> now another lead, I love it. <laughs> 75,000. Oh man, look at the... John's thinking, oh, this is weird. What a weird line. Would he really do this with a king? Would he really lead and then lead river? The answer is yes. Yeah, exactly. And I know he's blocking uh, queen 10 or whatever, but I feel like that's another hand that might kind of play it funny like this. Yeah. And it will get him paid. Curiosity call potentially from Kite. Shashan winning the first hand of the day. <laughs> <laughs> 
John Kite still has more than two million. Shashan chips up to over 1.1 million. Ted is asking how many big blinds Marley has. 93 big blinds at the start of day four. Absolute. Yeah. Huge, huge stack at this stage. So the late stage of the of the EPT here in Prague. She's a top ten stack and she's number two in chips at this particular table. Yeah, doing doing fantastic. Love to see Marley doing well in this. Yeah. We've also got Maria Lampropoulou and Leo Margetz out in the field. And we've just ticked down from forty six to forty five because I've done it again. Commentators curse strikes. I have just been informed that Leo Margetz is the first player eliminated on day four. John back in action, opens to 35,000 with queen 10 of spades. King queen suited for Marley Sprague. The queen of clubs. Three bet from Mali. And action now on Roman Retier. And three bet is 115K. And this is the one that's not supposed to be Maniac. Okay. <laughs> Fold from the big blind. So action back on John Kite. Remember, guys, they are quite deep. Very deep, in fact. So I think a defend here isn't the craziest thing I've ever seen. But obviously, both players in a great position to find some ladders. Wouldn't be surprised to see a slightly tighter fold. Yeah, and I think Queen 10 isn't even... Queen 10 suited isn't even really just like a fist bump call there anyway. And Marley's going to stack up another one. Off to a good start here. I'm sorry, I took your glass like a reflex. I didn't even see it. Oh, my water? Yeah. Oh, it's OK. Sorry. <laughs> OK. My bad. It's OK. <laughs> if she got real mad, that would be great. What? That was, <laughs> that was my lucky water. I need that to live. <laughs> That's right, Christian. For as long as Marley is still in this tournament, Marley is Spraggy, and Spraggy is Ben. <laughs> you can imagine if Marley wins this, it's going to be a very Merry Christmas at the Sprague household. Cool million in the bank. And if not, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mom, we couldn't afford any presents because somebody didn't win the million. <laughs> Down to 44 players now. Maxim Shonikov, who was on our feature table yesterday, has been eliminated in 45th place. Also cashing for 18,260 euros. There is really nothing like a Shonikov. I suggest you try it. <laughs> Retier raises from the cutoff. Jashan calls on the button. And looks like Regari's in as well from the big blind with 6 5. So we are going to go three way to this flop. Ace 10 5. So. Regeri flops best? Regeri or Retari? The Italian. <laughs> but it is Retier who continues with the straight draw. What is Shashan thinking about? He's got 7-6 off. 
Yeah, I mean, even the call on the button here with the offsuit combo, very unconventional. And I think you're going to find yourself doing that a ton of the time, which is why we probably don't end up sneaking in there with uh, combinations such as that. Obviously, flatting the button here gives a lot of opportunity for a small blind, big blind to squeeze. And at this level, players really know how to spot those weak squeeze conditions and uh, can, be, can become very profitable to start uh, you know, squeeze bluffing there quite frequently. That's a nice turn for King Jack with the King of Diamonds. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Gary checks a second time. Still has a pair of fives and has picked up a no good flush draw. Because uh, all other chairs, like when we played, their back was a little bit back. And now it's without that. I mean, chairs, uh, they, they like, I guess, and our chairs is good. Yeah, yeah because it's like, if you go back, like, this uh, way, leaning. Considering calling this 90k bet. Wow, I mean, you'll notice, guys, as well, it's like huge chunk of Retieri's stack. Yeah, it does lay it down. Nice oh, good okay, turn. Okay, okay, so so decent. Decent. <laughs> decent. <laughs> Almost that. I'm running for you. All in flop, ice. All in flop, I've got a bad look-alike, Fisher Sham. The French John Oliver. I'm letting the badness wash over me. <laughs> I think it might be the perfect bad look-alike because it's not good. But it's not so bad that I can make fun of it for being bad. It's just... Bad. Chip leader back in action with ace queen of diamonds. Adrian Guillaume with ace queen off. Yeah, Guillaume, the effective stack here, 52 big blinds. Looks like he's reaching for the tree bet. I guess three betting the chip leader opening under the gun with ace queen off is in the realm of okay. Oh boy. Volley with jacks. Yeah, look at the action here as well, guys. Under the gun open, under the gun plus one three bet. This is a weird spot. Lots of players back behind. Marley yes. might just muck it. Yeah, I mean. Look, we can see the cards, but that action is real scary, and I don't know. And if things keep escalating, mm -hmm. well, exactly. you're going to have the fifth best hand. That's exactly. Well, and then things could escalate where you still have the best hand, and you fourth still got a fold. Hand. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think I'd probably do the same thing there. You're right, Lobster. That might have been the only right way to play Jax. And we're going to the flop. Both, both players, same combination. John's going to have a little bit more equity with the diamonds. Ooh, there's one. Not enough to make the flush just yet, though. Terrible fall with Jax. <laughs> yeah. They both have the back door. Both need running red. And Duncan has returned. Morning, lads. Are we playing to a winner today? No, we are not. We are playing to the final two tables. We will play to a winner on Sunday. That's right. We're going to play down to 16, or we're going to play six levels, whichever comes first. Damn. 
answer Emil's question, I don't think you would fold queens there, no. What about Ono's question? Would you have loved to see a five bet to 230K then fold to a jam? Well, first of all, it would have been a four bet, not a five bet. But what do you think about re-raising there with the intention of folding to any further betting? I think the only way to play jacks there is to skip right to the five bet, personally. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure I, 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 I like that idea. That doesn't sound quite right to me. I think uh, I think just giving it up is probably OK. It's quite a specific setup where both players have ace queen. Discount there, not 200k, 195,000. Discount and disrespect. Ooh. Betting 195,000 here with nothing, that's rude. <laughs> man, oh man. Wow. These guys want the kind of pot that everyone loves. So, do we think this goes check, check? That's the coward's way out. Imagine if John turns his hand into a bluff here. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, well. It's actually a great run out for, uh, for, the, for the defending, for the uh, uh, three bet defense, uh, defend call. But it's uh, also a really strong hand that can still be winning at showdown. So it goes check on the river. Does Guhion want to fire again? Well, there's 920 in the middle and he's only got 345 behind. Oh, yes, he shoved wow. the river! Guhion! What a life. Mr. Parts, Mr. Summer Parts. You can have it. Wowee. Maybe a spin out? Yeah. Okay. No heart, I always go. The cheek. The absolute oh, cheek. Bluffs him off the chop. That was pretty unreal. John Kite's dropped down to 1.5 million. Oh. Adrian Gurn now playing close to 1.3 million. 84 big blinds. Kite just got his string snipped. It's a very good chance that O'Dwyer or Mulder is now tournament chip Seven leader nine. by virtue of Kite losing yeah. that part. Mm -hmm. If I had a pair, I, I know call. you can do it. If I have a pair, I, I call. I know you can do it. <laughs> Take your own attempt. All right. Good news is Marley's still probably feeling okay about that. <laughs> I mean, obviously the action would have been probably a lot really different if she'd been in the pod, but still, the <laughs> you're not feeling great about Jax, are you, regardless? You're like, I was definitely up against aces, kings, or queens there, 100%. 100%. <laughs> he showed the ace, queen as well, so I don't oh, know. Oh, he did? I oh, my bad. I, I don't know if they've agreed. Well, that, that's kind of what, what John was, was sort of commenting on was... You know, are you trying to get Ace-King to fold on that river? Because, like, nothing else is folding, right? Be especially with the pot odds he has on the river. You know, I don't know if that's true or not. Could just be a little bit of table talk. But uh, I don't know if they've agreed to do the show game as well here. We haven't really heard chat of that, have we? I love it when people yeah. watching on YouTube answer their own questions. Christabel, oh, there goes the first breakage of the day. Christabel asks, is Marley out? Followed by, oh, she's still playing. Followed by, 
Nice. Cristobal. Five hands played at the feature table. Therefore, this is hand six of the day. 20 minutes into day four. The day we play down to the last two tables. This clock is much more visual than similar. This one? This one? Visual. Yeah. Six bucks. Queen, ten of diamonds. Apparently, you got to do it when it's suited. Oh, no. Nick? Yes. Are you supposed to play that hand when it's suited or no? Potentially. It depends. <laughs> you people. You people. Clyford asks, where is Ramon Kalilas? He is still in contention. And there is the chance that we will follow Ramon later on today. But again, another deep run for Ramon in an EPT. Ever since winning the PSPC in 2019, he has consistently put up amazing results in top tier tournaments. Yep, absolutely. Guy always seems to be in the cash, battling it out. Love to see a deep run from Fellow team pro as well. Queen high, still ahead. Someone please explain to T. Gizzle how feature table selection works. Thank you. Is that a rhetorical request or? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it's just I can't be bothered to address it. We've got fellow viewers. All right, so T, here's how it works. We don't construct the tables. The tables are the same as they would be if this was an untelevised tournament. We can only select which tables we think might be most interesting for the audience. And then even then, we still rotate them off so that players don't have all of their play televised most of the time. So under these circumstances, the table you're looking at right now is how the redraw happened earlier today. And now... We are going to follow this table for a level, and we're going to rotate thereafter. Hopefully, you'll get your wish, and all those players will make it through to the later stages, in which case they'll all end up on a feature table at some point. But until then, we must follow the normal flow of play. But uh, you might get your face off after all. Ace. Ace, king of strawberries. Raise to 30,000. Guillaume. One time. One time. <laughs> Thanks. Marley Sprague defending her big blind with 9 8 of spades. Let's have a spin. And an ace. Ace high is still ahead. Action has been checked to Retier. Table tall flower. Six, seven, bed, Royal flush draw. Six, One zero. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Like royal. Is this a rule now? Are they doing the show both, or is this just? I think it's voluntary. Why don't you bless me? 
I, I feel like everyone's been observing it, though. More voluntary than usual, or less <laughs> voluntary? I had a beautiful one, too. Yeah. Eight nine spades. Uh, Gorgeous. Yeah. Ace nine? Eight, nine, oh, you know who would really hate this show game? Griffin. Lee Jones. Oh. Lee Jones. The man behind Lee's lowdown, not fan of the showdown. <laughs> Wait, didn't we have a theme song for Lee's lowdown? Yep. Didn't I write different lyrics for it all the time? And then we stuck with a particular introduction. Yeah. Please, 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 please. Right? Something like that? It was please, 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 please. please. Give me, me some of that Let sweet. me get some of that Lee's. Low down. Low down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it feels like a different lifetime. It was. Many, many please, years ago. Please, please. You guys will notice this Trey Deuce of Diamonds open on the button here. Definitely, Eon. definitely on the wide side. Take a walk on the wide side. Door. I see a pair of deuces. And that is the best hand right now, Nick. So wide is right. <laughs> Gouillon. And we saw him blasting off with the ace queen just now. Do you think he's going to miss the opportunity to see that ace queen deuce? Probably not. 40,000 chips in the middle. Marl's got a gut shot. And obviously, as we can see, the best hand right now as well, but still a player to act behind. If she's played it all with this guy, maybe. Uh, Maybe she can find a check race here once in a while. That would be pretty spicy. All right, makes the fold. That's also totally reasonable. Better. 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 Whoa, Better. that's scary. I have a set of goose. Yeah. You waste my time. <laughs> go, go, Guillaume. Obviously, you have queens. Good fun. Fishier, yeah, you're correct. It wasn't the best hand, of course. Pair of deuces best. My apologies. Yeah, we established. You open with Trey Deuce there every time. That is Marco Raganashi being eliminated in 43rd place. That takes us down to 42 players in the EFT Prague main event. Marco! And um, I think we're losing a player from the main stage because we've got to keep the tables balanced. I think Jean Olivier a.k.a. Serge Shashan, is being balanced off. You are not that good for TV table. <laughs> like that. Brutal. Okay, like that. <laughs> good friend, huh? <laughs> Director of the side so <laughs> Okay. So just to clarify, because there was some confusion based on what I said at the start of the broadcast. Right now, Chat Pro Saturday will happen tomorrow, which is Saturday. <laughs> but the antics and behavior of certain people on a Friday may make me change my mind. And right now, you're already ruining it. With stuff like, where do I find the free roll for golden ticket, please? Looked yesterday, okay. could not see them. Yeah, that's <laughs> the kind of stuff we're talking about. <laughs> How about, has there been any straight flushes in this tournament so far? The answer is yes. Yeah. There was. There was one against uh, against Marley, going against Marley, I should say. I got a golden ticket. So 
that you guys might have noticed. We did get Shishan balanced off the table just now. Lost one of our French action players. Thank God we still have Steve Zissou. <laughs> I love that movie. Was uh, Stockham blocking his reader there? Because we didn't see his hold cards. <laughs> going to be Preben Stocken who starts the action here. Under the gun, folds. The other Norwegian at the table, former chip leader John Kite, still the biggest stack at this table, has pocket threes and opens. Kite in the mix, starts the hand with about 106 big blinds. And running an ace queen once again, Reterrier. Retire. 28 bigs on the button. Raise. A re-raise from the button. Three bets to 100K. Kings for Grigory Rodin in the small blind. And look at his pose. Just take one of those hands down. <laughs> he is definitely a thinker. <laughs> the double thinker. <laughs> 66 big blinds. And he's going to make it just a smidge more than that 100K three bet. So what is the minimum four bet when the three bet's 100? Uh, another 70-ish K is the min. Uh, it would be 165,000 would be the minimum. Right. And how do you come up with that? Because the size of the last race was 65,000, 35 to 100 K. Got it. That's the one. I would be heading right, for the one. hills here. The fullback gets through. Seems good. <laughs> 78 big blinds for Rodin, who is fourth in chips at this particular table. Oh, good. Players can order some drinks, which they can then drop on the floor and smash. I need a still water. I mean, at least the stage is carpeted. Talking water for me, too. Please. Thank you. Still water, please. Thank you. Whoa, slow down, everybody. Uh, I feel bad. <laughs> because I drank your water. I took your water. Oh, no, don't worry. Oh, no. It's fine. King Queen of Diamonds for Kite opens under the gun to 35,000. Why even bother? Someone's just going to wake up with aces. <laughs> <sighs> Triple off with Ace Queen when you got Ace Queen. Yeah. Round to the blinds. Round to Preben Stocken in the big blind. 10 4 of Diamonds. Not so much. It's okay. Think of it with a disadvantage now. Lights Out Loser on Twitch says, I think I'm the only person that doesn't like sparkling slash carbonated water. I'm the other one. We're part of the same little gang, Lights Out Loser. Same little gang of boring ass losers. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even drink bubbles in his water. <laughs> it tastes like lemonade that's gone wrong. I love it. James is English, so he thinks it's spicy. <laughs> Too much joy in a sparkling water for these people. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen James drink a soda. I don't drink soda. I don't drink sparkling water. I mean, most of the time it's just decaf Earl Grey. If I took you, hold on a second. 
Uh, if I took you to like a Mexican restaurant in LA, would you have a Mexican Coke as a treat? <laughs> no, I'd have a spicy margarita. <laughs> <laughs> It's my standard order at a Mexican restaurant. So right now we're watching the players at the feature table out in the field. We've got Ramon Calias. Where is the Christmas jumper? You've got to harness the power of the festive season, Ramon. Turn Mulder is at table two along with Steve O'Dwyer. Chance are we'll see these guys on the main stage later on today. Neil Farrell is sat across from Maria Lampropoulou. Both those players are former EPT champions. And that's right, we've got Roll Neck Ramon today. Okay, that's okay. going to require that's going to require some new lyrics. Very lyrics. good, very good. James, I'll handle things for a minute. You get you get right in. Roll Neck Ramon, here we go. James's songs that he writes for this stuff, by the way, are better than any Broadway musical I've ever seen. That includes Hamilton. Wow. We just lost a huge segment of the audience there, Joe. I'm Alexander. I mean, they, all, all musicals do is just sing what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Rodin has made it. 30,000 King 5 suited. Queen is suited for Regary. Just a flat on the button, otherwise known as in the position. I see a club, I see another club, and I see a yak. An opportunity per chance. The effective stack here being Rugetti, 35 big blinds. Continuation bet for 55. Jerry does have a gut shot. Don't imagine we see a fold here too often. King Queen obviously can be the best of it right here, right now, but obviously the opportunity to improve to the gut shot as well. Nice. Oh, raise. Wow. Finding the raise. Can't go fold in the nut flush draw. Rodin. Makes the call. Got nearly 300, excuse me, over 350 in the middle and Makes the flush on the turn. Potential for a street flash, Joe. That's right. Steel wheel possibilities. You can love these lyrics, Nick. Yeah? Can you type them out for us? I've maximized the alliteration just to screw with you. Oh, geez. But don't worry, however bad you do, you will not butcher it the same way that Griffin does. At least you know the guy's name. Oh. Follow Moran. <laughs> James, if I spent my whole life just trying to do slightly better than Griffin, I think I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Dan decides just to lead into the player who's putting in a raise. I'm not sure if I love this. If your opponent's raising on the flop, I feel like there's a chance they're going to continue barreling on the turn quite often. The lead, I think, kind of screams strength. Uh, there's already a decent chunk of change in the middle with the raise on the flop. It does get away from it. Still a nice pot to win, though, for Rodin. 
Okay, Nick. Roll neck Ramon. <laughs> roll neck Ramon. Beige but sassy, sleek oh, and snazzy. Nice. He's roll neck Ramon. Hey, okay. uh, you know what? I, for some reason, I feel like that's actually going to be easier for me, yeah. but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I, 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 I like it. I, I, I try to keep it simple. I especially like it because A5 cubing and more just said, James and Joe work like bread and butter of commentary. Joe being funny, while James being the analytical commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Irreverent song lyrics, yes. Top level poker analysis, no. no. So Masik on Twitch just said, Rodin is a coach of the most profitable and famous CIS backing found. That's the TV show, right? With the guy with the sunglasses. Ow! Wow! That one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the one in Vegas, the one in Miami, Looks the one like in Los he Angeles. Them dead. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Somebody missed their backdoor straight draw. <laughs> wow! He's gonna find it hard to write without hands. Wow! Oh, Gion loves the Dolly Parton. Calls out of the big blind with 9-5. Ruggieri, a 2-1 favorite with ace-king. And the flop is <laughs> jack-8-6. Seventh size coming. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, jack. Queen is good too. Oh! Or a queen. He's now up and down. Queen's not ex not good. Well, it, it will complete a straight yes. that he thinks is good. Sure how I feel about the the defend with nine five here as well though. Seems like an extremely wide defend here. Does have a good price. It's probably not burning money with the big blind ante in there, but oh, okay, oh. that's spicy. That's the one a spicy meatball. I really hate the defend with queen five. <laughs> With nine five. Man, when you get bad into here, you're just like, really? Uh, you're loving absolute life, and I'm all for in. For real? <laughs> Joe, I'm all in every single time. All of it, every single disc, every single fun disc in the world. I might check my hand here just to make sure that I have the nuts. Then I'd be all in. I like the Hollywood here, though. It really looks like he's trying to figure out how much he has behind. <laughs> For a second, I thought he was going to mock his cards. <laughs> all of it, every single fun disc on planet Earth. There's the all in. Funny wood, my friend. Wow, what a river. Pretty sure you're easy. What a river. If you can get away from this, that's pretty <laughs> impressive, too. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you, you can use more time then? No? Uh huh? Uh, you understand? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah? Hollywood, you understand? You fold? Yeah, proud. Sure. Okay. Gion does make the lay down. <laughs> Wants Ruggieri to show. Seems a little annoyed that Ruggieri used a time bank and then jammed with the nuts. I'm not going to lie, I take it a little personally too. Yeah? Yeah, I know I shouldn't. <laughs> I know I shouldn't, but if somebody had the nuts and they like time banked, I'd be like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Come on, bro. 
It depends how it's. It, for me, it depends how good they made it look. If they make it look really stupid, and you're like, all right, nice Hollywood, bro. They, that that kind of that would tick me off. Forty-one players. Great fold, though. Out in that field, yeah, good fold. Guyan, you, Guyan. I, I feel like Guyan's the kind of guy that has really good live reads, and I feel like in that moment he's like, yeah, it's, just, it's, yeah, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. It is all part of the game, Ed Kilworth. It's all part of the game. That's why I have to limit the amount that I play this game because I am way too emotional. <laughs> You're too empathetic, Joe. Um, I have all of the emotions. I'm too empathetic. I'm too impatient. I take things too personally. I, I, any bad emotion you can have at the poker table, I have it. I'm genuinely frightened. I mean, anything. Jealous of people who make hands. Every bad emotion you can have at the poker table, I have it. Well, it's two pair for Ruggieri. Not much for Marley to be excited about. It's one bit. 30,000. Continuation back to 30,000 for Ruggieri and a fold from Marley Sprague. Zoomer Finn, none of us have played the new RoboCop game yet, but I did ask for it for Christmas. Hold on, uh, Which means I should get around to playing it about March. Of 2029. Luckily, we don't have a PCA this year, so I might actually get to play some video games in early January. Oh, nice. Maybe. Nine all right, everybody, one conversation. I have nines, nines. All this nines. <laughs> All this nines. You sure? And you? Pass. We have fives. You sure this? She's one pass. It's fine. I show one. One. You can see. You can see. You're probably left that hand. She's five pass. I just want to say good fold again there. Just knowing you're up against Ace King, yeah. folding yeah. a straight. It, it all went pretty quick. You didn't lose too much time back there. But uh, yeah, we breezed over it pretty swiftly. That was a very good fold with the river straight with the nine. Do you feel he has received the appropriate number of claps? Never enough claps in chat, James. That's my motto. I can, I can, I can, do, it. I can do it in bluff, but I have a six, seven pass. Simeon asks, why is there not going to be a PCA this January? Well, obviously, because Joe's going to be playing the new RoboCop game. We work around Joe's schedule. Sorry. It's very simple. <laughs> I put in for it months ago. Have, have you already played the new Spider-Man game? A little bit, yes. Because you were jazzed about that. and I, play, I played it for maybe a half hour. You're just too busy, Joe. I'm too busy. And I feel bad asking Santa Claus for video games for Christmas because I know by the time I get around to playing it, it's going to be like half the price it is now. <laughs> you didn't get your Cyber Monday discount, whatever it was. I still, I'm still playing. I'm still slowly weaning myself off of Starfield. Yeah, sure. I got Baldur's Gate. I got to play. I still even cracked the last Final Fantasy game. To be fair, Joe, I, I did purchase Baldur's Gate, sit down for about an hour, and I haven't touched it since as well. So I'm in the same boat as you. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. Not, not because I wasn't enjoying it, but again, had to get back to work, unfortunately. Ace 10 in the big blind for Rodin. These are the two biggest stacks at the table, by the way. I can't get over how much he looks like Nick Pine. <laughs> That's not a bad lookalike. That's a good lookalike. I think I took a picture of him last time he was on stream and sent it to Nick. Oh! Yikes. Two pair for Rodin. Kite with second pair and a straight draw. Is a three to one underdog here. The action's been checked to him. Can 
continues for 25,000. 25,000. Proves to a full house on the turn. Kite drawing dead. Check to him a second time. And the problem with that ace on the turn is all this blockers nonsense because now he's going to think his queen's good there. Yeah, but I think also his hand is such that he can check again if he if he if he so wishes. Uh, I don't think betting the turn is ridiculous either though, which is what he's going to go for. I'm Rodan. I think I like a flat here again. If he has value, he's probably going to continue barreling. If he has bluffs, you want to keep those in as well. I think the biggest issue is that they're quite deep, so I think raising the turn to try and play for stacks is also a very reasonable line. You can see both players here redonkulously deep. John's still 1.4 behind. Rodan is still 1.1 behind or thereabouts. Five seconds. Good fold. Yeah, I've been a rough couple rounds here for uh, for John Kite. He seems to be getting blown around in the wind. He's just he, he seems to be making the right moves and then he's just kind of getting all caught up in the caught up in the pre-flop action, couple ugly post-flop scenarios too. We're going to the outer tables where Maria Lampropoulou's in a hand against Cesar Garcia. Garcia, one of the chip leaders at the start of the day has raised to 30,000. And uh, Maria Lampropoulou announces all in. Garcia looks back at his cards and folds. So Maria chipping up to around 350,000. I forgot what a killer Maria Lampropoulou is. It's terrifying. Back to the feature table where Kite's in action again, raising an early position with 9-8 of spades. 41 players remaining in the EPT Prague main event. Big blind defend from Umberto Ruggieri. Ace four. Well, there's an ace, but two spades on the flop. Action stations. <laughs> it's your boy John back in the mix. I think you see about this almost 100%. One third pot seems fine. Even smaller, nearly nearly a quarter, a little bit more than a quarter. Go ahead. Queen of clubs on the turn. Ruggieri now a three to one favorite. One. But what's a 10 now? Right, eight, nine, ten, Jack Queen. Yep, ten would give him a straight as well. I think we see two barrels here quite often. You can still get some Deuce X to fold, maybe some weaker Jack X to fold. I'd say from a GTO perspective, Jack X never folds turn here, or very rarely does. But uh, against human beings, different story. You could argue UTG plus one has a pretty large number of asex combos though so you can understand why mm -hmm. See one call. jerry calls river card is the seven of spades that is the flush for john kite kite is flying high kite finally getting rewarded here 
great run out for the old eights, nine of spades. See one two. I think I like 180,000 on the river. No. Yes. <laughs> it's prediction time. Ooh, how close is this prediction going to be? Oh, he absolutely drills it. He absolutely <laughs> drills it. Prediction confirmed. <laughs> and the crowd reacts with no applause. Uh, okay, <laughs> chat, prove him wrong. Get some claps in there. <laughs> Five seconds. Time bank played by Ruggieri. All right, Nick, let's talk about, let's predict some other things. <laughs> let's predict what possible bluffs. What, uh, what John is going to have here? Yeah. Loads of stuff that have a king of spades. Good one call. Oh, wow, gets paid. Oh, the 180 works. Apparently, Ruggieri thought there was Ooh. a lot of bluffs also. Oh, Alberto Ruggieri. Takes a big hit there. He's down to 20 big blinds. Kite back up to 1.8 million. Bless you, Preben Stocken. See, persistence pays off, Joe. Couple rough spots, no problem. No problem. Just expertly size your river bets, and everything's going to be fine. You got to make the flush first, Nick. <laughs> That's the hard part. Confirmation that we are down to the final five tables. As we witness the elim elimination of Daniel Erlinson out in 41st place for 18,260 euros. 40 players remain, spread across five tables of eight. You sure we can't play to a winner today? I mean, if you want to keep going until like 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, just play through the night. You, you, you know, we can the do that. All hands I, hand, I, win. <laughs> I don't even think that would do it, would it? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, maybe because people would just want to go. Why did you fall? Like voluntary disqualification? Why did you fall? Sorry, it's good. What? I'm the first hand again. Against the king? No, no, which means you and you. Eyes. You have eight. You had zero percent equity. But if I have a heart, I don't fold. I don't have a heart. No, it's not my question. Why did you fall? Why I fold? Yeah, only because of heart. I think you have like no. queen of hearts. Not why. What did you fall? Oh, I just say you have two percent. Uh... <laughs> okay. So you fall hastily. You, you can never win. Good call. I was bluffing. Mm -hmm. I was so close to the jam that I should have done. But I want you to bluff. I call every card. Except bluff five. sounds the best in French. Bluff. 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 Le bluff. Bluffing. I'm lucky for you. I Le didn't have a heart in my hand. <laughs> Cut off, smashing this board. Top pair, top kicker. Let's see, Seven bet, 40,000. Stuck and folds. I haven't seen too much action from old Prebs, but hasn't had too many spots to enter the pot. So obviously, we are currently playing seven-handed on the main stage. I just referenced the fact that we're down to 40, so a table's broken. We are getting a new player. Andreas Berggren from Sweden is going to be occupying the empty seat. But not yet. You have to wait for him. Average stack now about... 963k, is that right, James? Five tables selected. Yeah, close to a million chips now. What? You have to wait until the hand is How many bigs is okay. that? Yeah. A lot. Hashtag quick maths. Online, actually. Six, seven, five. Jonathan Sanson. Who are online? And also. 
playing some sweet stuff at home. <laughs> so according to the trusty widget, we are meant to finish this level with between 38 and 39 players. Hashtag widget. Trust the widget. All hail the widget. Kite back in the mix, defending the big blind versus Marl's open with the Suda King. I'm so sick of hearing about the widget. Can it drive a car? Can it buy beer? Can it make love to a woman? No. Enough. Oh, could get spicy here. Both players connecting with the seven. Better kicker for Sprague, though. Never mind, let's get some value. Yeah. Bring it on down to value, Bill. Good ball. Well, here comes Andreas. Welcome, welcome. It's quite hard to be bluffing, isn't it? Hard to bluff? Hello. Maybe. He said hello. She doesn't bluff, it's just his stuff. It's not fine, I'm just doing it. It's pretty hard for us. I felt a bit alone. Yeah, but no. Yeah, actually, it's not something. You got too much shot on when you were dash checking. Obviously, they're losing, but that's the problem. Maybe she knows. We'll know in 30 minutes. Huh? You'll find out in 30 minutes. Not really. Or whatever. I'm better off. I'm better off. Nigai Yeah. Yeah. How much would I bet? Already one hour. Not many. It's kind of been the theme of this tournament that when you sit down at this feature table, you get dealt a hand immediately. <laughs> and Bergren coming to the table with 15 big blinds, guys, and it's going to just open it not all in just for the two bigs. Kite has napkins in the small blind. Guyan does too, but we've seen him put in some pretty wide defense with the big blind ante in play. We saw the old four gapper defend, the two gapper, no problemo. I actually prefer this than the 9 5, to be honest. Queen Jack 6. Does this make the cut for you, Joe? I know you said you just refused to defend certain combos. Uh, suited, I would defend this. Offsuit is a no-go for okay. me. Also depends who I'm playing against, which I think is is probably a good answer. If it's a player that I think I'm going to be able to see multiple streets for free, then uh, yeah, sure, why not? Sounds good. Good adjustment. Yeah, I put it on my... Okay, I think that's working, right? 
Yeah, should be. Yeah, should be room. Ah, she missed. Yeah, yeah because I had yeah. eggs. You also said. I, 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 I here. Uh, but you said still. Did you get yours? Uh, I'm not sure. No. Mm. Yeah. 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 No, but you didn't get oh, it. Maybe oh, maybe Oh, okay. Yeah, she just gave still instead of a spark. That's okay, fine. two still one. Yeah, whatever. Six, seven, pass. Six, eight, pass. Six, ten, pass. Round to the button. John Kite with ace five off suit. Six four raise. Fifty five thousand. Six five pass. Six six pass. And it's raise it and take it. Yep, John's been plenty active here yeah. since we've started our first feature table session, but um, also had, kind of had the right hands to do so as well. I wouldn't say he's getting particularly out of line. Seems like all very reasonable opens. Hand selection, pretty on point here pre-flop. Yeah. Your hands. Huh? I feel that no one will see your hands on TV. Not sure. Oh, that is a raise out of turn. Action is on Bergeron. They usually come up here and say, Well, the raise stands. Rodin making it 30,000 with Queen 10. Eager, you got Table is way too big. It is. Never seen somebody so excited to raise Queen 10 offsuit. And Mr. Kite is going to three bet. Ho oh, ho, wait a second. Guyan, King Queen. Any chance of a cold four bet, Joe? I think there's a chance. Oh, ho, ho, let's go to town. Oh, the raise out of turn dynamic that just makes the entire world go off its axis. Classic. These two have history, though. You'll recall that encounter. John was oh, yeah. not very happy about the ace queen, ace queen scenario that uh, we saw very early on at the start of today's play. Does Mr. Kite get stubborn? And it works. Wow. Excellent. Wow. Excellent he cold four bet. He three bet and he still came in with the cold four. Wow. That's strong. <laughs> that is strong. Let's see that one. What a guy. Yeah. Figured. What was I believed you. What do you think when there's two kings? If you show one, we both know. <laughs> what do you mean was strong? Like four bet? Or yeah, I, yeah. Four bet is like strong action. Oh, yeah. In, in, on average. Well, I mean. he gave a speech too, and then he. Yeah. Yeah. His speech is more from the uh, French one part. <laughs> has the opposite effect. 20 minutes on the level, 20 <laughs> minutes until the first break of the day. We've seen six eliminations so far, 40 players remaining. There'll be a fair few more today. We'll have to redraw at 24. We'll play down to 16, the final two tables. You want to 270? 275. 6 raise, Let's go. 
in absolute position on the button here. Marl's ace eight off, puts it in the muck. That one's going in my notebook. This is a wider open though. We were just talking about Jan playing a pretty good solid range. Gonna be widening up the old range now. Still our table chip leader, our feature table chip leader. Now on 17 big blinds. 5-4 suit. Can I peel this one? You gotta you have peel to. this Okay, one. good. Okay, it good. Is. I would rather you peel this. I'm dying than, to peel this. I would like rather okay. you peel this than like ace three off. Yeah, okay, sure. I'd rather have this than ace three off. Yeah. Queen 7-8. Top pair Perfect. for Kite. Gut shot for Berg Gren. Oh, playing it trappy. And what happens we have, when you have a straight draw, Nick? On the turn, you can definitely lead here, but... You uh, make a pair. You always make a pair. I would also be ridiculously hesitant to do so under these circumstances, Joe. I think that a lot of bluffs that you would love to try and get to fold as a lead would just bet flop here. I think when John checks in position, he's going to have some eights, he's going to have some sevens, he's going to have some queens, he's going to have like nines and tens and jacks and stuff like that, too. When the stacks are much shallower pre-flop. Two pair. You can definitely afford to do more trap checking on flops and indeed a little bit more pot control with some of your weaker showdown that you might otherwise see bet, you know, 35 big blinds and higher more often. Trying to get even an ace to fold at this point though, Joe, is hard times. Uh, very, very disciplined. A lot of players might perceive the two checks as an opportunity to uh, take a stab here, but I just think you're just not going to get anything to fold. A stab isn't going to work. A shove is about the only chance you've got. Yeah. And even then, ugh. Yeah, I'm with you. Anyway, it does go check, check. Berggren playing the board. Not good enough to beat the queen from John Kite. Yeah, I mean, there might have been a river bet there. I think maybe... John aware of the fact that quite a few ace combos are going to be played as a three bet jam as opposed to a flat there. So that's probably one of the main things you want to target. King high probably not getting too brave there too often either at this stage in the tournament. Just playing it safe, taking a check. I mean, if at the beginning of the hand someone asked me, hey, would you like your final hand to be eights and sevens with a queen kicker? I'd be like, yeah. It's pretty good. I'll take that. <laughs> it's a pretty good run out for me. Oh, wait, that's the board. Ah! Five class. Crap. Ah. <laughs> six, six trays. 35,000. Six, seven, pass. to Rodin in the big blind. Marley's raises to 35,000. Grigori has nine six of diamonds. Oh, too much. Yeah, thanks for that. And to defend, we shall see and flop, which is eight. Five four with two clubs. Rodan looks like he wants to find a lead here. Damn bet. Thirty thousand. Bets thirty thousand into ninety five thousand. calls. That is the straight for Grigori Rodin. Plus, he has the diamond draw as well. In fact, there is street flash potential here. Great turn for Rodin. Damn, babe. 
Fires again, quick fold from Marley. How good's Marley playing, huh? What a turn, Very huh? solid, love to see it. Lucky guy. Playing around 1.3 million, 86 big blinds. Rodin, meanwhile, up over 1.5 million, up over 100 bigs. And we're heading to one of the outer tables. <laughs> Neil Farrell's turn to play a hand against Cesar Garcia. We've gone to the turn with 200K in the middle. So the board is the deuce of hearts, eight of hearts, three of clubs, queen of diamonds. Actions on Neil. Checks. Garcia. Checks behind. The river card is the three of diamonds pairing the board. Mm -hmm. Checks again. It feels like a long pause with a check, like a please don't bet kind of pause. That's a lot of chips in front of Cesar Garcia. We did reference the fact that he starts the day among the chip leaders. Could well be overall chip leader right now. How about I have Ramon and Cesar staple your tongue to your chin? It's a bet of 150,000. And a fold from Neil Farrell. So Garcia almost at 2.5 million now. <laughs> Meanwhile, former EPT champion Neil Farrell's playing 800K as we return to the feature table. Looks like a card was exposed during the deal. The action folded to him. Andrea Guion opens to thirty thousand with ace three. Yeah, <laughs> Rounds the blinds, Ruggieri in the small, 8-7, passes. Stock and blocking. Woo! Holds the big. Wow, a raise and take it. Everyone's playing too well today. I need someone to make a gross error in judgment. <laughs> we had a couple of those in the previous sessions that were a lot of fun. I need two and Mulder just putting insane pressure on people. Watched him crack. The only way out is to make the nuts. I haven't seen a lot from Preb and Stocken today. And we're not seeing a lot now. <laughs> yeah, I only seen one of his cards, the Ace of Hearts, but we know he's calling. Ace Six of Hearts, okay. 
John Kite calling as well with 5-3 of hearts out of the big blind. Queen, nine, deuce. W. Cutmore on Twitch asks, is poker in the ears back in 2024, sir? We're planning on it. That is the plan. We recorded the last episode of 2023 just before EPT Prague. We did confirm that we're taking an extended winter break, but planning to come yeah. back in early February. <laughs> First week of February, in fact. Not you used to camera, right? Yeah, it's not really that. It's just it's not on my phone. <laughs> No, She's I mean like having her phone. No, I mean like uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's YouTube. Yeah. No, yeah, cameras are fine. It's different if she films herself than yeah. all these cameras on her. You know? She's used to playing every yeah. table, every player at the table. Sometimes also, sometimes I want to say stupid jokes. Then I remind you, I remember of your video and I don't do them. Because I make funny. Lame, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's an all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rodin's raised with ace queen, Ruggieri's shove with king jack. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to see a fold here. Ace queen seems like a pretty good hand to call the shove. So less than 20 big blinds. And it is, of course, uh, hijack first cutoff. So yeah, it makes the call. It will be ahead. King Jack suited, two life cards, and uh, and the club's working in his favor. One club missing in Rodin's hand, though, of course. Russians are okay with that with that call. No, it's just first win and call it. It should have been two against this guy. <laughs> okay, so an ace high flop, but two clubs out there. Ruggieri with the flush draw. Sweaty flop. But right now he is behind. Club on the turn, no sweat on the river. Ruggieri doubles up. Another one. Okay. one flush against oh. Oh, wow. How many clubs in this deck? Exactly. Too much flush. Come on. Flush back Come on. Come Very on. crunchy yeah. board, James. Yeah. It's Entirely it's too much tuna. Oh, yeah. It's a long time for you. Oh, yeah. time for you. getting flushed all day. Second as well. Third. 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 Someone tells their hand history. They're like, oh, man. Flush over second nuts. Some nuts over second nuts. <laughs> How sick. Third was second. Ruggieri. Close to 40 big blinds. Andreas Berggren still the short stack at the table with 15 big blinds. Very playable stack still for Rodan, an above average stack. Blinds going up in six and a half minutes. That's when we will come to the end of this level. We'll take the first break of the day and we'll come back with a new feature table. We're going to swap table one for table two. That means we're going to have Steve O'Dwyer, Turn Mulder, Porigo Neal, Alex Lapuliak, Anton Bergstrom, Govert Matal. They'll be among the players at the new feature table on the other side of the break. King Niner. Nah, we're holding on. We're waiting for a premium. King Deuce for Stocken. Chance to see behind the curtain here. Prebs enters the pot. 25. And it's a min raise. Yeah. 
ace king of spades for the other Norwegian at the table. And John Kite is three batting. Someone else has folded. Action back on Stocken. Not a bad right. No. Oh, it's King of Spades. Big slick suited. Gets the job done. Well, I just referenced the fact that we are going to have a new feature table on the other side of the break. Let's go over to that table right now. Table number two. There is a hand between Steve O'Dwyer and Alexandru Lapuliak. Lapuliak has bet the flop, which is Jack Four Deuce. He's made it 200,000. And Steve O'Dwyer calls. Ten of hearts on the turn. 200,000, that feels like a lot. Action's gone check, check. River for free, which is the deuce of clubs pairing the board. That's a, that's a dry ass board. Very dry indeed. Action on O'Dwyer. I guess Steve Zissou's entire submarine is parked nearby. <laughs> 150,000. of a man who wants to call. I mean, it's smaller than the flop bet. That's a time bank card being played. He started with six new time bank cards today. He used all of his time bank cards from day three on day three. Didn't don't, bag any overnight. Don't look like he's got that many left right now. He's only got two behind, right? Looks like it. Maybe three tops. Oh my god, how many chips has Porrig O'Neill got? We're gonna find out when they get to the feature. Dwyer shows ace jack. Top pair, top kicker, and it's good as Alex Mux. O'Dwyer wins that hand. Yeah, I'm hearing that O'Neill has about two and a half million. What? It's just ahead of Cesar Garcia on the leaderboard. Porrig O'Neill is the current chip leader. So the biggest stack in the tournament will be among the players coming to the feature table during the next session of play. Let's go, guys. More action to come. Stick around. We've rejoined the action here. Raise all the way around to the big blind. Just the mid-raise from Ruggeri. Ace queen suited. Bergren are... Feature table short stack, 13 big blinds. I'm just Ooh. mucking this all day long. You don't want to get mixed up here. Really? I think you had a good hand. <laughs> yeah. J7. You can hit a jack or a seven. Hard to play. Remember, there's a money jump right now. Next player out, 18,260 euros. But if you can ladder up to 39th place, you've locked up 21K. Yeah, even more reason to stick around. All right, I'll give you that. Luxury blind levels too, Joey. Don't forget that. Luxury. Lily white luxury. <laughs> That's right. 90 minute blind levels in the EPT main event. Sometimes I think it would be fun to play one. And then I think about how stressful it is playing one hand of play money poker. 
against a bunch of commentators who are also bad at poker. Not you, Nick, but everyone else is pretty bad. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I don't think I need to. So Retier with fours on the button. What do you think of this idea? I sell 100% of my action to the community. Mm -hmm. And I move all in every single hand, and we see how far I can go. Uh, is, are other people at the table aware of the fact that, that that's what you're doing? Yes. I think that ends pretty quick. I would publicize it. I think, I think the story ends pretty quickly. Yeah, or maybe I just win it. Over the years, you've had some really good ideas. That is not one of them. I think it's a great one. I think I would, I would snap sell out. I think we should make a series where we get like Joey coached by like absolute supreme top pros. We'll call it like Joey's Journey or something like that. We'll call it Joey's Snooze Fest. Or sounds boring. <laughs> sounds like something you put on at night if you can't, if you're suffering from insomnia. So play has concluded at the feature table. We have hit the break, but there is still a hand in progress at one of the other tables. In fact, it's the table that will become the new feature table. Steve O'Dwyer is in action again, this time against Turn Mulder. And let's be honest. What? This is the matchup that we're all waiting for. These are the two players we want to see duke it out when they're up on the main stage after the break. But in this particular hand, we've gone to the turn. I can tell you that on the flop, Mulder bet 45,000 and O'Dwyer called. It's an ace on the turns. The board is now ace, jack, 10, six. Two hearts, two diamonds. Mulder checks to O'Dwyer. <laughs> I mean, good luck if you're in that tournament knowing what the blind levels are. That says it on the screen. Yeah. 280. 280. Dwyer betting big. That's a lot bigger than the flop bet. And Turn Mulder folds. So after that hand, Mulder down to 1.5 million, O'Dwyer up to 1.6 million. They will be bringing those stacks to the main stage because this table will become the feature table on the other side of the break. Let's check on the stacks of the players we've been watching for the last 90 minutes. John Kite. Start the day as chip leader. He has dropped down a few spots, but he's still a top five stack with 90 big blinds at the new blind level. Marley Sprague doing okay, 62 bigs. Andreas Berggren and Roman Retier, both in the danger zone. Danger zone! But a reminder that those players will now go out into the field and that new feature table up on the stage after the break will be headlined by O'Dwyer, Mulder, new chip leader Porrigo Neal. Alexandru Lapuliak, Govert Matal, and Anton Bergstrom. So we are going to be back from break in 17 minutes time. Join us for more action here on day four of the PokerStars European Poker Tour main event in Prague as we play down to the final two tables. Back shortly. I'm just trying to build the image, I will I mean, I <laughs> destroy the Brazilian image so we can just uh, do some different stuff over there. <laughs> oh. I didn't realize just how many sick hero calls you made, both at the final table and in the run-up to the final table. I am never, ever, ever going to try and bluff <laughs> you because you're basically... <laughs> Your, your calling frequency is high. 
I mean, yeah, so there, there was two big, big hero calls. One of the the semifinal and another in the final. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was it was like a very, very, very good spot there that just appeared to me. Like it's not the um, not like a big hero caller or anything. You can try to bluff me. I'm not not gonna call you. So you're saying you're this is not this is not standard for you. You're not the guy like because we see like Adre Mateos, for example, like hero call pretty regularly. He's right a lot, but he's wrong sometimes too. You're mm -hmm. saying that this is not usually something you do. Yeah, I'm just trying to build the image. I will, or, I mean, I <laughs> destroy the Brazilian image so we can just uh, do some different stuff over there. <laughs> So what 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 was it about those two spots specifically? Was it um, just sort of uh, you know replaying the action through the streets and decided the line didn't make a lot of sense, or was it personally based? Was it hey, I this person seems uncomfortable. There's a live read here. What what? How did you come to that decision? No, it was just the spots. Actually, the the, the one in the semifinal was just a, like a very good price. Uh, I remember he limped small blind. I think I. Check behind and bet three streets and hit check raise the river. I already put like seven hundred in. It was like one point two million more, something like that. It was just a very very good price for me. And I mean, uh, he was a good player. Of course, he could he could be bluffing. I, I don't remember correctly the, the the border or anything, but I think I had some good good calling properties on my hand, like a good blocker. So that 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 one was more like that. And the other one in the final table was just. Uh, just the line didn't make much sense with basically anything, and there was a little bit of live, uh, live information in the a screen hand just because right. he, he he wanted to go in pre flop like really badly, and then he decided not to, and with that stack size usually, like the hands that he almost go in pre flop but doesn't are all like uh, dominated by a screen. So it was very, very rarely he would have the king. There was two in the board, and king queen he would show free. So yeah. Oh, James, did that make the TV coverage that he wanted to go all in with ace queen? I feel like I don't remember seeing that in what we. I think um, certainly by that point, this is the hand against Pinto, right? He was pretty short, yeah. so I think his options were incredibly limited, and he decides mm -hmm. to play through the streets instead. I think it was Queen Jack was his hand. Well, in that it was set. not like very, very explicit. He just started to count his stack and like yes. almost go and not going. Cool. And then yes. Calls, yes. You know? But you make that ace high hero call, Fabiano, which takes us down to the final six. So it was kind of, I guess, the second half of the final table on the final day. What both days had in common, and I still can't quite comprehend it, is just how everyone was treating this like it was a one-two home game in their local casino. Everyone's having a laugh. Everyone's messing about. Everyone's just enjoying the moment. You've got huge crowds on the rail who've clearly had quite a bit to drink. The sums mm -hmm. of money, the difference in prize money with each elimination is obscene. And yet everyone just seems really relaxed. Yeah, yeah. It was like an amazing crew. Like I remember exactly the point where it started to get tense, and then everything like just was not tense anymore. It was like a fifteen left. I went to the river in a very small pot and bet like third pair or something like for Fin Valley, and the guy calls me with second pair and I lost. And then Patrick Yaros was at my side. He said like, well, why, "Why did you bluff your third pair?" Like stuff like that it was a very, 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 like. Very, 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 like a very good joke, and then uh, we start just just messing with each other up uh, from 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 then on. Yeah, to to James's point, it seemed like there were a lot of things that happened between Patrick Yaros and uh, Jimmy uh, Guerrero, Jimmy. who I think that if it were a different group of people, their their antics, their attitude. People might have gotten angry. I, I also think that there was clearly a lot of history between Kyan Mockery and Jimmy. They've clearly played a lot of hands against each other. Mm -hmm. And again, that bore out a very interesting dynamic between those guys. <laughs> 25 minutes left on the level. Or one hand, who knows? Jimmy folds eight deuce. Yarosh, pocket fours in the cutoff. <laughs> Hello. Ace, queen for Kowalski. 
Starts the hand with 35 big blinds. Too much for an all-in, but could certainly call on the button, is what I was going to say. <laughs> wow, yeah, he's playing it slow here in position. Ace-Queen seated a very, very, very playable hand in position. You see what he's doing here, Joe, and you've identified it. He doesn't want to go too crazy pre-flop here. Oh, he... oh, Pinto. Uh-oh. Shields. Oh, oh, boy. Shields up. Pinto with the worst of it of these three hands. It's only 250K to call, though. Oh, Joe, I feel like he wants to squeeze this in. It does seem like he's sizing up an all-in. Three, carry the one, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A equals MC squared. Uh, 20 days, half November, April, June, and November. Pi is 3.1472. Just a call. Okay. All right, we're going three ways to this flop. Four is the slight, <coughs> slightly ahead for now. King, 6-3. Everybody misses. So four is way ahead now. Kowalski does like to hit his turns in rivers, though. Pinto checks. Yaros checks. Kowalski in position. You just pretend those spades are clubs if you want. <laughs> Kowalski checks as well. Turn is another king. So four is way, way good. Could potentially be counterfeited by a six. Oh dear. But Pinto is gonna try to bluff at this. I mean, could this work? I... 350 into 1.8 is maybe the sort of bet someone would make with a king. I mean, it... I think it's just not enough to get Jarosz to fold. I mean, he's got a good price just to spike a four on the river and make the boat. Right. It's ridiculously good pot odds here. If you wanted to try and represent a king. He's like, I, I, I can't. Oh, I okay. can't believe I'm folding okay. this. Yeah, you can tell it pained him. I mean, Kowalski kind of has a similarly straight right. hand to the fours here. Like he's, if your opponent doesn't have a pair, you're pretty much going to be good, like, every time. If this is what it is, which is a very lame bluff attempt, <laughs> Ace High is getting a great price. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's actually interesting because Ace Queen probably has two live cards a lot of the time. He might be doing this with, a, you know, pocket fours himself, pocket twos, pocket right. sevens, something Even like that. Even if it's not a bluff, right. Yeah, Even I think... if it's like a weak value bet, yeah, the maybe. river is an eight. So Kowalski does not improve, does have the best hand. Pinto moves all in. Oh my days, what a player. What an absolute boss. Shoves with queen jack high. Oh my god, Joe, the hero who's, call. Who's bluffing in this spot? Oh, Kowalski's asking for a count. <laughs> it's more or less a pot-sized river shove bluff. Joe, the hero call would be unbelievable here. It sure would. Is this how we're going to end the night with a hero call from Kowalski? He is really giving this a think. Kowalski uh. <laughs> smirking at himself. Can't believe what he's thinking about doing right now. Last time bank card. Oh, the drama. Is Pinto, the relative amateur, going to make a bluff like this in this spot at this time of night for this amount of money on the line? Joey, he shoves so quickly on that river. I don't know if that might have been a tell. Nick, that's a great point. That is a great point, as if the river didn't matter at all, as if he had decided ahead of oh! time. He makes the call! The hero, Kowalski! Wow! Unbelievable!
unbelievable. He's done it. Kowalski puts this night to bed with the ace high hero call. Let's go. Pinto went for it. Did not pull it off in the most dramatic fashion I have ever seen. We have finally put an end to day five at this record breaking EPT Barcelona main event. Bendinelli ladders up. Neville Costa ladders up. Kowalski, the hero of the day. Patrick Yarosh ladders up. Kehan Makri ladders up. The hero, Kowalski. Kodko just got a double up, but Passy Salmonen is the short stack at the table with less than five million. There's only one hat at this table, and it's Big Toros. Salmonen's got King Seven of Diamonds. He's clearly thinking about playing it. It could be the best hand. He raises to 400,000. Luca Fiorini. Has ace king in the small blind. Oh, three bet this one hard. He re raises to over 1.1 million. And I don't know what Posse's thinking about, but you can't call and you don't really want to four bet bluff the tightest guy at the table. I don't care how finished you are. I'm all in. Oh dear, bad timing. Boom. Cool. Oh, Luca Fiorini calls. Uh oh. And Passi Sormanen is way behind and set to exit in fifth. Favorite schmavorite. We've seen all kinds of suckouts. Good point. Well made. Here comes the flop. And just to prove your point, Joe, there are two diamonds on that flop. 12 outs for Sormanen. Well, that's a friendly looking rail. Yep. The turn card is the Queen of Spades. Passy's looking to hit a seven or a diamond. Any other card, and he's out. It's the Queen of Hearts. He's Busto. Flopped the flush draw. It came brick, brick, and he is out of here. We lose one of the two fins. Got to give Posse credit. He was an absolutely fearless player. So much so that I probably wouldn't guess that he only plays poker as a hobby. Well done, dude. Sorman and collects 253,000 euros. And we are down to the final four. You guys want to have the numbers? I can look. I can look. Let's try. Him? Okay. Should look early. The players discussing a potential deal. Uh, back one second. Lots of great poker minds on Middleton's rail. Off to get some advice. Back one second. I imagine Toby Lewis will be his first port of call. Soaps. Story checks out. Now deals are allowed on the EPT. The tour acknowledges that it's the player's money. Tournament director Toby Stone will be called to the table so that he can facilitate a discussion about a potential chop of the remaining prize money. Yeah, yeah. Just going to tell you what's going on. Yeah. So first of all, I have to. First of all, I have to explain that the winner could technically get less money. If you make a deal, then the winner who takes over could technically get less money, and we would still publish him as the winner. Okay. 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 The, the next thing is this is an equity split based on everyone receiving fourth place. So we give you all fourth place, and then we equity split on the remaining prize pool. However, we have to play for yeah, some. We may do it like. Uh... Like uh, 100 more, uh, 60 more, 60 more, 40 more, 40 more like that. You can do something like that. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to need a bit more than that, though. <laughs> like, minimum. Now that's up to you to talk, which right, we're yeah. not going to get involved in. Luca right. can translate for Luca. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and when you come to an agreement, you give us a shout. And Let the bartering commence. How many pints deep are they? Could affect the deal. Uh, so I need to get like, uh, like maybe like, like 15 off each of you. 
top, whatever, 5, 55. Fiorini's into this. I think Luca's just showing him Grumpy Cat on there. I mean, Nilsson agrees to give up some equity. He seems rather desperate to make a deal. I would be. Tom is literally sweating it. If, if you uh, you are strong, you know, a strong yeah. player, why uh, the deal? I mean, it's a lot of money, isn't it? But I mean, I've got to take into the fact that I'm a wow. stronger player. I mean, it's only a small amount, but like, I mean, I've got to do it. Okay, okay. Okay, right, I just need to show the numbers over there. One sec, one sec. Can I borrow that piece of paper? Yeah. Well, it seems that all four players have agreed to the deal in principle. Midi wants to run it past his mates. Creston Nielsen's already celebrating. Fiorini's grinning. Kirko's happy about it. We just play it out completely. But Fraser McIntyre wants to weigh in. I mean, when I go back and say no deal, then they might offer me a sick deal. I don't think they will. I don't, I don't think, think they will. Because the, 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 the chips are too level for them. anybody to go, okay. like, oh, wait a minute, do you know what? I'll fuck chip line. So that, forget that. You're either dealing or no dealing. Just right. The same. All right, let's go. Yeah, go play. Just wait, so everyone agreed and now he's out? Uh, no deal. Got deal, sorry. What? It's off the table. No deal? Yeah, no deal. Sorry. <laughs> Why is that? What was that shit all about? <laughs> He's just saying what we're all thinking. Big Toro speaks his mind. No deal? No deal. Okay. So Middleton orchestrated the deal and then wow. refused it. Mom and Dad said, we don't care if it's the prom. Your curfew is at midnight. Memories of yesteryear, but right now we're back in 2023 with the PokerStars European Poker Tour in Prague. Day four of the 5K main event with 40 players returning from the break. By the end of today, we should be down to 16, playing to the final two tables here at King's Casino at the Hilton Prague. It's James Hartigan with Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. And these are the chip leaders right now. John Kite starts the day on top. He's dropped down into third place. Porrigo Neal is the current chip leader just ahead of Cesar Garcia in the rankings. And Porrig O'Neill is one of the players who will be at our new feature table. Along with a former EPT champion, Steve O'Dwyer. An online beast, Turn Mulder. An EPT reg, Govert Matal. An EPT newcomer, Alexandru Lapuliak. And Anton Bergstrom who's been on the EPT pretty much since season one and is also a very accomplished online player as well. The price of poker's going up, Vincent. The blinds, 10,000, 20,000, with a 20K big blind ante, this being level 22 of the main event. Average stack right now, 963,000, so pretty deep. But because we've got so many monster stacks, Nick, because there are so many players with seven-figure chip stacks, it means there's a lot of shorties out there as well. Looking at the overall rankings, there are at least three players who have sub-10 big blinds and an entire table's worth of players, eight players, with fewer than 20 big blinds. Yeah, we're going to need to see some consolidation. Hopefully those big stacks know how to wield those large stacks and manipulate that to their advantage, apply some pressure when they're not at risk, and uh, make that make that ICM really count at this stage. We're on a money jump. Next player out, 18,260 euros. Next payout is 21K. The big money's up top, including the 1 million euro score. 1 million and 30,000 euro score for the champion. They'll receive that money along with the winner's trophy on Sunday. That's when we play down to a winner. As I said, down to two tables today, down to six tomorrow, down to a winner on Sunday. Still three days of this tournament to play. Race is quick. This man does not embrace the squeak. But he does have a 78 big blind stack and he won an EPT main event in 2013. He's won a lot of high rollers and super high rollers on the tour since. He has won more money on the EPT than any other player. This is the most commentary I've ever done on Steve O'Dwyer in my entire career. 
building Essex. <laughs> so Mulder close to 80 bigs right now. And suitably attired for the season, Oregon Neal, the Irish player, is chip leader right now with 123 big blinds. He looks festive and, of course, wearing the national colors. You'd love to see that. By the way, thank you very much to Elkanarts for reminding me in the live chat on Twitch, that Max Neugebauer, who is also at this feature table, well, he's not actually at the moment, he hasn't come back to his seat, but he will be at the feature table shortly. He recently won the World Series of Poker Europe main event in Rosvedov. Having a pretty good year, 2023, looking real spicy and an opportunity to try and add to that high score here in Prague. Action has been folded to Govert Matal. Round to Lucas Rose, who has just nine big blinds. Queen Jack in the cutoff. To Mulder, folding the bump. Bergstrom folding the big blind. Was it better than the so the shove from Lucas Rose gets I through. Like, I was so confident, like, I'm not losing this one. <laughs> Shall we play, uh, if you win the hand, you're open? Because uh, you can see it anyways in 30 minutes. Sure. Oh, 30, but yeah, sure. sure. Um, anyone in? Everyone in? Both cover you? one. Just both. If you win the hand, you open the cards. Yeah. Yeah? Better dynamics. Good God, he's yeah, huge! Yeah. <laughs> Better dynamics. Yeah. I never play one hand, I don't show. Yeah. Hey, you want to see, <laughs> wanna see what I saw? Yeah. Has a more massive human being ever taken a seat this at is the feature table? The But maximum so max. I have to say though, James, <laughs> I would love to see O'Dwyer cross over that 40 million mark. What, what, what did we say? Anything higher than a top fifth place, uh, anything higher than a fifth place finish here in Prague would, would take him over the 40 million here. lifetime so earnings. Way, <laughs> That's a big number. Folding. Spirit of the Horus folds. 45. One raise, 45, like a bow raising the button to 45,000. And he's in the background. If he's in the foreground, I could understand the false perspective would make him look massive, but <laughs> he's further away from us than the dealer. So Bergstrom, the shorter of the two stacks here, 41 big blinds. Oh, hello. Big blind action here, pocket sevens. Lapuliak. 32 bigs. I would be tempted to just ship this all in, James. I'm not going to lie. Tons of dead money out there. 32 big blinds effective for Lapuliak. And that button open is going to be excruciatingly wide. How do you ever miss this opportunity? Mm -hmm. Race. The effective all in is also the same. That works for me. Good job, Alex. Shows the hand, as is the rules, nice. as set by Turn Mulder. Nice, yeah. yeah, loving it. Very friendly. First hand I went on this table, and I have to show it. This is a good thing. Now your image is there. My image. 
<laughs> I know how to push the sevens from the big right. blind against Butter. <laughs> I mean, it could be ace to off as well. Mm? It could also be ace to off. Then your image will also be there. Yeah, that's when the image is there. Action on Govert Matal. This is 14th cash on the European Sorry, Poker Tour. made the money jump. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you from other priorities? Sorry, there's a new one in like 15 places, right? <laughs> I think they're highlighting to Gova that a player has just gone out in 40th, so you can stop I'll stalling for the pay jump. No, not for the pay jump. Six uh. Seven yeah, I've just been yeah, informed that Roman Rattier, who was at our previous feature table, has just been eliminated in 40th place. So he's the last player to cash for 18,260 euros. Everyone else now guaranteed 21k. <laughs> Well, this is table two as well, so we're never going to break, right? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> going to get a new table. Uh, 24, we're going to be fine. I don't I mean, when the, the, like I said, I can tell you. What's wrong with this table? Yeah, but normally we show on the screen, right? The big one. Okay. I feel yeah. like maybe it's taking the pay has not been yeah. um, like like putting all the information on the screen. It's still a big stage for me. Well, this is blind v blind. And it is a king high flop. Are we going to see our first chop of the day? Puliak is free rolling here with the three of diamonds in his hand. Bets 20k into 60k. Called by the chip leader. Clubs on the turn now. 79% chance that they will be splitting this pot. Yeah, that Diamante, not an insignificant draw here. Betting again, 50,000. Half pot. Again, O'Neill calls. Oh, it's the ace of diamonds. The pointy Barry Greenstein. Maybe we should come up with a festive split pot song as well, James. No, the chop pot song never changes. It's a classic. I mean, ev ev everyone loves a Yule log. No. No? No. Everyone loves a turkey. Don't do a griffin on me, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Check to showdown. King was good as well, probably. Well, yes. Free, free rolling there. <laughs> <laughs> Takes it down. Diamante is working in the Puliak's favor. And fortunate for Team Ireland. Alice. Alice. Oh, yeah. Piliak playing 44 picks. Could you get me water? Well, we are going to the outer tables because Ramon Kalias is all in. Ramon open to 40k, Vlado Banachevich 3 bet to 125k, Ramon Chavez for around 800k, he gets a fold, Ramon now has around a million chips and we can continue to follow Roll Neck Ramon. Roll Neck Ramon, Roll Neck Ramon, 
Space for Sassy, sleek and snazzy, he's Ron Negramon. Hey! Nailed it. Back to the feature table. The Puliaks raised the button with Jack 10. And Govet Matalas defended his big blind with 8 6 of clubs. Trey Deuce Deuce on the flop. That was a big, that was a good one. Cuts right through to your soul. The squeak. Three in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Got the biggest stack in the tournament right now at the feature table. One short stack, Lucas Rose. Won't complain. It's not so bad. Action folded to turn Mulder. King nine of spades. He opens to 45,000. This is a good hand. Orig O'Neill folds the button. Gova Matal in the small blind. Passes. Yeah, I got a, I got, I got a soft spot for king nine suited, James. I like this hand. Steve O'Dwyer folds Queen Deuce, and Mulder shows the King Nine suited. under the gun this time. Nope. Round two, Puliak with ace-10 offsuit. Govet Matar has four deuce offsuit on the button. Not much to think about, in my opinion. Yeah, he has been uh, he has been pausing quite a lot here. Seems like he's using all of his time bank every time at this stage. Five seconds and a fold. All right, twenty-five state. 25 seconds taken with 40 soft. Oh, Dwyer. Put him, in, put him in the box, Steve. Come on, Steve. Three bets out of the small blind to 155,000. Actually, back on Alex. with the offsuit ace 10 ace 10 suited probably quite an easy call here james just plays a lot better realizes the equity a lot better sent it to four bed bluff the first time yeah with that speech i think we're folding it maybe i should so nice to see steve observing the showy game as well
15 minutes into this level, we've seen one elimination, but I expect a few more. Probably in the next 30 minutes, because there's a lot of shorties in the tournament right now. As you said at the start, Nick, we need to see some consolidation. Yeah, feels like that tension is building. As you said, the distribution around the table seems to be a little bit off balance, right? Yes. There's one very short table, and then there's a bunch of uh, tables with the largest stacks on there. Um, if it was in a different configuration, we'd probably see more bust outs faster because the big big stacks can uh, apply more pressure to the shorties and try and, you know, manipulate that ICM pressure to their favor. Slaps it out there. O'Neal's putting in the raise. Min raise it is. Would you like some hashtag fun facts about Porrig O'Neill, Nick? I would like nothing more. 630k in live earnings. Biggest live score came in a tournament in Vegas last March. It's a six-figure score, $127,500. If we rewind the clock to 2012, he made the final table of UKIPT Dublin, finishing fifth for 20k. And this is his third cash in an EPT main event, cashed in Barcelona and Prague back in 2016. Awesome. Sounds like he's doing everything right. We'd love to see Mr. O'Neill going a little bit deeper here, um, here in 2023, here in Prague. Well, he has flopped a set. Just the. Backdoor opportunities for Steve. Might think overcards are good as well. I quite like the, the check on this flop. I think this is the kind of flop where you're going to open a lot from the hijack and end up checking to the player in position a ton. So it's nice to actually have some balance where you have some of your strongest stuff played slow here too. Both players very deep. Okay, well that's a bit of equity for Steve O'Dwyer. Picks up the straight draw on the turn. I think at this stage you got to start pumping though. You got to start going big. If you miss the flop bet, you got to go big on the turn. Like 90k. 135. Actually, slight over bet. Even wow. better. Love it. The important point being that you just got to start putting a lot in as fast as possible. If you're going to miss that flop bet, and it goes check check over the first three cards. Why calls? A lot of bad rivers here for O'Neill. That's not one of them. Quads is usually good, James. Four of a kind. Very good hand. Four hundred K in the middle. O'Dwyer the effective stack, one point four four million. I think I probably talk myself into betting in this river now as well, James. Hands kind of weirdly represented with the check on the flop. And the over bet river, 450K. Quick fold from the King Jack, of course, but shows it. <laughs> you want to show that one? <laughs> It is interesting though, right, James? Because playing the show game, you do feel a little bit better about making some of the bigger folds because you're going to see it, right? And yeah. I, I think having that kind of dynamic at this stage in, in a big EBT event is really, really interesting to see and loving, this, loving the camaraderie at the feature table here. Nothing or nothing, but by then it's uh, not the same. No, it's a very long time. Yeah. They won't look like this anyway.
Bergstrom's turn to pick up tens, opens under the gun. A7 offsuit for Gova Matal, a hand commonly known as the Spraggy. Oh, Spraggery now. Lucas Rose with King Deuce of Clubs. Now we've got Turn Mulder in the small blind. He has pocket fours. So Mulder here, 79 bigs. Bergs from about 38. Potential to set mime here. It isn't under the gun open, but I feel like there's enough dead money where you can just have a call and take a peek. King, Queen off though. Definitely never a fold. Mandatory call minimum. I don't think you end up squeezing versus under the gun open here too often, though. The range is a little bit too scary, unless you got a very specific read on Bergstrom being super loosey-goosey. Most players at this level won't be from that position, regardless of style. What about Neuge Bauer with King-Queen? 180. Squeezes. Yeah, decides to take the squeeze spot regardless. You don't want to fold tens. Last time a guy had tens, you made quads. <laughs> that means it happens every time, right? Is that how it works? That's how it works. Perfect. So, Mr. Bergstrom here, 40 big blinds behind, or 38, in fact. I think, honestly, needs to all just in. make a decision for all of his chips, or, yeah, it's. I think it's a shove or fold spot. I don't think you're going to call here too often. Oh, yeah, yeah. you think it's quads, for sure. <laughs> and that's that. No messing around. I guess this is the danger of three betting versus under the gun open range there, James. It's kind of what I'm alluding to. I think it's going to work some of the time, but not this time. Bergstrom, just above average with a million chips. Eight of clubs for the Pouliac. <laughs> Players amused as the jib camera floats across the table. <laughs> Extreme close up here. Robert Matal is doing everything in his power to turn the entire audience against him. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are interested, by the way, the next money jump will be when we are down to 31 players, and right now we're at 39. Yeah, uh, the, the tanking is definitely a little bit on the long side, especially with the combos being cards up here on stream. Hello. Not flush draw for Lapuliak. Still ahead with ace high. Bergstrom just 12% equity. He's checked over to Lapuliak. And a continuation bet will get the job done. Now, 25 minutes into the level. And we are going to go to one of the outer tables because I believe we have an all-in. 
Omar Eljak, former chip leader, is all in. He has the red triangle of death next to his remaining chips. Action is on Neil Farrell, and Farrell calls, tables ace nine of hearts. Eljak has tabled the snowmans. Num num. Got pocket eight, so this is a race. Easy dodge. <laughs> no problem. Deuce. And that is a wheel. <laughs> that's a straight on the river for Neil Farrell. Oh, really? <laughs> and that's going to see Omar Eljak eliminated. Did you love to see Farrell the winning here? <laughs> 39th place finish for Omar. 21,000 euros, James. 39 for 21,000. Neil Farrell now up to 1.7 million chips. Go on, Feraldo. This is shaping up to be a pretty stacked final, James. They keep going this way. Still a long way to get down to that final nine, of course, guys. 38 players remain now, but I'm rooting for a few in there, and I'd really like to see some of these behemoths go to war. When we came to Prague in March of 22, after an extended break for the EPT, right. you might remember that Turn Mulder was bossing that tournament, and sadly, we lost him in seventh place, effectively on the TV final table bubble. Didn't come back for the final day, which is such a shame. So, kind of feel there's a redemption arc for Turn Mulder <laughs> in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Opportunity for Marley to prove that she is the superior poker player as well in her in, in her marriage. Oh, I think she's proved that already. <laughs> no, I'm really rooting for Marles as well. I think that'd be a great little score just before Christmas. Fantastic stuff. Hope she can keep it going. Gova Matal raised pre, and Lapuliak defended his big blind. Check check on the flop. Ace height still ahead. As Matal did not continue flop, the Puliak will lead at the turn, 70,000 into 110,000. Shout out to Wistern. Thank you very much for the raid, buddy. Hope your stream is good. Welcome all raiders from Wistern's stream. Thirty-seven players remaining. Yesterday we had Mohamed Firoz Mangro at the feature table. He has just busted in thirty-eighth place, also cashing for twenty-one thousand euros. So we are seeing a few eliminations now, down to thirty-seven players. I think they should make this room mandatory. Mandatory? Yeah, for all tables, honestly. It's a, I think it's a very good room. Good, 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 good. I think there would be, might be Anyone more action. It, huh? Might be more action. Yeah, more action. Yeah, I think maybe. everyone sees it anyway later. Why not, why not just show it like... Yeah. Huh? Probably a more fun to watch. Yeah, more fun to watch as well. Like, as in there's dynamic and stuff, I guess. Maybe. You can level yourself. It would be kind of ridiculous if you force people to show Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that's a bit. <laughs> It's all been playing pretty snug. I don't know if he's going to get in there with ace nine at this point from under the gun. Oh, yeah, sweet. makes the fold. One more second. My card doesn't change. Queen Jack suited. The turn molder. Spirit of the horse. <laughs> there was a period of time when every single online final table we covered had that horse avatar at it. Spirit of the horse. He's gonna put in a race here. 
So it probably won't surprise you to learn that Neugebauer is a former basketball player. And as we established, a recent World Series of Poker Europe main event champion. Just calls with the ace-10 of diamonds. Rounds to the chip leader, Porrigo Neal in the big blind. We're going three ways here. I think ace-10 suited probably could have three bet here some of the time, but obviously flatting, never going to be a mistake. And it's looking real good for Mulder right now. Two over cards and the spades. Yeah. Unless you imagine. I'll have O'Neill's hand, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from Mulder's perspective, he's, he's feeling pretty good about this. But O'Neill obviously flopping best. O'Neill, the deepest of the three stacks. One, Everyone's checked. Jack on the turn. So Mulder now with top pair in addition to the spade draw. So James, based on the action we saw before, I think O'Neill's going to agree, agree with my assessment. He needs to go big on this turn, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him going near pot. Okay. Oh, that looks a lot smaller. 85,000. So about half instead. Still a lead. And no, it's still wants it's to... smaller than 85. It's 55. Oh, excuse me. Even smaller than that. Surprised that he used this sizing given the way that he played those tens before. I think there's lots of stuff that will call a bigger size on the turn here. Might have missed an opportunity for a little bit more value here. I'm not sure if he ever leads like this as a bluff either, James. Don't think this is a size that he would sort of lead bluff with if he had some sort of a semi bluffing combo. 260. Wow. So to be clear, the guy who doesn't actually have a hand, who has 3% <laughs> equity, is the one raising here. Very interesting indeed, James. And you got to ask yourself, would, would Neugebauer not bet 9-10 on this board? Because that's what he's trying to rep, right? He's got the 10 blocker in hand. <clears throat> Does 9-10 not bet 7-8 Trey in position, last to act versus two checks? Perhaps not. I think most people would agree. Oh. A lot of people would like that strategy. 8-7 now concerned, but not at so concerned that they're going to be folding. Mulder getting a great price here, James. How do you fold? You can't. You can't. <laughs> so this pot has just been grossly overinflated. Yeah. And we are going three-way to the river. And the river is. Seven of diamonds. So it's a full house for O'Neill. Uh, yeah, if you're O'Neill, you check again here. You want the bluffs to continue. If he has 9-10, you're definitely going to probably get another bet here quite often. Mulder's... Probably not loving this spot now anymore. Does Noiga Bauer fire again? This could be a big misstep if he does so. Yeah, uh, thinks better of it. Got caught by two players. Suspects one of them has something. This guy has a boat. And uh, under these circumstances, that small lead actually kind of induced that move there, James. Yeah. So uh, perhaps that was part of the strat. That small lead from Team Ireland. And Porrig O'Neill has moved over the 3 million mark. Close to 3.2 million chips, nearly 160 big blinds. He's in the catbird seat right now. Absolutely monster pot there, you guys. Some real stuff. Looking good for Team Ireland. Meanwhile, Lucas Rose is still one of the 20 short stacks. Just nine big blinds for him. Exactly. Luck is in the shirt, Oh no, You're 100% right. Harnessing the festive power. I believe in Christmas. It's a Christmas miracle. Eight, ten, yeah, huge pot there. Moving on. Let's see if Mr. O'Neill can harness the power of those chips and start knocking some players out here. Still 37 remain. Noiga Bauer, king three of spades. 
announces a raise to 45,000. Pocket nines for Alex Lapuliak on the button. Lapuliak, 51 big blinds. Michael Bauer, 57. Playing it cool versus the hijack open. Govert Matal is going to go with Matal this. Calls as well. And it's a jack eight five flop. Nine still ahead. Matal has whiffed. Checks it. Think about just king high. Black cards with a red board. Checks as well. Thousand from the best hand. Interesting size here, James. Thirty-five thousand into one sixty-five. Weird kind of multi-way dynamic. It's all eventually folds, and that will take it down. I think I really like it. I think that, that's a really interesting size. You can start pumping it up on the turn there as well. Weed out a couple hands that have equity, though, just with the small size as well. So looking good. Well, a big hand just been played on one of the outer tables. It's our format feature table. And we've just seen the elimination of Andreas Berggren. Shove for his last 70K yeah. on the turn. Yeah, King. He had sevens, but Marley Sprague had turned the nuts, the nuts straight. That means Bergram was drawing dead on the river. So he's out in 37th place for 21,000 euros. How many chips does Miles have now? That must be a big pot. Well, Bergram was one of the short stacks, so I don't think he's added that much. Headed in the right direction, though. 36 players left. Let's go, Marls. Like a bower is open with 9 8 of hearts. Decision is on Govert Matal in the small blind. Am I right in saying that Marley is of Romanian descent? I don't know. I, I, where am I getting that from? I feel like that's a thing. In which case, it could be year of Romania all over again. Steve O'Dwyer, 8-7 offsuit, defends, heads up to the flop. Ace, King, 4 with two hearts. Not a terrible flop for Neugebauer. Hmm? Is it here? Oh, sorry. Can you give me a bottle of water? One bit, 
Continuation bet wins him the pot. So Marley's maiden name was Cordero. That doesn't sound Romanian to me. A lot of people saying she has Portuguese heritage. Oh. I'm confused. I'm confused with uh, the different player. I think. Does Spraggy have more than one wife? <laughs> Is that where you're confused? <laughs> Whoopsie. Ha Good answer from Zephyr. Yes, Tonka. You've confused her with Tonka, Spraggy's other wife. Ah, that's what it was. You have the Tonka. Remember when Tonka spent a year living in Spraggy's bathroom? Pretty much, yeah. Grinding from the kitchen. Couldn't get rid of him. Tidy says, I thought Spraggy was married to A7 Offsuit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> After he fired off those 100K bullets in the Bahamas, his last wife left him. Back to Romania she goes. <clears throat> I told you, Gova Matal not make himself popular with the audience. Johan 9999 writes, this guy, come on! Come on. On to the next one. Looks like a raise and take it to me. Jaitura says Matal is the worst. Worst tanking ever. Worst tanking ever. Excuse me. Can I get more water? Could you bring me two or three or... Perfect, this, this guy needs a lot of sustenance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hydration is key, James. And as an ex-athlete, he knows that's important. Also, when you are seven foot three, you need more water than the average human being. Yeah, starts at, starts at your feet. You got It takes a lot to fill up the tank, you know? Bring him a giant plate of meat while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I also get a protein shake? Thank you. <laughs> YouTube chat says Mittal is the king of the slots. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> you can hate on him as much as you want. He's not doing anything against the rules. He has 30 seconds to make a decision. If he wants to remain balanced and take the same amount of time, whether he's going to auto fold or whether he's considering raising, he is allowed to do that. The king of balance, Yaga. Men's want to talk about balance. So he's raised to 40,000. Rounds the blinds. Lucas Rose, the short stack, has the Spraggy. A7 off. Now, I know Lucas is short, but this hand is cursed. He's all in, James. I guarantee he's all in. Lucas, don't do it. He's doing it. Guaranteed, James. You're always taking the spot. Oh, dear. All in for 36th place finisher, Lucas Rose. In a few minutes, once we've run out the flop, Turn and River, he will be cashing for 21,000 euros. 21K, not too shabby. Potential to double up and get back in this game, though. And he's going to gamble, James. Now... I need to point out the equities you're about to see on your screen are wrong. A7 offsuit is 0% in this situation.
Rose is going to need a miracle. It's an eight high flop. Shocking, I know. Six of hearts. Ah, oh, got there before me. <laughs> the other player is calling for sickness on the turn. A little sweaty action. Oh, that's one. In theory, an ace or a six would win this. But I told you, a seven offsuit, zero percent. I repeat, 36th place finisher, Lucas Rose. I repeat, cashing for 21,000 euros. King is suited, huh? Message received. Over and out, Lucas Rose, GG's. And Natal, ever patient. And she's to take that one down, two live cards. Full metal jacket. The full metal alchemist thank you, thank right you. there. So this is day four of the main event. It's also day four of the mini EPT Prague online series on PokerStars. First tournament's just starting, Nick. It's 3.15 in the afternoon. There's another at 6.15, another yep. at 8.15. Yep. Low buy and MTTs for you to play while watching the action from here in Prague. Remember, we add New Year series tickets to the prize pool of every single tournament. That's added value. And so much added value this weekend. If you play on Sunday, if you play either of the mini main events, you'll be playing for a gold power pass worth $10,000 with silver power passes for the runners up. Yeah, definitely check them out, guys. Small buy-ins, added value. That is the headline. Um, lots of cool opportunities. Get involved and check it out for yourself. Go and enjoy some poker. Make sure you keep the stream running, though. We got commentary coming all day long today, playing down to 16 or six levels, whichever comes first. And of course, uh, got action all the way to Sunday. We're playing down to a champion. Don't say it out loud. Five seconds. Six past. Ace ten for Steve O. Dwyer. Pass. Raises to 50,000. We're halfway through the level, by the way. About 45 minutes on the clock to run on level 22 with 35 players remaining. Get involved there. I think 8 6 is probably all right to, to sneak in there with a call. Quite deep. Small raise. Dwyer just making it 50. Oh, to be fair, it was quite a large open. It was up to 50K. Yeah. So the larger size there from Dwyer, obviously, I mean, the, uh, the defense need to be a little bit on the tighter side. So yeah, seems good. Attackers there from uh, from Neugebauer. Four pass. Sides against it versus the larger size seems good. Again, 50k. One pass. Good call. 
Now Ekstrom has defended the big blind with queen four of hearts. We have a seven, six, six flop with just the one heart. Message received and completely not understood. <laughs> Bergstrom ever check raises this board. Obviously not a whole lot right now. But uh, back to our hearts, back to our straight drop. I think there are probably better combinations. Just kind of spitballing with you guys. Obviously Big Blind will have some trip sixes in there. And similar, even hands, like combination draw type sort of hands. Under those circumstances, obviously hands like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, probably not loving to continue there. But uh, just the fold also seems very fair. from O'Neill under the gun. Current chip leader. Mr. Metal, 35 big blinds. What are you thinking, buddy? It's like the second worst hand in poker, so. Five seconds. Six pass. Seven pass. Ten pass. Seven six of diamonds for Alex Lapuliak. Is the next table to break the one over there? Is the next table to break the one over there? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I just, I couldn't see the, the number. For you. Okay. It is a Bob Fossey flop. The Pouliac with the open-ended straight draw. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nice flop for the big blind defender. It is a post-flop flip as we see O'Neill continue. The 75,000. Okay, so that was... 75K into 110, so quite a chunky size. I don't think 6-7 goes anywhere, though. Probably at least a call. Yeah, he's thinking about a raise. People, people uh, need some. Uh, I can't lay in super spader. You can't lay super spader. Oh, yeah, I can lay super spader. Oh, yeah, looking for live tells. Yeah, but I saw February. Yeah, I can say, yeah. Als ik buiten deze uur moet je gewoon betalen. Het is een aardig hier zeggen, zo weet ik niet. It does work. Nice little semi bluff there from the Pouliak. We track across the room. 35 players remain right now. Make that 34 players remaining. We say goodbye to Asaf Grufi, who's just been eliminated in 35th place. Another player cashing for 21,000 euros.
and also get uh, very, like, very much less fun on the on the third. <laughs> if I had some, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's really on the third. Seven bucks. Hard to have something. Hmm? Hard to have something. Forty-five thousand. One pass. Three pass. Nolder hovering around the 1.2 million mark. There are three players bunched up around that stack size. Lapuliak, Nolder and Neugebauer. 34 minutes left on the level. Blinds then go up again. So which asks, is Mulder Lena 900? Nope. Mulder is Tino Mulder. Spirit of the horse. Spirit of the horse, indeed. We've had a race from Anton Bergstrom in the cutoff with Ace-5 offsuit. Govert Matal will fold the Queen-5 in about 20 seconds. Metal. Can we get some tenacious D playing whenever this guy's tanking? Metal. There you go. Taking it down. No sweat. Well, with a stack of 3 million, with a stack of 150 big blinds, Porrig O'Neill is not just the table chip leader. He is also the tournament chip leader. Cesar Garcia started this level with around 2.5 million. No short stacks now at the table. Following the elimination we saw a short while ago of Lucas Rose, Govert Matal has 32 big blinds. One pass. O'Neill on the button. Digging O'Neill style, man. Very composed. Seems to have a really good handle on the game here. Maybe he's just thinking, like, why do they keep dealing me such terrible hands? Hasn't exactly been a card rack on this ta table. <sighs> Makes the fold. Mr. O'Dwyer. 72 big blinds. O'Neill, obviously, our current chip leader, so. Quite deep stacked. Seven rays. Steve is going to three bet with the ace queen. Now we've only caught one of O'Neill's cards. He has decided to fold his hand. Steve tables the ace queen. Second in chips at the table with one and a half million. 77 big blinds. <laughs> Mr. 
Now, earlier on, I said that Vital is entitled to do what he's doing. That being said, there is a clause in the T's and C's about what is considered to be abuse of the shot clock, and that is where players are using every single second of that 30-second timer when they have the intention to not play the hand. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think uh, we've seen it come into play. They, they've pulled the audible a couple times in my memory, but... See, I think usually that happens closer to when there's significant pay jumps and, and similar. Trips. But we are getting close to another pay jump, Nick. Granted, it's only a marginal pay yeah, jump, right. but I wouldn't be surprised if someone took an interest sooner rather than later. And it's not uncommon for players to see the amount of thinking time reduced. I, I, I think you might be right. We might be wandering into that territory. Yeah, getting involved with the tree bedding. Ooh, O'Neal with King Queen. We've seen this probably on two other occasions, James. A cold four bet opportunity with the King Queen off over the last couple days. I would love to see O'Neal pull the trigger here again. Folding, also reasonable. Vital, 9 3 offsuit. Yeah, I consider this to be egregious. Six <laughs> it's the fact he glances at the clock just before he folds every time, right? He's, oh, five seconds left, we're good. See, the one thing I will say, Nick, is, okay, he has that 30-second timer. But he's not just using 30 seconds of his own time. 30 seconds is also being reduced off the tournament clock, off the blind level, every time he's thinking. Yeah. So it is actually impacting on the flow of the table, and it's impacting on the other players. Yeah, and that means this table is probably going to be seeing fewer hands on average which means, I mean, the whole benefit of having long clocks is that we see more poker. There's more opportunities to uh, to let the skill of the game shine. And this is a situation where clearly has no intention of playing the 10-5, but is going to use that 30-second timer. I'm going to say it's getting to the point where someone needs to get involved. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that because it's irritating the hell out of the audience. I appreciate it's annoying from a spectator's perspective. <laughs> I'm thinking about the impact it has on the other players and the amount of time that is being wasted as far as the clock is concerned. Yeah, sure. It is our job to control the flow of the game. What's 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 Toby's motto? Smooth and controlled. Smooth and controlled. Not just on bubbles, but also all throughout every single tournament that is run by our yeah. tournament director, Toby Stone. Probably the roughest you can get to. 
All right, hand number 56. is right it is against the rules to take the entire clock with no intention of playing the hand it's become an issue seven raise fifty thousand ten pass just thinking though james what if the shot clock was shortened but then the tickets sorry the 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 shot tokens became longer so the expectation was that you have to act faster pre-flop but then when you needed the time, you actually had longer in, in the time banks themselves. What if, what if it was a 20-minute shot clock, 20-second shot clock, and then each ticket was an extra 40 or something like that instead? Like 1.1 million? We're going to see a flop here. Steve O'Dwyer's raised with King-10, called by Neugebauer with King-Jack, and Bergstrom with Queen-5. Ace-Queen-9. Bergstrom with the best hand for now. Seven bet, forty thousand. Steve O'Dwyer. With a gut shot to Broadway and backdoor diamonds working for him, continues for 40,000. One four. Make about calls. Uh, Bergstrom folds the best hand, heads up to the turn. The ace of diamonds. Street flash potential, although not, because Neugeboyer has the jack of diamonds in his hand. But O'Dwyer does have straight and flush draws now. Such a good poker face, man. Guy has a brick wall. Well, Neugeboy has the best hand here. King Jack High. Wire checks behind. Neugebauer is going to win this pot. Yeah. Royal, Royal, flush draw. Royal flush draw, no good. Oh, I know what that feels like, buddy. Trust me. Floor has been called. Right? So if that continues to happen, 
and we feel it's not relevant, okay. we might shorten your session okay. time. No, no, no. So warning at the stage neck, Matal's shot clock is not going to be reduced, but it's very clear. It is considered to be abuse of the shot clock if you are using the full 25 yeah. to 30 seconds every time when you clearly have no intention of playing the hand. So after that warning, if it continues, the amount of time he has will be reduced if this behavior continues. Yeah, and also, look, I know we've been ragging on him a little bit here, but Govert Mattel heard the rule. He said, I understand, that's fine, no problem at all, and you know, respectfully understood that he needs to speed up his, his moves, and I think that's, that's cool too. So applause for that. What was interesting there, James, I don't know if you picked up on it, was that the dealer said he keeps using 25 seconds exactly every hand. So in that sense, it was the pattern of his delivery and the pattern of his behavior that actually became a bit of a tell in that regard to the fact it probably wasn't to do with the strength of his hand. Um, so the dealer actually getting some uh, some live tells himself. O'Neill versus Lapuliak. Ace king ahead for now. Lapuliak. Still has live cards and a straight draw. Not a straight. No, not quite. You're going to have to bluff it, buddy. The Puliak so far, man, super impressed. Some really well-timed bluffs so far. Not the best run out for an ace-king call here, in my opinion. And the ace-high hero call yeah, from nice O'Neill. A correct I call. Know, yeah. yeah, very nice call there from O'Neill. Perhaps just not enough uh, chips in the middle there on the river to incentivize the fold. But I actually quite like that size. I do think uh, do you think it looks like you're begging for a call and therefore ace king kind of not feeling as confident. But another one going O'Neill's way now. 3.085 million, 154 big blinds. Uh, we've got 15 minutes left on the level. You'll have noticed, by the way, we've ticked down to 33 players. That is because Vlado Banachevich has been eliminated in 34th place, cashing for 21K. One pass. Two pass. Four pass. I know we can do claps, Nick, but can we do hugs? Are hugs available as one of the little pictures? Potentially. We need hugs for Griffin Benger, because bless him, and I don't say this that often, bless him, Griffin feeling a little bit poorly today, so I'm not sure he's going to be able to join us on the stream today. So we need to send Griffin our best wishes and send him hugs. 
There you go. Chat's got a few hugs there for you. Little Kirby hugs. I'm sure there's lots of emotes that could convey the same love that we feel for old Griff Benj. Seven plus. Where's the octopus one? That's kind of like a hug. There you go. Nice work, Croaks. Octopus hugs. Jack eight suited makes the fold as we round on hand at number sixty of the of the day. One raise forty five thousand. First time chatter Ralph. Why are they showing the cards when everybody folds when somebody open? They're they've agreed at the start of today's session as they joined our feature table to just show. Uh, the hand at the end of each hand. Um, so basically, they know that, that the other players are going to see on a 30-minute delay what happened anyway, so they've agreed to just do it just for just for a bit of fun, keeping it light, keeping it friendly. Basically, the winning player needs to show their hand whether or not it goes to showdown or if indeed it is one pre-flop. Jack eight against King six, and Steve O'Dwyer flops best, pairing is six. Seven check. Oh my God, that's actually quite an intelligent post in Twitch chat. Well done, P4773RNBR34K. I like what you have to say. It's actually a very good analogy. Croaks and Lobster say, I think you mean pattern break. No, no. I'm talking about the person called p 4773 rnbr 34 k If they wanted to call themselves Patent Break, they'd spell it out like that. <laughs> I get the impression they got confused between the bit that's meant to be their username and the bit that's meant to be their password. <laughs> Mr. O'Dwyer turning to bear in the big blind. Taking it down. are now 74 big blinds, 1.5 million chipperinos. So how close are we to the money jump? It's going to be once the table's broken and then it's the next elimination. I think it was, so I think it was 31, right? Yeah, so 33rd and 32nd both get 21K, then it jumps to 24,180. That's right, Curling Master. There is a $2.20 deep stack people can play right now while watching the stream because the mini EPT Prague series continues. 
Hey, Curly Master, is that the one with the low buy-in but lots of added value? Now, this is the most legitimate decision. I'd say that Vital should be racing the button here with Ace Nine of Clubs. Yes, 100%. Oh, Dwyer, is he considering a three bet? Steven? Uh, Mental's been pretty snug so far. Seven call. Okay, just a call. Oh. P4773 RNBR 34K gets back in touch, Nick, to say, thank you for the compliment, James. You are welcome, P4773 RNBR 34K. Mr. Mulder calls the big blind. We're going three ways to the flop. I kind of prefer here. A75, all diamonds. So top pair for Govert Metal. No one has a diamond in their hand. Check back to the initial yeah, raise, uh, razor, yeah, Mental yeah. in this case. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> Why not do it with Turkey left? And he's going to take yeah. a check. Are you chip later, by the way? Mital now a 94% favorite in this three way pot. Could change in an odd or two. Seven check. Seven check. I think if you're going to miss the flat bet, you probably should bet turn. I realize tons of equity when we can see the cards, but plenty of random stray diamonds, especially in the big blind that you want to try and protect from here. Maybe even get some value from a hand like, you know, 10 5. Uh, that's probably a bad example. 5 4. But the 4 of diamonds is, is probably seven, something the big five, blind seven. might have here some of the time. 7 8 with the 8 of diamonds. Nice hand, brother. It's all fires the turn yeah. and it takes yeah, the turn. Yeah. It was uh, not a good enter. King eight. This is better. The ones you win, you forget. Ace nine. Okay. Exactly. True. Now I'll say this is the best hand I have. Ace nine. That I have in my hands. Ace nine. Yeah, he's not lying actually. Not decision every time though. <laughs> no, I mean, not, not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm play a little quicker. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the red card, I'm doing the Ah, I see. I hard to see, hard to see that in the previous I didn't one. even know it was actually <laughs> as bad. I can't even remember uh, Somebody look at the, at the live feed. Blue? It's unbelievable what, what cards I have. <laughs> no decisions. Easy decisions. Four pass. Imagine randomly tuning in the stream and seeing him with seven free off and like thinking 30 seconds every time. <laughs> every time I have nine, three, seven, two, eight, deuce. Are you guys here in this chat? Is it like this one? I'm going to fold to the redraw. 24 oh, players. I see, yeah. <laughs> fold into the redraw. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mind it. <laughs> There are weaker tables than this. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Seven minutes till the break. And this Ghibli they're here and two maniacs on the table. You uh, are maniac. you counting yourself? He's a maniac too. Just uh, I have no yeah. cards, so I can I cannot play. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I it. cannot play uh, maniac now. I'm saying he's oh, a maniac, oh, he's a maniac too. too. Oh, okay, the whole table then. He, he must not be lying. He must have had really bad cards. No, he knows I, I, know, I know you can play some poker. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can play some poker, I have no cards now. Maybe the cards coming now. Five pass. Six pass. Seven rising. Fifty thousand. So he's going to use this opportunity to open up the 5 4 suited. If I could pick anybody to get heads up with in this tournament, I'd pick you just because I want revenge from, uh, and from EPT Campione. I know, I know. I know. Which tournament? From what? 
He beat me in the 10K high roller with EBT Campione 11 years ago. Oh. Still, That's so cool. Still tilted about it. So cool. Wow. Oh, I didn't want to suffer it a lot. I know. Steve O'Dwyer out for revenge. This is why you're here, right? We've been ago. following him everywhere he went. To Vegas. Can you even remember? following him anywhere he went. Can you even remember? Yeah, I remember, yeah. <laughs> when I beat him, it was uh, for me a very uh, good result. <laughs> I like the idea. Steve was like, "Yeah, I'm here to, to take down my nemesis," and his nemesis goes, "Sorry, what's your name again?" <laughs> I always want the trophy. The most small few, too. It's like thirty players. Seven pass. Ten pass. I think a bower on the button with fives. Forty-five. One raise. Forty-five thousand. And a ace king four flop, the Pouliac with the advantage. Do you know what? Until Steve brought up that little anecdote about the heads up battle and the 10k high roller, I'd completely forgotten about EPT Campione. I was there. It was not an easy place to get to. You had to fly into Milan and then take a car across the border into Switzerland to the lakes where Campione was. Wow. We were talking about this, James, stuff that you've forgotten over the years. Unbelievable. The walking almanac forgot about the Campione. Really wiped it from my mind. I was there very, very briefly, but the final table went very, very late. And by very, very late, I mean early the following morning. Wow. And I had an early flight from Milan, so I do remember clearly the winning moment running back to the hotel, throwing stuff in a suitcase, getting straight in the car, and almost missing my flight. That's stressful, mate. Stressful times. Don't like that. So Seabed on the flop, guys, and a call, of course, from King 10. I think we've told the story before, but the, uh, the live streams from the Italian stops on the EPT back in the day, there was an Italian production team a local production team who we partnered with. And they did the stream in Campione. They also did the stream in San Remo around that time. And the director, bless him, English was not his first language. Uh, he was also a very loud man. So trying to concentrate on talk when you have a loud Italian shouting in your ear is not easy, especially when his counts went something like this. We are going to run a video in 10 seconds. Video in 10, 8, 3, 7, 5, 1. <laughs> it was only a slight exaggeration, by the way. Joe, Joe can testify. He can testify that that's what it was like. He sneaks in a little bit of Italian there every once in a while. <laughs> bad flop, bad turn, bad river. Man, I'm just waiting for the Hardigan memoirs one day. It's going to be fantastic. The lights they had on the main stage would go absolutely crazy every time someone was eliminated. And they had this huge LED screen where a taxi would come on screen whenever a player was eliminated. And I remember the tournament staff saying, no. No. <laughs> a taxi. You're, 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 that's, that's, we, don't, we, don't, we don't do that on the EPC. We have a little bit more class. They, they vetoed the taxi. Can you imagine if Steve O'Dwyer got eliminated in that a taxi pulled up on the screen? <laughs> on your bike, son. On your bike. Earlier was, it came right here. Just right to some of this. Yeah, I saw it. Can we spam James Hardigan emojis if you guys want to hear the memoirs? Well, Wait we'll a go second. to the outer tables, Nick, because Maria Lampropoulou has just moved all in for her last 120,000. Still quite a few players to act. 
including Marius Kutzmanis. He reshoves. And Maria Lampropoulou is at risk here. She tables ace eight. Marius Kuzmanis has nines. No ace on the flop. No help on the river. And the PCA 2018 champion is a limited, eliminated. Maria Lampropoulou going out in 33rd place, cashing for 21K, taking us down to 32 players. And that means we're down to the final four tables. Back to the main stage for what is like to be the last hand of the level. <clears throat> Mulder, four to one favorite with Queens. Are we coming back after the break or not? Yeah. So because we're down to 32, a table's being broken, and that means we're going to get an additional player on the main stage. We are going to stick with this table for the next session of play. So the action here, raise, call, pre, flop, check, check. Uh, Mulder's still good. Played quite possibly here, so probably a big bet on the river now. Slight over bet. Showing either way. <clears throat> no way. So Mulder winning the last hand of the session. We are done at the feature table, but Tell the check raising coming. There are still hands in progress out in the field. Staying here? Or no? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's your seat, and you're going to be using this one. Are we, are we staying yeah. here? Or? You are staying here for another level, no more than two. No. Okay. So can I have my phone? Uh, sure, your phone. Here. You're on break. You can have your phone. Um, there's action at Ramon's table next, so let's go over there. Yeah. Picking up the action on the turn, it is Ramon Kalias versus Andras Gognievich. Ramon has bet 275,000. There's the board. King 5-4-3 with two clubs. Some of us would like to have a cup of tea, Andras. Well, he folds. So Ramon wins that hand, and he is now up to 1.5 million. Roll neck, Ramon. Roll neck, Ramon. Big for sassy, sleek and snazzy. He's roll neck, Ramon. Hey! With this session coming to a close, we can check on the stacks of the players at the feature table. We believe Porrig O'Neill is still tournament chip leader with more than three million. 
The other Irishman at the table, Steve O'Dwyer, is playing 1.6 million, more than 64 bigs, at the next blind level, which is 10K, 25K, with a 25K big blind ante. It's the same lineup on the main stage, with an additional player joining us. We'll be eight-handed when we come back from break. And that break is going to be around 15 minutes long. So join us for more action from the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's the Prague main event. It's day four, the day we play down to 16. Right now we're at 32. We're at four tables. By the end of the day, just two tables will remain. Back soon. Leo's opened under the gun with ace king. Puchkov in with ace queen. De Vries calls with threes and flops a set. Shander to threes. Ace king drawing stone dead. We're about to find out just how invincible Giuseppe Pantaleo feels right now. Shanda raise. Raises to 525,000. I think about this race. I think it's pretty tough to get a call from Ace King or any hand that miff whiffed entirely. Yeah. But well done, it happened. It's a separate call, 525. Turn card, use of space. I'm so glad that we still have that alert for the change in blind levels to ruin the tension of dramatic poker moments. <laughs> Here comes the rest. It's a little bit more than pot. De Vries all in for 1.7 million. So Shanda de Vries gets the fold, has 3.19 million, and the blinds are going up to 40,000, 80,000. Okay, this next hand you may have seen before, it's quite a significant one. All right. Good chance I don't remember it anyway. Giuseppe Pantaleo on the button with Jack 8. Definitely would describe this as one of the most famous hands in EPT history. As Pantaleo raises to 165,000, action on Jesus Cortez Lozano in the big blind, who's got Jack 10.
Seems like a fair defend. Lozano running fairly hot so far. Queen, okay. six, deuce. So both players whiff. Lozano checks the action to the preflop aggressor. Seems like a pretty standard spot to see bet. Oh, okay. Board pairs on the turn, puts a potential flush out there. So with no C-bet from Pantaleo on the flop, Lozano leads turn for 230k. Pantaleo huh. calls. Well, yeah, this leads me to believe that Pantaleo is going to make some kind of move on the river because you can't possibly think you have the best hand. Well, with the board now double paired, you will note that they are both playing queens and deuces with a jack kicker. This is going to be the type of pot that everybody loves. Although, as you suspect, Joe, it seems that Pantaleo is getting ready to make a move. Lozano has bet 330,000. Pantaleo did not call, hoping to hit something on the turn. He is going to bluff this river, raising to 790,000. How much? This is really weird because Pantaleo did not see bet the flop, right? You'd expect him to see bet, see bet with clubs, with a queen. Uh, you would ex the only hands you wouldn't expect them to be any C bets would be. Oh. Lozano okay. calls <laughs> Pantaleo <laughs> Mux. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it should have been a chop. <clears throat> Oh, man. Do you think he knows? Yeah. yeah Prob I had to check high, too. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> you saw it? Lozano oh showed. My. Oh, he showed, too? Oh, my God. How do you recover from that? Oh, no. I mean, I understand it because you never expect you're going to chop a jack high there. He mucked his hand. That's why it's not a chop. He surrendered. He threw his cards face down into the muck. Lozano, as the last player with cards, which he showed, automatically wins the pot. Oh, man. On Mark. Who has raised to 160,000 with ace jack. Puchkov has flatted with sevens. De Vries calls with king queen. Pantaleo must be on uber tilt right now. Has fours in the small blind. Do we just want to say that <laughs> that uh, Cortez deserved that pot for making the call with jack high? Yeah. Thor Stang is in as well with 5-4. We are going five ways to the flop. Thank you. And that flop is oh ace, God. five, deuce with two diamonds. This is a very Kent Lundmark flop. This is messy. Hey, remember how I say like early day um, coverage because of multi-way action? Yeah. Here we go. Um, interestingly, Pantaleo has decided to lead here Started with pocket with fours. I don't think it's going to work out for him. I mean, this look, I don't want to read too much into it, but this is the kind of play you start to make when you're rattled, right? Okay, let's go. You just start acting goofy.
Pantaleo does not improve on the turn. It might be compelled to fire again. Is there a check? Nope, all right. Fair enough. And Kent Lamarck checks behind. River is the eight of clubs. Lamarck has a lock on this. The Lundmark check mark. Check. And check showdown. Okay, it's check to showdown. Shows a pair of Doesn't mark this time. They are going to fly away. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> The smile with like the rocking in his chair like that leads me to believe that he's losing his marbles a little bit. Yeah. So Pantaleo has lost the chip lead, started with 6.4 million, down to 2.5 million. Kent Lundmark now playing more than 4 million. Pantaleo has opened with ace-7. Puchkov has ace-5 suited in the big blind. He calls. Queen, 10-3. Normally, my reaction to the toothpick would be, nah. But Konstantin Puchkov, the Russian Karl from up, is kind of making it work. I will allow it. Two hundred sixty K a piece. We all draw now for Puchkov. Pantaleo is still with the best hand right now. And there is Hello. the wheel. Runner, runner, straight cards for Puchkov. Toothpick tail time. Yeah, you're right. It really does mess with things, doesn't it? Puchkov. Betting 760,000. Now would be a bad time for an ace high hero call. I mean, does Puchkov really look like a the bluffing type? Well, I mean, I guess, yes. I think Pantaleo has very much lost his mojo. Yeah. Along with a significant percentage of his chips. You know, when I think river full pop bluffer, I don't often think of a guy with his glasses on a chain. Pantaleo down to 1.26 million. Came into the final table as the big chip leader. Now one of the shortest stacks and now finds himself all in with ace 10. Does have Shanda de Vries dominated, but Pantaleo is the at-risk player. And this would be a very sad ending. And the club counts. Four. King. Oh. Oh. There is a four on the flop. Giuseppe needs to catch a ten to stay alive. Pantaleo looks so, so despondent. Miserable. I guess that helps a little. Yeah, an ace or a ten would save him. It's the ace. Yes! Barry Greenstein. Sorry, I had Marisha stuck to the threes. It's what, not nothing again. No, 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 no.
So just checking the advertised payouts. Second place, 525K. The winner, 825. And Mark with Ace Queen, Lozano with King Jack. James, any recollection as to how long this heads up match actually went? I don't remember it that clearly. I don't well, recall it. I don't recall it being an epic heads-up battle. I remember the final table being quite meaty, but I don't remember the heads-up going on forever. Well, it feels like it's going to be relatively short on TV if Ace Queen holds. You think it's going in here? I'm not, I don't know if there are 20 needs. I mean, Lozano three bet to 880, and he had a total of five something, right? Of so I don't see why. Yeah, Lundmark Lundmark shoves. Just does shove. Yeah. Oh man, look at that rail. And Lozano calls. Yes, this could be it. Kent Lundmark, a two to one favorite to win the Barcelona leg of season seven of the European Poker Tour. Nine, 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 seven, ace high, still good. Lundmark now nearly a three to one favorite. Lozano needs help. King or a jack required? You're just like, please, just pair me one time. Is it five of spades? Same outs required. Six cards that Lozano can hit to survive. If Lundmark fades a king or a jack, he's the champion. Strike one on the flop, strike two on the turn. Let's see the river. The river is an ace, Barry Greenstein. We have a winner here in Barcelona. Joe, tell us his name. Get on, Mark. The Swede there it is. takes it down for 825K. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. Live from the Keynes Casino at the Hilton Prague, day four of the main event rolls on. Record-breaking field of 1,285 players now down to the final four tables. Chip leaders galore, Porig O'Neill, over three million in chips followed by Garcia, Kite, Farrell, and Marley Sprague. Part of the Poker Stars family alongside myself, Joe Stapleton, and Nicholas Michael Walsh. Hello, hello, thank you for having me, Joe. We are getting down to it. Half of this field needs to go before we call it a day today. 32 down to 16. These are the chip counts of the players we will be keeping an eye on, all of our eyes on, at the feature table. Overall chip leader, Porrig O'Neill, is somehow the chip leader at the feature table. That's exactly how that week works. Steve O'Dwyer in the number two spot. Boy, that is a big gap between number one and number two, isn't it, for the two Irish players? Yeah, huge spot. Loving this action. Would love to see them go all the way. Let's see what happens, Joe. And Thurin on Twitch noticing two Dutch players at this feature table in the form of Tuan Mulder and Govert Matal. Got Romania represented. Some other countries I didn't get to. Payouts. We are now currently in the 21,000 euro payout. So things are starting to get real in the payout department. Looks like we're on a pay jump as well. 32nd making 21,000 euros, but what we're mostly interested is where we'll be cracking those six figure scores tomorrow. The runner up in this event is going to get 643,000 euros with 1 million going to the winner. One win, well, you know, we leave off the 30,000, but 
But 30,000 is still a lot. It's yeah. Still a lot. A million 30,000. Yeah, 30,000. That's a lot of 5K buy-ins. Let's not forget that. It can be easy to feel out of touch when do you're I, looking at a million, right? Do I have to use the 30,000 for more 5, 5K buy-ins, or can I buy real stuff with it? You know, like yeah, food and vacations. No. Yeah. I mean, you can buy stuff, but that 5K buys a dream. The winner is Sean. Yeah, <laughs> The winner is, if you win the pot, you show both cards. Both cards? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The stuff in my dreams can't be no, bought. Then, well, 30 seconds. Like, like twins. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought it's... <laughs> Buenos dias, Adria! Oh, but don't do Wait, that. did he think, though? Adria Diaz, under the gun, ace-5 off. Oh, uh, well, you folded that one, okay. Yeah, folded it. Oh. under the gun. Then I wouldn't have folded it. <laughs> Woo-ho! Uh, year of Romania. Lupuleak. Can I get two waters, please? Pocket queens. Yeah. Or one big. Do you have big ones as well? The real deal, okay, O'Neal. Then, then too small. Thank you. Folds jack 10 on the button. Govert, Matsal, 10-8 in the small. And the smile. <laughs> Good boy. Ace Queen for Steve of the Dwyer. In the big blind, will not be folding. I mean, this would be hell of a, a live read, I guess, but it just doesn't happen like that. Well, if anyone can do it, Steve O'Dwyer. I think he just three bets here a ton. 210. 210,000, slightly over four times. Yikes. You at all nervous with queens here, Nick? You at all worried? I think there's always an anxiety with any hand, really. You know, thinking about what's to come, thinking about, you know, how to get max, how to lose the minimum when it goes south. So Lapuliak only about 47 bigs. They say only 47 big blinds, obviously a ton in tournament poker. If you think that Steve O'Dwyer is a very good player, and is a very is a much better player than you. You're gonna to want to put more chips in here, not just call, right? Well, on the flip side, if you think the Steve O'Dwyer is a very aggressive opponent, and of course he is, you could let him blast off with his whole range, including some of his bluffs here. Nah, I, nah, I'm taking. I think I'm, <laughs> I was gonna say I think the four bet is probably very conventional here. The four bet is what you're gonna do a lot of the time. Four hundred fifty. Not the biggest four bet. Calling. Call. Oh wow! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh wow! Things escalated slowly, then quickly. Thank you. Lou Palayak gets Steve O'Dwyer to commit his chips. In the words of Candlebox, far behind. Absolute snappy snap. Lapuliak had already decided ahead of time what he was doing and gets the dominating hand all in. Lapuliak looking pretty excited, literally licking his lips at the thought of doubling through Steve O'Dwyer. Has to fade aces. Nine, five, four, that is about, well, no, it's not super clean, is it, with a couple of wheel cards there? You're not too worried just yet. Steve's gonna need an ace or runner, runner. Turn card is a four. There goes the wheel outs. One card to fade. River, seven of spades, home and dry, double up Lupuleak. Steve what? O'Dwyer. Very big sweats. Left with 13 big blinds. Really? Yeah, absolutely uh, amazing spot there for the awesome. Queens. And just a very key pot now for Lapuliak. He's been having an absolutely stellar run. If I'm not mistaken, Lapuliak was the player who made the straight flush against Marley yesterday. Yeah. When she had the nut flush. On an absolute tear last couple days. 
And if I'm not mistaken, it's the year of Romania. It might be the year of Romania. 2.525 million now for Alexandru Lepuliak. That's 101 big blinds. That's got to put him in the top five easily, right? Well, it puts him number two at this table. Yeah. Yeah. And O'Neill is definitely chip leader at the moment, I believe. That's correct. So he's got to be close. He might just be second in chips, Joe. It's somewhere, I would say somewhere between two and three, yes. I realize queens versus ace queen is dominating, but that is a sweaty moment, Joe. We saw a smile there for a moment. We have got a walk off. Jose Gonzalez out in 32nd. I love your music. 21,000 euros, which means we have hit a pay jump for the rest of this game. Everyone now guaranteed 24,180. Now the second shortest stack at this table. And we've got to lose 15 more players before we can call it a day here. Nick, what do you think? Let's have a prediction. Do we get to 16 before the scheduled end of play, or do we go into overtime? So just like to to point out, I'm two for two on the predictions this this prog during this trip. So let me let me give this some thought because I want to go I want to go for a three for three. Are we gonna go the distance? Are we gonna play to level six, or are we gonna get to 16 before then? Is that your question? That is my question. Okay. I'm, I want to know. Look, I did manage to make it out to the Christmas market for one second the other day, but Hardigan was hungry, so he's like, "We're doing one mulled wine, and then we're going to find a restaurant." So I didn't really get to take it in. I didn't really get to look at the tree. Yeah. I didn't take any pictures. I didn't, I didn't browse the wares of the people in the town sure, square. Sure, sure. Like, I'm looking for a new broadsword. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking to replace my leather tunic. You, you, you're looking for a plus five dexterity, you know, potion. Exactly, yeah. yes. Some potions, maybe. So, I want to know, am I going to have time to do that tonight, or are we going to be here all the way through? Okay, let me assess the situation. Average stack at the minute, 1.2 million. I thought you were having fun in this table, and I see... Hey, we're still playing or no? Thank you. Yeah, and awesome. yeah, well, you earlier on we were discussing there is a table that is very short stacked. How many would that be? One, two, three, four. Well, not just when you got to walk. But. Uh, yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense in that situation. Otherwise, yeah, sure. That's a great point, Crazy Carl. What time is it in Prague? It's 4.30 in the PM. I'd say for me to be able to go out and do any of that stuff, we'd have to be done by like 9. I think anything past that is probably a little too late to get out there, although it is Friday night. Yeah. I mean, look, also, why has it got to be such a Grinch, man? It takes you all the way to the market, then he just shoes you straight into a restaurant? I mean, he, he, he didn't want to go at all because <laughs> he was hungry. And then the compromise that was that we could do one, one hot wine. One. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I hate to say it, but I think we're going to go the distance here, Joey. I think so, too. Because we are quite deep, and even after consolidation, I don't know if we lose enough to get all the way to 16, but you never know. Also, Tom, my last prediction was, in fact, that Jan Kite was going to bet 180K on the river and get paid, and I drilled it exactly to the penny. Yeah, one more uh, complete dead-on prediction, and uh, he achieves the status for the rest of the day of Nostradamnik. <laughs> One more successful prediction, and I get to level 12, and I can finally use that greatsword that I purchased from the, from the market. All right, Govert Mattel three-betting Bergstrom here, and that's going to end this this hand without a flop. <laughs> Nick Stradamus. <laughs> Nostradamnik. <laughs> Jason Toy on YouTube. Maybe you're having fun Sorry, I like... Yeah, but we played it yesterday, and then okay. it wasn't my idea, but okay. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, of course you like the show everyone rule. 
Uh, Jason Toys has accidentally tuned into the French commentary. It took me five minutes to figure out that I needed to switch to the broadcast. I thought Stapes was just doing a bit at first. Maybe if we don't play the showing game, that then doesn't go all that way. Basically. Well, now you got to do a bit in French. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe it doesn't them. jam if we don't play the showing game. Who knows? Probably still does. Probably the same. Yeah, probably the same. Le commentateur, that's right, the cat. Wow, look at Simple Hacker. I agree, I'm also a big fan of Stapleton. He's so fighting and brightens up every stream. Guess what? You banned. <laughs> Diaz all in for his last eight big blinds. Not sure Mulder can call that many bigs here in the small blind. Still a player to act on his left. He does call. Spicy, spicy. Nugerbauer out, and that is going to lead to the showdown. <laughs> And Diaz should like what he sees. Domination situation. Big favorite to double up. Big favorite to survive. Big favorite to take a little chunk out of Mulder. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, Ace-5 is going to be ahead of some of that shoving range. I would be more concerned about playing the out of position to the player to the left. But look, if Mulder's making the call, it's probably the right one. Guy is a super poker genius. King high flop. I don't think Diaz wants that five to be any more surrounded. Turn is a deuce. The club is good news for Diaz. Gut shot potential now for Mulder. Takes away one out. And it's the nut flush for Diaz. Double up, oh, oh, double up. What the heck is going on on YouTube right now? People really dislike Audrey. Buenos dias, Adria. Down to 43 big blinds. Spear of the horse. So we've got a somewhat of a horse expert on the uh, on the production team here, and he told me that horses have 11 distinct noises. It's like whinny, neigh, snort, whatever. There's 11 of them. Okay. We didn't really get into the into the nitty gritty and what the other seven are, but. Horse people are weird. I don't know if you know any horse people, but they're a little. Yeah, I, I, I know some horse people. Yeah. I know a few horse people. They're weird. We got the real deal O'Neill. Min raising pocket kings from under the gun plus one. <laughs> Steve O'Dwyer with ace deuce holds. <clears throat> now the shortest stack at the table. Diaz no longer. Mulder, king eight suited on the button. Are you sure they weren't just like describing the games in horse? <laughs> there's 11 different games. No, because <laughs> there's only five of those. <laughs> Numbers don't quite add up. Mulder chucked in a three bat with King Eight suited. This guy's a glutton for punishment yeah. right now. Loving it. 37 bigs after making the three bat there behind Mulder. So. I think O'Neill probably finds just the four bet here quite often. It's nice and small. 
three hundred and three hundred and seventy-five. Three twenty-five. Close. Prediction. Slightly off target. Is he gonna pull an O'Dwyer here? I mean, at least O'Dwyer at Ace Queen. Though. Yeah, it's going to come along. I mean, Joe, you'll notice if it's... you call here, you've run way too good in your life. <laughs> Just clicks it at him. You've run way too good in your life to think that you can make a hand here. Jack 10-6, all red, no spades. Mulder's got just over pot behind Joe. Just over 3% equity. <laughs> I wonder if O'Neill just rips it on the flop. I would. 200. What leads me to believe this is probably better. I think it's probably better to have a bet not all in, Joe, just because you probably do want to have some <laughs> continuation bluffs. Not this one. We're not skipping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you do want to have a size that's not just like, I'm going to commit or I'm going to fold. But yeah, nice work there. I think I like the 200K. Maybe even smaller. Maybe on that flop, you can make it even smaller. But it is quite connected. You probably want to use a size that forces your opponent to commit or fold. You might have seen the field ticker drop to the number 30. That's because we've lost the world, according to Lars Garp. Everyone's favorite Frank Caliendo lookalike headed for the exit. 30 players remaining. Mr. Willie Welly asks, why do they keep showing their hands? A little gentle person's agreement amongst the table. It's been happening at almost all the feature tables we've had over the course of the last few days. Folks have just said, hey, you want to show our hands? We're going to see them in 30 minutes anyway. Mm. And uh, well, like some hundred, yeah? amazingly, everyone's going along with it. I'm a fan. It's just fun, says Arcadia, and I agree. Yeah. Fun. It's too bad. I think that the person who's keeps asking how do they listen to the German commentary and their first name is Arian, maybe we can maybe we can give them the freedom to go to another channel. You banned. Arian Reina feels like a Feels like a name I was supposed to be tricked into reading, but I did it anyway. Ita over here on Twitch chat saying, really need to lose the scarves. And also it's scarves, not scarfs, by the way. Scarfs is something that you do when you eat your food really quick. <laughs> uh, scarves, I love them. What's your problem with scarves? Also, it's a powerful tool in protecting your tails as well. If you're not utilizing a scarf, maybe consider it. Maybe you need to find the scarves. I can't wear a scarf. It feels like I'm being choked by a really weak person all day. <laughs> you prefer to be choked by a really strong person, Joe? It's just a tease. <laughs> it's not 30 minutes. It's until break. Do you even scarf, bro? Right. Oh, or someone's. Uh, yeah. Just sits right on my Adam's apple. I think it's fun anyways. Yeah, I, I think, think it's, it's fun anyway. It's, it's a fun thing. Yeah. I like I'm being choked by a really weak up. person. Awesome. So I know sure what I'm getting you for Christmas. <laughs> we honestly prefer to play here. Button versus Big Blind, Bergstrom versus oh, wow. O'Neill. people would like to play this kind of games? O'Neill uh, has caught one straight I card. I don't think all tournaments. Uh, Bergstrom hit a diamond. Imagine online, right? Yeah. With the things you do right now. <laughs> live stream is uh, normal, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 minutes on yeah, live stream is normal. Yeah, playing whole tournament like this will be a little bit crazy. Since the beginning. I wouldn't mind it though. So 
Bergstrom takes it down with the C-bet. Blinds are 10,000, 25,000 with a 25,000 big blind ante. I tried to uh, start a big blind ante in my home game, but uh, my mom's sister was not available. <laughs> Shout out Aunt Helen. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Oh my God, people that want to rate my jokes, oh my goodness, that's the easiest way to get banned. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest way. Lapuliak on the button, King Nine off. Natal. I believe you call here pretty much every time. Yeah, gonna call Natal. 28 bigs is the effective stack. So we're starting to hand about 28 big blinds effective. It's probably close to 30. Because you'd like to look at your pre antis situation. Speaking of antis, that's right. Ooh, this could be a dangerous straight to make. Nine of spades here. Quite an interesting card for Lapuliak to have because, of course, a decent amount of hands that might like check raising here or continuing might be a flush draw and or a straight draw or a combination of both. Also blocking some street flash draws. Ooh. Also blocking hands like eight, nine, eight, six. That ruins the gross straight possibilities. Mattal doesn't want to lead turn here. I don't know if this is a missed bet from Mattal, Joe. I just feel like when your opponent checks this flop, they're going to have over cards some of which might have gut shots now. For example, a hand like ace nine, maybe an ace seven once in a while. Something like that, you catch my drift. If you don't lead the turn here, you're gonna give some of these high card combos the opportunity to take another check and that's just missing a street. Um, kind of gets rewarded regardless though. Takes the check, Lapuliak bets instead. Mattel now with a decent top pair and a gut shot. Playing it cool, just takes the flat. Deuce of diamonds, about as bricky as it gets. My anticipation, Mattel checks. Lapuliak fires, Mattel calls. Prediction activated. <laughs> ah, okay. Two for three. <laughs> what have I done? What have I created? <laughs> go, go, Gadget, Govert, Mattel. I'm like three, right? Thirty-four bigs in a dream. I think Govert's a pretty successful guy. I'm not sure how much of a dream this is, but. Hey. Maybe. Hey, don't be like that. What do you need, PT? It's not about the money. Nick, you're a young man, and I'm an old man. Can you tell me if I should be offended by this? This commentary is searching. Is that just a word? I don't know. I, I feel like it might be an autocorrect scenario. Scorching? Searing? Okay, sure. I'll allow it. Searching for a reason to ban. That's right, APK. Suffering, oof. This commentary is... I was told you had Queen Jack off when you were thanking the four bet. That was not true. Oh, you're not... You're oh, not crypto, you are so banned, bro. Cheapers. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's almost chat bro Saturday. Please don't ruin it early. I mean... You guys are killing me. I mean... 
All right, HJ it, opens. O'Neill calls. It's not mediocre. Thanking is. It's either really bank. good or terrible. <laughs> but it's yeah, not was, mediocre. I was, uh, thinking well, yeah. thinking well, who was thanking? <laughs> I think that's what you're thinking. No. no. All right, go. back back to the poker. Here we go. Commentary is better than the NFL commentators. Boom. I'll take it. Boom. You guys hear about that Scorigami the other day? <laughs> I did, yes. I, I actually didn't. I, it's just because just because uh, James mentioned it. Didn't even know what it meant. I'm not even sure. Why is it? Where is it origami, though? Isn't it the folding of paper? Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't know. Birch drum. Isn't it more like bingo? Like we're ticking off like all the opportunities, you know, all the different yeah, scores. Yeah, I don't know. Sco sco origami is a crafting art, just like scoregami is crafting a unique score. Uh, all right. That's a stretch, though, isn't it? O'Neill decides to call with some hopeful pair outs and some backdoor spades, but none of those materialize on this Ace of Diamonds turn. Bergstrom now lays up and is going to give O'Neill potentially a free river that cannot win him the hand. And O'Neill's going to pay for it anyway. <laughs> He's like, I'll bet this scare card. It's it's funny because the dealer says into her mic, five bet. Seat five. As yes. in seat five, yeah. So she's saying five she says five bet eighty thousand. It always freaks me out every time. What she means is seat five bets eighty thousand. Four hundred and twenty thousand in the middle. Hopefully O'Neill does not improve on the river. Hits the worst best card possible. I think it just goes check check though, Joe. The queen improved in, in a way that they win quite often here, so. It does go check, check. Yeah, check, check indeed. Bergstrom's gonna pick up a nice little pot there. Puts him third in chips at the table. Actually dead even for third with Nugabauer. So cool asking, can the dealers hear the commentators? Only if thank, they have a time machine. Thank God, no. Yeah, of course, everything you're seeing happen here 30 minutes ago in Prague. And we are discussing it in real time, sharing the action with you guys. If you're following along on Poker News or another live um, news reporting application and or platform, that's going to be in real time. That will spoil you, so stick here. Stay with us. And enjoy it. Cards up with commentary. Ace eight suited for Alexandru. Oh. LTO Miles says, anybody already say that Lupe Luyak looks like Daniel LaRusso? Yeah, man. The Karate Kid. I'll allow it. Wow. I actually drilled it. That's pretty freaky. Then speaking of freaky, O'Neal's getting a little freaky deaky here with 9-8 suited. Attacking the Karate Kid. Sweep the legs, Johnny. He looks more like the kid from The Princess Bride. Sure, I can go with Fred Savage from The Princess Bride also. Yeah. Yeah, you're all right. You get a bad look-alike, and you get a bad look-alike. Lapuliak does have this hand dominated, but it's pretty tough to... Continue with ace eight suited. Nice hand. 
You know what's weird is O'Neal's face says he's all business. But then he's got the wacky Christmas shirt showing his hands. <laughs> so I think uh, I think he's just doing a good job having a serious look out there. He's probably a pretty fun guy. <sighs> Looks like a pretty fun guy. Have you ever met an Irishman that isn't a fun guy? Sadly, yes, but not that many. <laughs> O'Neill couldn't be more Irish if he dressed as a pint of Guinness. I'm loving the look. And also, as James said, harnessing the power of the festive season as well. Festive O'Neill. Festive O'Neill. Dwyer folds the button. Only the blinds remain. 10-4 off for Diaz. It gives it up. A rare walk for Toon Mulder, who had the uh, the best hand, A6. So I ran into an EPT champion today at breakfast. Oh yeah. And I'm not gonna say who it is. Because they uh, they told me a bad beat story. And uh, I went, well, you know, that's pretty rough. That's why I don't play. I don't really I can't can't really handle those. And then he proceeded to tell me what the game of poker is all about. And it's about surviving the bad beats. And I was just like, boy. I didn't sign up for this newsletter. <laughs> Just trying to eat some eggs here, pal. <laughs> oh, dear. See, you're never safe, Joe. You're never <laughs> safe in this industry. Somebody explaining to me what the game of poker is all about. It's Great game of pot limit Omaha. Definitely. Definitely finished up breakfast sooner than I would have otherwise, so thanks for saving me the calories. No, oh, jeez. Okay, potential here. <laughs> All right, yeah. Two actual hands. Mr. Mulder. Full metal jacket versus the truth is out there. Nugabauer not gonna play this hand. Nugabauer is gonna play this hand. Scarf activated. Hello, nurse. Three snowmans. Nom nom for Mulder. And Matal with a kind of dangerous second pair. So far, Matal been pretty patient. This is not an unreasonable continuation, Beto, of course. Very strong second pair. Will fire 75 of the thousands. Mulder, yeah, yeah, gotta be. You gotta, you gotta smooth it. You gotta smooth call this one. So I was, I was about to say, Joe, I think the, the key difference between some of the other hands we've seen where people have flopped big is, first of all, what are you check raising as a bluff here um, mm -hmm. from this position, especially with the player to your left? So that's it's already unbalanced, right? You're already screaming that you have something very strong Okay, here. so explain this to me. So what you're saying is that in order to raise in any spot, whether it's check raise or raising, you also need to have plausible bluffs as well. You don't have to, but if you do and you don't have plausible bluffs, then people will know that you're very strong in, in, a, in, a, in a very meaningful and tell-ish way. Yes, I'm putting chips in the middle, I'm strong. Yes, but there are other situations where you go, I'm putting chips in the middle and I've got a bunch of bluffs here as well. And people mm -hmm. go, yeah, you can, can be bluffing with this, you can you're be You're talking about if you're that. a good player. Yeah, I mean, okay. if, if you're playing against a, a, a relatively soft pool, then yeah, just go ahead and raise and just hope for the best, I guess. But 
the other point is that we're quite shallow here, right? Mulder's, Mulder's about 30-ish big blinds now. Uh, in fact, 28 after making the call on the turn. Or sorry, on the flop, excuse me. Mulder checks, it over. checks. Does not going to get a nibble. Shows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that word was, but I think it was Mwah. Maybe it was something in Dutch. Can you put that in Google Translate, Nick? Mwah. What? Oh, it means nice hand. <laughs> Woo-wee, that is a lot of chips in the middle. I see cards in front of Marley Sprague, playing against Umberto Ruggieri. 750k in this pot. Whew. Board is 10, king, 7, 3, 7. 10 seconds. Check. Ruggieri checks. We're checking the showdown, looks like. Marley shows ace of diamonds, queen of diamonds for the missed everything. <laughs> but it's good. And it is good. Oh, wow, there are two flush draws out there, and Ruggieri had the Ooh, other one. But only at ace four. Yeah, you're like sitting with a finger in your mouth. Oh, the, was the, I? The ring. I didn't notice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just just let her stack her chips, all right? That is a big, big pot for Marley Sprague. Up to 2.4 million, Joe. That is good, probably for second or third on the leaderboard. Looks like it. Follow Marley. <laughs> Follow Marley. Now she's looking real good, loving the action. Would love to see Marles make it all the way today. That's right. Lobin Spraggy is still in. Someone should change that command. Because for the at least the rest of this tournament, Marley is Spraggy and Spraggy is Ben. Marley already had a great poker name. I heard you guys talking about her maiden name, Cordero, which I believe means heart. Oh, in what language? Portuguese. Portuguese. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm totally tripping. I don't know where I got that from, but I feel like... What did you is, say? Is she it, was Iranian? No, no, no. I, I, I asked if she was of Romanian descent. Romanian. Oh, it's the year of Romania. That makes sense. Is, is, is Daniel Negrani of Romanian descent? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm, there, there is a poker player out there of Romanian descent. That's Last names that know. end in U are usually a dead giveaway for Romanian. Ah, so it's yeah. Corderu. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I apologize. That Whoa, baby. Random. Never gets old. Pocket A's. Oh. God, I wish I could just go down and look at them in person. Cordero means lamb. Okay, well, if that's true, then that's not as good a poker name. <laughs> Is that a raise and take it, though? Raise and take it. Texas doll you folded in the big blind. Unbelievable. You made a bad fold? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I feel like Lamb can be a cool poker name. Yeah. Like uh, Lamb, a, not traditionally known as an aggressive. A wolf in lamb's clothing. I think the phrase is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, well, and, uh, even, more like yeah. a lamb to the slaughter. <laughs> Lions over lambs. <laughs> That's right. Stu is a Romanian name. That's correct. <laughs> STFU, also Romanian. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Natal, under the gun. Going to raise for the men. Natal starts the hand with 27 big blinds. Sorry, uh, 29 big blinds, excuse me. Playing? 
Well, Boleak giving it a think with the Queen Jack. Hoping you can you can show it made in the river or something, yeah. you know, after a big pot. O'Neill's got so many chips, he's got to make a labored effort to get his cards around them. It's a long trip. <laughs> Raise and take it, Mattel. Show him. Devo Dwyer getting a little loosey-goosey under the gun with King-7 suited out of a 10 big blind stack. Look at that, gets King-Queen to fold. Oh, Steve O'Dwyer. Ooh, boy, ace-jack suitor though for Mattel. At least he's live. And is gonna get to realize his flop equity. Ace eight six, not great for S O D. Does have the range advantage but would be walking right into it and does take the first step toward the buzzsaw. Bet's the minimum though. He's too good. Even when he's gonna do this, he's gonna lose the least. Air Air says the stakes are high unlike Matal's scarf tie. All right. Never heard of a low scarf tie being something that we Take note of, but sure, why not? Oh, that's a raise. Metal. Steve gives it up. Mattel shows the big ace. All right, this is pretty good, though. If Marley wins the million, she could afford to buy a Lamborghini. Ah. Well, yeah. I mean, checking the Marley in position, give her the keys to the Lambo. Or you could do your... um. Your Michael Caine impression. Don't you do the Lamborghini then? Don't you do that one? Isn't that one of your lines? Uh, I, well, I, I, I usually do, some men just want to see the world burn. Oh, you don't want to do what, the Lamborghini then? Remember that line? I don't know that line. Yeah, okay. I guess what, was, was, was that also from Batman Begins? Batman yeah. Begins? Yeah. No, I don't know that one. Oh, he says, he says the Lamborghini then. <laughs> it says like the Lamborghini den. The like Lamborghini that. then. Yeah, something like that. I don't know how to do it without doing it. I don't really do impressions. Pocket queens. So raising off a 42 big blind stack. Yes. Nuka Bauer, who has very kind eyes. Bergstrom. Ace 10. Nuka Power has been real quiet. I don't know, man. Oh, 
but you're gonna find out where you stand with these 10 pretty quick when you put out this three bet. Slaps it in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you are all like, like pictures, you know, like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what are you doing? If you're watching along at home and you're getting the itch to play some poker, now's a good time to tell you about the mini EPT. Smaller versions of the real life EPT happening here in Prague every single day alongside the coverage. Three tournaments a day, starting at 3.15, 8.15, and 5.15? Someone took my other page. Anyway, New Year's tickets every single tournament has New Year's series tickets added to the prize pool and on Sunday the 17th while we broadcast the main main the mini mains are both going to have gold power passes added to them don't miss out guys small buy-ins loads of added value and all you guys out there that come and you're like a first time chatter and you're like hey I'm looking for free tickets you can find them there 615 315 615 and 815 every single day so you've still got time. You've got about an hour until that 615 tournament starts. 140. And here we go. Back in action. Pocket fives, pocket jacks. And Diaz with clean four off in the big ain't gonna play. Bauer trying to figure out what to do with pocket fives facing this three bet. And we are going to have a little set miming. Will we see some dirtiness? I don't think we've seen too much dirtiness with people set miming. No, don't think I spotted any today so far. Gebauer checks it over to Mr. O'Neill with the Jables. I think you can continue really small here. Like super duper small. Goes for 85. Oh. And takes it down. 29 players remain in day four. Harik O'Neill here. 136 big blinds, 3.4 million chips exactly. He's having a good day four so far. Let's see if he can take it with him tomorrow as we play down to the final 16 and or six levels today. Outer table action. We're following Ramon. This is a three-way pot. Ramon, Neil Farrell, and Vincent Melli. Full board is run out. Three, four, eight, deuce, nine, and it looks like it's checked down. Neil Box. Ramon shows 10, eight for a pair of eights. And that is a win. Have you done this song yet, Joe? We haven't. You, we, we haven't. You, I haven't done it yet. Uh, what, you, you haven't done Roll Neck Ramon yet? No, here we go. A little uh, Ramon up to 2.2 million. Roll Neck Ramon. Roll Neck Ramon. Basement sassy, sleek and snazzy. He's Roll Neck Ramon. Hey! Flawless. I mean, it would have been good to have something to improve upon, but oh. unfortunately, oh. we just nailed it. So, 
Yeah, being perfect's boring, I agree with you. Nothing we could do about that. Yeah. Some people are just born winners. Oh, Dwyer all in from the butt with 9-5 suited. Heat skirt. A little, a, little, a little cheeky grin from Steve O.D. Oh, Dwyer rules. Uh, you, you'll notice there that he was all in with 9-5 of clubs, guys. You'll notice that that happened. That seems kind of crazy. Should I explain why it wasn't that crazy? Yeah, go it for it. It was folded to him on the button. Yeah. And then he only had to get through two players. Yeah. And he has just enough of something called fold equanimity. <laughs> fold equilibrium. Yeah, very good. Yes. Uh, applying max pressure to some of those shorter stacks. ICM very, very significantly going to adjust calling ranges here, guys. We are coming up to another pay jump very shortly. Let me take a glance. I guess that's the answer. <laughs> so next pay jump is going to be 27th place. We're now 29 players. So people sweating the additional cash, people sweating their survival here in Prague as we get down to the final couple tables. And Steve O'Dwyer is somebody who's going to be very well versed on how incredibly wide you can shove in those situations. And I'm here for it all day long. Six plus. <coughs> Adios Diaz. And it looks like this is going to get through. One bus. Guys, so such a big deal. <laughs> a lot of people giving uh, O'Neill the James Franco look alike. I, I guess I see it. Bouillac raising King Jack under the gun. Here's a good spot to double up. This is a good spot to get it in. More like Sam Rockwell than James Franco. I like that better. Steven all in. And as Nick stated, now is in a great spot to double up. Domination situation. Lupiliac translated literally means wolf cure in Romanian. I like it. They got vampires and werewolves there, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is the year of Romania. Beware, Steve O'Dwyer. Eight six six, looking pretty good for Steve. Just three outs for Lupiliac and. Just two chances to hit him. Lipoliak needs the jack attack. And needs it on the river. River, Otherwise, O'Dwyer is doubling up. The fifth and final card, O'Dwyer rules. Kings and eights with an ace kicker. There it is. You might have noticed during that hand that our field ticker went from 29 to 28. Turns out we got cameras all over the place and we managed to catch what happened on our outer table. And that seems like someone's headed over to balance. 
that table. Lupa Liak. Four. Maybe you see us all again. Yeah. Very soon. Probably. And that's a good point. There will be a redraw. At 24. We put all the players into a tombola. Whichever ones fall out, sit together. Must be a big tombola. It's a big one. This is the hand in question. Marley Sprague versus Umberto Ruggieri versus Adrian Guillaume. Oh boy. <clears throat> Guillaume all in on this flop of 4 3 deuce. The action went. Ruggieri bet 60. Guillaume made a 200. Marley called the 200. Ruggieri all in for a million. Guillaume calls. Marley folded aces. And I believe that Guillaume is seven deuce for two pair, but was up against a set of fours. Wow. We heard Guillaume was a bit of a wild card. Me? Um, I probably just check call. Check call? Yeah. Got it in with a pair of deuces. Did River a second pair, but was not able to catch up to the flopped set of fours from Ruggieri. Guillaume out, and Ruggieri wins another massive all-in confrontation. Ah, uh, that is terrible. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marley was up against fours and seven deuce and ended up with the third best hand. Unreal. So that takes us down to 20. Oh, no, she would have ended up, sorry, she would have ended up with a straight there, I guess, but still. <laughs> it would have been a sweaty turn. Takes us down to 28, Joe. 27th place is another pay jump, so we're on another four, five, six, seven, about 3,000 euro pay jump, a little bit more. <coughs> yes, Marley would have ended up with the winner there, but did fold at the right time. That's all you can do. I did say moments ago that we hadn't seen a gross smaller pair hit a set in a big pot yet to an over pair, but we just did. Commentator's curse strikes again. And great shove by Ruggieri because Marley had called the 200K bet from Guillaume. So Ruggieri got Marley to hold those aces. Like a raise from the button and a take it. So, as we head into the next hand, Adria Diaz, now 13 big blinds, is going to be UTG. Obviously, that's a really expensive big blind coming round, Joe. Mm -hmm. Every time the big blind sweeps round, you got to put two big blinds in the middle can be really, really devastating to some of those shorter stacks. It means the pressure is off a little bit once you get round the blinds, though, because you're not bleeding out while you're waiting for that blind to come back round. I was having a, having a conversation with a friend last night about some interesting dynamics that that sort of adds, and a lot of players coming from online used to playing with antis that everybody pays as opposed to a big blind ante. There are some adjustments to be made there. Very interesting how that small adjustment to speed up the game can really, really impact on ranges. Obviously, more dead money as we get shorter handed than there would be if we were all paying a smaller ante percentage of a big blind. And then, like I said, this sort of dynamic where once you get around the blinds, you don't have to be as active in getting the chips in the middle because you're not bleeding until 
the blinds come back around, at which point, you know, you might be more willing to gamble hard under the gun when you know you're going to pay two big blinds in the next hand. So there is a big blind auntie like my Aunt Helen. Yep. And there's a smaller auntie like my Aunt Julie. Exactly. The real deal, O'Neill. Putting out the three bet. I've got a friend down the stream called Big Deal O'Neill as well. Every time I see that name, that's all I can think about. Big Deal O'Neill makes a lot of appearances in uh, our chat as well. Sure. Might have even been a super fan. Really? On poker in the ears. Fine. Maybe. Oh, possibly. Pocket threes fold. How did I miss that? It's a reg in my stream. Reg in I, I, I could, I could be. I don't know. I, I, oh. I confuse white people yeah, a lot. Yeah, it would have been. Doing, yes, only, only good hands. I think James was giving us the thumbs up. It was big deal, Neil. Yeah. Amazing. By the way, all the people in chat defending my Aunt Helen, she's not going to see it. <coughs> might have had some it's your own fault for not watching. Where's right? the support? We don't know. She's my big blind we auntie. Know. That wasn't on the <laughs> she can't watch. <laughs> I was out with Lyme once, but that was it. Well, Everything was, else was fine. I Very was close. every single time. So. Everything to pass, yeah. Once isn't so bad. I have four, four or five hands. O'Neill with the king queen. Big deal, O'Neill. Five rays. 50,000. This guy's so metal. <clears throat> Crunch tried to dish destroy the metal, but the metal was just too strong. Scrub that. Scrub that one. Six ball. Seven balls. All right, Mattel's in with the Queen 9 suited. I like it. By the way, me saying I like it does not mean it is good or bad. Just saying it makes me interested. It tickles me. I like, uh, what's his name? Guillaume going broke with seven deuce over there. Well, that's Mattel. You know, it's more Mattel. Going in with one card? Yeah, gambling one card. Yes, has doubled up once already this level. Will be ahead, but it's probably going to win this pre-flop. using time banks on this? I mean, Diaz to shove isn't for absolute chunks here. Oh boy, all right. All right, we're off to the races. Natal gets out of the way. And Diaz is gonna be ahead, but how far ahead? That's the question. Not super far ahead. Big board incoming. Diaz, tournament life on the line. Jack High is good for Diaz. O'Neill still only has kings and queens as outs. Spade on the turn is dubious, however. Yes, fades the spade. Now just has to fade the kings and the lady kings.
does fade them both. And big hold there for Diaz. Going to be a real key moment for him to remain in this tournament and get back in the driver's seat trying to accumulate some chips. Double up Diaz. Second time this level. 27 big blinds. Not too shabby. Sorry if it has been asked, is Marley still in? Not only has it been asked, we were just showed her in a hand one minute ago. Yes, she is still in. She got chippies too. Don't answer that. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> Mr. O'Neill, still 127 big blinds, guys. Still a huge chip stack. Had plenty of equity, just didn't get there this time. Got a question over here on YouTube, which I think is pretty reasonable. Hey, Nick, why has it become vogue for top players to not set mine with small pairs? So two things happen. Number one, people got wise to the fact that they actually aren't as good as we once thought, but also people got more aggressive, which is probably the more important of the two reasons. Back in the day, everyone would have a limp. We'd all see a flop. So you had the opportunity to set mine for very cheap very frequently. There wasn't much three betting that was done back in the day, and therefore you could get to a flop a lot more easily. And when you made your set, you could just win a bunch of chips because people didn't really know what they were doing. These days, you don't win as much because people mm -hmm. are a lot better. Mm -hmm. These days, people pre-flop raise way more, so it's more expensive to call. These days, people three bet, so even after you do call, it gets really expensive. And as we get down to the shallower stacks, uh, people have done a bunch of really cool math to realize that small pairs just don't do as well as we get shallower. Much more high-value set mines when we're deeper. And of course, we usually join EPT at day two, sometimes even later. And under those circumstances, you've already gotten past the point where we're super duper deep, where everyone always set mines, and therefore it looks as though when we're covering stuff that they just don't play their hands the same. But really, there's all kinds of other aspects at play, like ICM comes into play, so you don't want to mess around with too many small pairs. It still happens from time to time, but for the most part, it's down to the meta just changing and people just getting a little bit too good for the old strategies. Hope that answers your question. That was a great answer, Nick. Can you handle this one next? Yeah. Will Joe be commentating today? That is from Drock on YouTube. Yes, thank you for your question. There you go. O'Dwyer still out in front with ace-queen. O'Dwyer was the pre-flop aggressor, went check-check on the flop. It's been checked to Steve for a second time. And it checks around for the second time. Seven of clubs on the river. Checking it out. Taking my chances. Ten tech. Seven tech. And Steve gets to get to showdown with a pretty decent nothing. And wins a small pot, but with his stack size, every pot is meaningful. I rarely do this, but I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Nick Walsh, who's putting in some major heavy lifting on the stream today. We got a man down due to a, a tickle in his throat. And uh, Nick's, been, Nick's been plugging away here. Look. Thank no, you, buddy. No thanks, no thanks necessary. Nobody loves it more. Here for the squad. I'm here for you, chat. Dedication all the way. It's like asking, it's like thanking someone because they're enjoying their favorite ice cream. Okay, I take it back. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. Oh, by the way, before you um, act so thankless, you, we need you to do two more levels. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one's totally by yourself. <laughs> James and I have a tea time. I, 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 can, I can pull it off, no problem. Yeah, we, gotta, we have mini golf. <laughs> 6.30, Big drinks fun. after. I, I, I do think some mulled wine is in order, though. All right, go over at Mattel, the initial razor here, ace eight suited. Mulder with ace 10 in the small blind. Ten raise. 
The tree bet. Oh, and Nugabauer with ace queen in the big blind. Now, after it goes raise, re raise, a lot of time you're not loving ace queen, but in this particular dynamic, I would say it's. You're not as. Yeah. I, I, I would be, be very tempted to put in a fourth bet in some manner here, Joe. Yeah, I think I think I shove here too, yeah. Uh, okay, so metal's opening up off a stack, which is pretty reasonable to have uh, a relatively wide amount of opens. You've got one of the most aggressive players known to mankind three betting the button. If there was ever an opportunity, excuse me, the small blind, if there was ever an opportunity to hold four bad jam A's clean, that's about as good as it gets in terms of EV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the last thing he's thinking about as well, 10 seconds before, obviously. I was like, just don't call, don't call. Uh, been there. Am there. Alleg you on YouTube asks, how much is the big blind? Does anyone know? Sure do. Five Thank five. you for your question. <laughs> 25K. Blinds are 10K, 25K with a 25K big blind ante. Yeah, has cut off one of our shorter stacks. Just got the duble though, so 27 bigs now. Like it would be like 10. But, no, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turns out that uh, Andre Diaz is the Spanish Nick Walsh. He's a spin go player? Yeah. What's, what's, his, uh, what's his screen name? He said the shorter stack it gets, the better it gets for me. Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. You know, that's how I feel. I Does it have his username on there? Yeah. No. Carbutron Zero. Total, fi total fish. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Apparently, he did a 24-hour straight $100 spin and go and had to have a 3% ROI. Yeah, that seems, that seems pretty reasonable. It, the problem with the 24-hour thing is that you could just run bad on so many fronts. Bad multipliers. You know, just bad luck with your flips. Well, it turns out he didn't do it. Yeah. Was it close? Uh, yeah, he had 12.39%. Oh, 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 okay, cool. That's pretty good. That's <laughs> nice, too. Yeah. <laughs> not even close, huh? That added up to $4,700 in EV profit, despite an actual loss uh, of $1,600. Oh, I see. Okay, the, ch okay, the challenge was to, was to get the EV. Okay, EV I ROI, okay, yeah. Okay, he's a man after my own heart, then. I, I really appreciate that. Spins all day. Anybody, anybody that disrespects spins, just, you, just, it's, you, you, just, you just don't get it. You just don't get it. Six on the river for Neugebauer. He's going to bet 80K. Bergstrom, like, ah, this feels gross. I would be very tempted to pay this off of some of the time. Yeah, me too. Just it's one of those. Pair. Yeah. Hard to make a pair. And if Neugebauer is paying it off, I don't feel so bad about it. Guy's very talented, played a lot of poker, lots of success at the poker tables online and live. Says, spins are a grind. I've spun 100x in a three hour session two times and shipped both on a $50. <laughs> Sounds like a sun run. That's plus EV. That, <laughs> that definitely works. 
100x in a three-hour session twice. That's pretty insane. That yeah, yeah, the odds on that are pretty sick. AA four OD. Two two four O N. Played a few hundred dollar spins uh, during my last stream before we came to Prague. Does that does that make you does that get your heart racing anymore? A hundred dollar spin or no? Uh, not really, no. But like, it, I mean, it, it's it's great. It's great fun for the sweat, but it's not 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 super super stressful. Top set for o, Dwyer, ninety eight percent of the equity. Um, do you have your your bankroll hidden? What, what's in your PokerStars yeah. account, or does that yeah. does that show up? Uh, I, I I usually hide it. Um, if I were to play. If you said to me, Nick, no. go and just play spins full time for like three months, I would wow. not only hide my bankroll, but I would also hide uh, my username. My, like no, all my <laughs> like all my graphs and everything as well. Like I would try not to look as much as possible. Oh, you would hide it from yourself. Yes. Ooh, did you hear that? You prefer the red ones or the black ones? <laughs> just to give me a. That's right. the mystery bounty. No problem. And apparently, it's down to three. And Gab Yong Kim is chip leading that event. And remember the time we did the Prague in March in 2022? Gab Yong Kim finished fourth in that for 622,000. So they're down to the final three in the mystery bout. My only preference is that if I'm all in and behind, I have pocket nines. Oh, yeah, pocket nines is a nice, nice hunt. So much more likely to yep. um, Slice of Potato asking, why would you hide your graph from yourself? Like, because uh, it affects my, saying, my mentality as I play. Comes, you know? Sometimes if I do that, I'll say, oh, I feel like I'm running super duper bad. And then I look like a week later and I'm like, yeah, I was actually running way better. I'm just being a baby. And then if I'm running really, really good, I'm going, oh, I'm running super I'm, I'm hot right now. <laughs> and then and then I stop stop playing so good. Yeah, yeah it's I, better. I, I like pockets. Um, I, think it's a great hand. I used to also have a tool as well, Joe, that every time you were all in and at risk, there was like a just like a color box that would cover up the board so you didn't know what the runout was. I, I could I could I could get behind that. So at times when I was getting really frustrated with the runouts and I felt like I was running really bad in my all ins, I just turned that on. And it, would, and it I, I, I didn't matter. Did you get in good? Okay, that's all you need to know. Next hand, next hand, next hand. Just cover everything up. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, it was actually a really good, good tool that helped me get through some, uh, some more bad run, and uh, just focus on the play. One pass. Three bet from Mattel gets Nuka Bauer to fold. Even right. We show in aces and people show in aces. Yeah. What's going on? You want to? Yeah. Yeah. O'Neill, the far and away chip leader at this table. Double the chips of Nugabauer and then some. We have got to cut away for a moment, however. We've got Marley Sprague versus Cesar Garcia. Garcia betting 200K into the board of King Jack six, five, ace, four diamonds out there. Garcia betting 200K into what looks like a pot of at least 300, maybe 400, 500,000. So three diamonds on the flop, fourth diamond on the river. Marley played a time bank, but then mucks. Lucky river. Looks like Maybe not. Maybe we'll do it. Garcia has got a lot yeah, of chips on that end of the table. No? Back to the feature table. Set of Ochos. Second set of Ochos we've seen this level, I think. Yeah. So O'Neill in position with the set. On the button with the set feels just fantastic. 
Continuation bet in play. We are sub 30 big blinds here. So two in Mulder, about 26 bigs. Goes for a prox one third. Older, yeah, with not a lot of equity here. Does turn some, though. Whew. Everything's funner when you hit your card on the turn and river. Nick, I know I want to do this all the time when I have a set, but you, you size up here at this point, right? Straight cards, flush draw. So, so just remember that Mulder actually is getting on the shorter side now. I think you go pretty okay. close to full pot, though. 175,000. 175, that's also good. But yes, sorry, in, in response to your question, yes, you size up, absolutely. I think um, the idea is we just want to make the pot big enough so we can shove for less than pot on the river effectively, and Mulder's got 615k behind. So actually, this is e an even better as than I was suggesting. This is actually a much better size than my suggestion. My knee-jerk reaction. Mulder calls this pot getting real big. That is a full house for O'Neill. Ace-jack high for Mulder. Yep, loving it. O'Neill's line here pretty much perfect. I don't think he... I don't think it's ridiculous to give you hero called on this river, but I'm not sure what Mulder has in mind or what kind of history these guys have. Uh, the next move is pretty clear. You're all in. And you also definitely want to be all in and not bet another amount, Joe. I think the all in, the statement of all in or all in. What if you just bet one chip? All in. I think this looks weaker because what you're. Wait, this looks like you're trying to be stronger and therefore uh -huh. can be perceived as weaker. Mulder folds. <laughs> nice work from O'Neill there. I completely, completely love the sizing uh, strategy there. Felt really good. Nick Walsh says your size feels good. That's right. Team Ireland, 3.44 million chippies now. <laughs> One hundred thirty-seven big blinds is rather nice, isn't it? I'd say so. Never win pots. Wow. Seems like me and you probably have never experienced that feeling. Bergstrom, Ace King. Or as your uncle calls it, King Ace. This is a completely ridiculous three-bet spot for O'Neill, Joe. Like Bergstrom, obviously, talented player. He starts the hand with 25 big blinds. And I feel like you could, like, you don't have to go for like a full 3x here. You can go for like a 2.5xer, you know, whatever the initial raise was here. And I think it just gets tons of folds. There's a lot of pressure on Bergstrom to, to, uh, to, 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 to have to raise, raise fold here under these circumstances where we got a bunch of short stacks on other tables, potential to bust, and we're coming up to more bubble action. It's not going to work against Ace King, no. which is weird, right? Yeah, I know, but still. Well, it's good that you can still explain that this spot is still an okay spot to do this, even though we can see that Bergstrom has a hand that is not going to fold, and it's more than likely going to punish. Yeah, no, I, I, I think this is stellar. Uh, a little glance out to the field there from Bergstrom, obviously. All in. Please yeah. Going to be sweating some, uh, <laughs> some triple ladders. Check. Just triple check, yeah. But no, I, I really like this. Um, I think it shows a lot of really good uh, game awareness from O'Neill. I understand he three bet folded, so like you know, what's the big deal, Nick? But I think that that's a spot that's going to win him a ton of chips in the long run. And it, you know, we're we're looking at the long term. We're looking at ac actions that win you chips over time, not just in singular moments such as this. We saw Bergstrom look out into the field. Maybe it was this hand he was taking a peek at. Andras Gunjajevic is all in. 
Ramon making a decision. It's a queen high flop. No, no, not, there is no flop yet. My bad. Pre flop. Against King Queen. Ah, there's the queen high flop. <laughs> Ramon is looking like he's about to eliminate Andras Ganyevac. He is more like Ganyevac. Oh, it's right there. Never gets there. Out in 28th place for 24,100 euro, 80 euros. And Ramon is up to 2.6. Million in chips. <laughs> and that means we can sing the song. Roll. <laughs> you got to give me more of a head nod. Roll neck, Ramon. Roll neck, Ramon. Bass but sassy, sleek and sassy. He's roll neck, Ramon. Hey! All right, rocky start, but uh, we got there. That's okay. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. Synchronization, not quite achieved, but was on the second attempt. Under five minutes left on this level. Dwyer, 23 big blinds. Seven Eight pass. Oh, we're going to see some set Seven miming. Pass. This is like crossing the streams. <laughs> Ace, five, seven, two clubs. No love for pocket fours. It is a head though. Let's not ignore that fact. Steve's gonna take a stab after the betting lead is given up by O'Neill and it's gonna work. Granted, it was the best hand, but you're more than happy to get a fold there. Steve shows the fours. Just wonder, talking about those small pairs as well, weren't we, Joe? Yeah. I wonder when he's going to unveil his brand of cough drops. <laughs> when is he going to take us take us out on the boat one day, you know? Either cough drops or fish sticks. You like fish sticks, Nick? You, you like, do you like fish sticks? I love fish sticks. What? <laughs> You're a lyrical genius, Joe. Did you see Kanye tried to throw a rave last night in Vegas? Two thousand dollar tickets. The cop shut it. Shut it down. No way. Yeah. Is this a bit? <laughs> no, I saw it on Twitter. Just in the street somewhere. Like in a warehouse. Ah, uh, Kanye. More like Kanye. Con boo. Oh, it doesn't work. Dwyer, back in action. It's going to be the last hand of the level, probably. Oh, one ball. Three, balls. Three ways to the flop. Oh. Two, three, four, two spades. Bergstrom with half the equity with ace high. Spade draw. Two over cards. Oh, more, way more than half. There you go. That <laughs> was half before the flop. I was like, it seems like it should be more. <laughs> <laughs> Two over cards and then a flush draw and a gut shot to the straight. Tons and tons and tons of equity. That's a 
straight for the ace. That looks like a straight to me. Wheel. Wheel win. Bergstrom, big blind. Uh-oh. Oh, Neugebauer. Neugebauer's like, all right, I can do something here. Watch me rep this. Bergstrom like, eh, you really got a six in this spot? I don't believe you. You got it. Diamantes, of course, as well. Neugebauer doesn't have a dime in his hand, though. So anyway, that's one for Bergstrom. Now looking at about 41 big blinds. That's a nice bluff. Yeah. <laughs> First, I realized that I was going to be the big blind the last time again, but if I win it, it's Yeah, if you win it, it's fine. You get it at a discount. So that is the last hand of the level for this particular table. But there is still a hand in progress out in the field. Have this time, I'm not gonna jump the gun. Four cards on the board. King, eight, seven, four, three hearts. Yakulyevich versus Stockin. And I think that Yakov will call him, has checked. Stockin checks behind, 10 on the river. We'll just call this person Dejan. Dejan checks again. Stocken. Doesn't look like a huge pot they're contesting here. Bet. Stocken bets 65,000. Dejan. Lays it down and shows a four. Tight lay down, bottom pair. So Stocken blocking is gonna win the last hand of the level. We are headed to a break. 26 players remain, playing down to 16 today. Redraw at 24. This was the feature table. This will no longer be the feature table, but the table we're coming back with won't be our feature table for long either because there is gonna be that redraw at 24. So things are gonna get all shook up. Porig O'Neill, the far and away chip leader at this particular table. The new feature table We'll have some old friends and some new friends. Sebastian Schultz, Mark Hillu, Raymond, Raymond, Ramon, Calias, and Neil Farrell. Might as well name check the other two, Vincent Melly and Adam Wagner, all at our new feature table. We're taking around a 15 minute break. More from EPT Prague in 15 minutes time. Victoria. All in with ace 10 of hearts. And Michael, Cole. And Michael Muldoon calls the shove. Calls for less. There's two hearts gone. So Muldoon, the at risk player with sevens, racing against Vicky's ace 10. Ace on the flop. Eight of diamonds, five of clubs. Vicky has a pair of aces. Michael needs a seven. Six diamonds. Let's see the turn card. It's a queen of diamonds. Now, three diamonds on the board. <laughs> seven, so a seven, a seven high flush draw. A diamond. 
Vicky looks sicky. The river is not a diamond or a seven. It's another ace. And that will see Michael Muldoon eliminated in fourth place. He receives £110,000. And three players now remain. Vicky Corrin, Imad Tatu, and Jan Sharvik, the Balrog. 15.30 blinds. Oh, man, the pound was real strong when this was shot, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think I remember coming to Vegas in November of 2006. Those are the glory days. Threes for Sharvik. And this is a pretty famous hand, guys. Okie dokie, here comes a... Take this back and put this. Yep. So knowing Jan Sharvik as you do, Lex, are you surprised to see him call here? Yeah, but <laughs> it's also really cool to see because it's kind of an early adapter thing, all adequate thing like feel with bears and stuff. So kind of on brand too. And immediately after that flop is dealt, Vicky announces all in. I tell you, I'd be pretty tempted to call it off with threes here myself. Yeah. I think so too. Like that was very much like a, you know, like a power. Yeah. Wanting to make it look like a power play. It, it sounded like she wanted a fold. And I'm sure she does. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I guess she could be shoving with other pairs, right? That aren't, you know, like one minute for a decision, yeah. please. I I think their biggest issue is that if your opponent has queen jack, they have about the deck, and that's like that feels like best case scenario. I mean, obviously, ace king is best case scenario, right? But if they have a king jack, you know, they can king queen jack nine and whatever is runner runner can make a pair to you too. If they have one spade, that counts as like one out, so. Well, Imad Tartu called for the clock, and Jan Sharvik's now on a 60-second countdown. Ten second countdown. At the end of the countdown, the hand will be dead. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, call. four. The Balrog calls. Oh. Oh. He taps the table. Nice call. Yeah, that's gangster. He's the favorite, but not by a lot. Jack on the turn. Uh -huh. 
And Jan Scharwek is eliminated in third place. 168,600 pounds. And Imad Tatu apologizes for calling the clock. Do you remember back when calling the clock was the worst thing you could do to someone? I wish they would do it like every hand and now with this poker. <laughs> right? So Shavik made the good call, got punished, and now we're heads up for the title. Let's see if they keep drinking water now. So at this point, Ima Tatu has the slight chip lead. All right, 200k pot to kick things off. Top pair versus second pair. A bet of 100k, quickly called by Tartu. A bet of 300,000. It must be nice to be able to just keep betting top pair. Oh, that's so nice. And gets called again. River card is a nine. Ooh. Nine of diamonds. Kind of an ugly river. Yeah, just check. You have an eight. 600,000. 600, I genuinely think she made him do that by saying, I'll let you both the floor. So he's like, you know what? That would be cool. You know what I mean? A lot more of that went on back then than it does now. Uh oh. It's got a total blank on the end here. What? Was that considered a blank in 2006? <laughs> it's a brick! <laughs> She made the right call against Barney Boatman earlier. And not dissimilar spot. And she calls this one. Well. Showdown. Check eight. Tens are good. And momentum swings in Vicky Corrin's direction. Induces the bluff, snaps it off, takes the chip lead. Seven six, the hand for Vicky. She calls, and Emad's going to check his option with eight six. Oh. Flops the joint. Bets 100k. Tartu with the straight draw. And he oh, raises. What a dream. You mentioned if heads up was this easy all the time, Lex. Yeah, that's crazy. That call with the Queen's Town was really good, though. I mean, it was really good, except for the fact that she thought the nine was a brick. No, I think she said something like, uh, why couldn't it have been a brick? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 370, 390, four, Total brick, I call. No, actually, it was a flush and straight card, but you're good. <laughs> Oh, 50,000 is a bit. 
Vicky calls the race. We've now got the better part of 1.2 million in the middle. Ten of diamonds. Ten of diamonds. All in and a call. Vicky got the nuts straight. Three to seven and six eight is the hand for Emma. Looks like she's going to pass out. It really does. Vicky got the straight. Emma got in with six eight. Let's see the river card. The river card is a jack, and that is the moment that Victoria Corrin became the first female EPT champion. Wins the London leg of season three of the European Poker Tour on home soil. Five hundred thousand pounds. Ima Tatu, the runner-up, the two hundred eighty-six k. So we kick off day two of the Super High Roller with blinds at 3,000, 6,000 with a 1,000 ante. Alashemian first to speak. He's got queens under the gun. Oh, hi. And that's a raise to 14,000. Paul Newey has ace king suited. First hand, and we are already headed for a collision. Newey counting out a re raise. He three bets to 40,000. Round to Mike McDonald in the big blind, who's got kings! <laughs> OMG, this is just a sick, sick cooler. All in. Mike shoves! And I don't think all I can fold having both these guys way covered. Shemi and five bets, enough to put Newey all in. Paul's got about 20% of his stack in the middle, and I don't think he's supposed to fold this. Offsuit, there's an argument. Suited, I think he's got to try to triple up here. He calls all in. Paul's not the most experienced player at the table, but he's got the bankroll to play just as fearlessly as the rest of them. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. Got the ice. Ace is going to come, I guess. I definitely deserve to lose one of these eventually this year. Mike's having a pretty good year. You owe me an ice from the last from the PCI. <laughs> Paul bubbled that tournament. Awkward. A three-way coup to start the day, and kings are holding on that flop. There's a spade there. Knew he's the only one who even flopped a backdoor. The turn card is a nine. Knew he's looking for an ace on the river. Shemian needs a queen. It's a ten. A triple up for Timex, and Paul Newey is out. Oh, guys. The ace didn't come. We saw. Again, Paul. Aw, oh, Paul Newey. He always loses with grace. He's a class act, this guy. Ah, uh, can't fault. Action has been folded to Shemian in the small blind. He has aces. See, now this will probably be standard. Ola just keeps picking up big hand after big hand. He's had more big hands than the Foo Fighters Everlong video. He's setting a trap with this one. He just calls, and Jason Mercy has ace king in the big blind. That's not going to be good for business. That's not going to be good for anybody, except probably all Shemian. Mercia responds to the limp by raising a total of 26,000. How many clicks does it take to get to the center of a cold deck pot? A one, a two. And this is a three bet to 78,000. A three. Jason Mercia. Four bets to 168,000. A four. All in. Shemi and five bet shoves. Five, five clicks. And Mercia calls. Just a very unfortunate spot for Jason. Merce dog is a huge dog. <sighs> and he knows it. That wasn't a sigh, that was a sad bark. They're counting it out for me. Hmm? They're counting it out for me. Some folks think that's lucky. Oh, Not much hope for Mercier on that flop. You have more, right? A little more. 
Not much. Jason likes to be drawing dead on the turn. Sure enough. Okay. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Mercia is eliminated, and Ola Shemin will move up over the 1.1 million mark. How much was it there? 561. Oh, yeah, it could be really cool. close. Always sad to see the Merce dog go, although not as sad as Marley and me. Yeah. Six out of. Welcome to EPT 2024. Game on. Yo. Hello, my babies. We play to win. Welcome back to the PokerStars European Poker Tour. We are in Prague for the conclusion of EPT 2023, and it is day four of the main event, the day we play down to the final two tables. We're coming back from break with 26 players, so we're nearly at three tables. Chances are, during the next 90 minutes, we will hit 24, and that will necessitate a redraw. The top five stacks right now, Horrig O'Neill from Ireland has 3.5 million. Second in chips, Ramon Kalias. Another deep run for Ramon in an EPT main event. It's James Harskin alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And there is Ramon getting mic'd up because he's taking a seat on the main stage. Roll neck Ramon. Roll neck Ramon, plus a former EPT champion, Neil Farrell, also on the main stage, along with Mark Hallou, Sebastian Schulze, Adam Wagner, and Vincent Melli. Blinds going up to 15,000, 30,000 with a 30K big blind ante. Average stack just shy of 1.5 million, so we're playing around a 50 big blind average. But of course, average stack doesn't really tell the whole story. There are some short stacks out there in the field, including Yuri Kobab and Toyn Mulder. Really? I mean, really, we're, it's Toyn now. Toon, Toon, Toon. <laughs> Toon. Spirit of the horse, and he's going to need it. Because he is edging into the danger zone. Danger zone. Right now, we are paying players 27,800 euros. Tomorrow, we're going to hit those six figure scores when we reach the final eight. On the final day, we're going to see someone earn more than a quarter of a million for fifth. More than half a million for second, and more than a million going to the champion, plus the EPT Prague 2023 main event trophy. That's right, two more days after today, playing down to the final six on Saturday, playing down to a winner on Sunday. Hope you're enjoying the action so far, and hopefully I'll be back over the weekend for the last two days of our Cards Up coverage from this tournament. Looks like action's underway again. This is level 24, 15K, 30K blinds with a 30K big blind ante. Action is going to start with Adam Wagner. Folks were asking if there are any more Czech players in the crowd. The crowd, the field. Here's one. 65. Wagner racing with Ace King to 65,000. Folded to Vincent Melli. He folds the button. And so looks like Mark Halou's folded okay. the big line. <laughs> I like to raise and take it with my drawing hands. You're putting it on, don't worry about it. It's just. Normal poker. Uh, Take it from an EPT champion. 
It's just normal poker. That's a fun. <laughs> So in the event that we see two eliminations this level, or indeed at any point this evening, that will bring us to the redraw. We'll be down to three tables and there will be new assigned seats for the 24 remaining players. That will mean a new feature table. And play will stop when we get to 16. Should we play two more levels after this one and not be at 16, we will stop for the night. There's a limit, Joe, there is a limit. I like to take it to the limit one more time. Push it to the limit. Limit past the point of no return. <laughs> Someone in chat last level mentioned the microclimates that must exist out there because we got dudes in hoodies, hats, and scarves, and other people in t-shirts. Neil Farrell's in a t-shirt. How can they both be in the same temperature? I would say that it is cold outside, but relatively warm inside. AOB pointing out that Neil Farrell is Scottish and generally speaking, people from north of the border don't feel the cold. Mystery bounty. Ramon raising under the gun with Jack 10. Round to Mark Hello. He gives up the button. Adam Wagner in the small blind, Queen 9. Oh, it's so hard. It's so difficult. Want to play Queen 9. Want to play it. <sighs> And Neil Farrell in the big blind. Ace eight. Easy. Much easier. The flop is king, six, five, all spades. Neil playing in flow, checks to Ramon. I love Neil Farrell, but Ramon is rolling necks and rolling fools. He's rolling over this entire field. Continuation bet gets the job done. Yeah. Ramon table chip leader. Closing in on the 2.7 million mark, second in chips overall, with 26 players remaining. How's he always doing this? He's good. Thank you for your question. Der Blank Merlin, I am also in Prague. The technology exists for remote commentary, but it just isn't the same as being there, being in it, being in the thick of things, talking to players, seeing them at breakfast, seeing them afterward, going down to interview them after the win. There's a certain je ne sais quoi with being on the scene, and I prefer it. Kalu has opened with 10-9. Neil Farrell deciding what to do with King Jack in the small blind. Well, Neil is called. Ramon, 6-4 off, calling as well by the looks of things. So we're going to go three-way to the flop. Seems 
like they got a lot of this board coverage here. <laughs> Farrell hits it the hardest. Oh, yeah. Checked around. Quick check around. Who's got a heart? Who's got a heart? Hello. Fires now. Do you even stick around with uh, 10 high in the nine of hearts? Ramo never giving up easy. Thinking about, can I win this pot? Nine of hearts does not stick around. Ramon calls drawing dead. I feel like this is one situation where Ramon's not gonna figure out how to win this pot. Thousand into three hundred and thirty thousand. Dramatic. Dramatic as the clock clicks down. Is Ramon tempted to hero here with just a pair of fours? Ramon folds, Neil Farrell wins the pot. Now we have got significant action at one of the outer tables. There is an all-in and a call. Oh. John Kite is shoved on a jack-high board. He's got king-jack, but he's run into the ace-jack of Alex Lapuliak. All-in on the turn, just the river card to come. And it is a king <laughs> on the river. It's domination rotation in Kite's favor. So he gets a big double up there through Alex. Here. You... Sits back down. One foot out the door. Now both cheeks in the seat. John Kite's going to be up to 2.6 million. So he will now be the second biggest stack in the tournament. That is a huge oh blow. Oh my God, that was a huge pot. Yeah, that is going to leave Alex pretty short stacked. It has been a roller coaster for Lapuliak ever since making that straight flush against Marley's nut flush. Yeah. Call. Under the gun raise from Sebastian Schultzer, called by Adam Wagner. Now, Vanson Melli won the UK IPT season finale back in November. That was the event held at DTD in Nottingham, Joe. Yep. He is French, but he's lived in London for the last 15 years. He's a regular at the Hippodrome. Smart. He won 159K for his first place finish in that UK IPT. And he knows that the A7 off is the Spraggy and is rubbish. <laughs> What's Spraggy got to do to shake that? can't follow him forever. <laughs> well, we don't know what Schultz's other hole card is, but we do know he's ahead. Okay. 
If his other card was also the Queen of Spades, would he still be ahead? It's the only eventuality I can think of here. So Schultz uh, check the flop, <coughs> checks the turn. And Wagner checks behind. Jack on the river. Al Factor asking, why is one card hidden sometimes? Is it because the player didn't properly show it to the table cam? No table cams, but you have the right idea. Most of the time it's because they didn't leave them in the box long enough. Or they covered one up with the other card before they could do it. Sometimes it's because the card's broken, but usually it's because the player just didn't leave it in the box long enough. It's a card reader, that's right. 140,000, and Wagner folds the tens. <laughs> Sebastian Schultz now playing a 25 big blind stack. He is the shorter stack at this feature table, but there are shorter stacks than him out in the field. Jess Alice J, not wrong. Also, RFID can be pretty temperamental sometimes. I mean, if you think about it, right? It's a reader that picks up whatever the tiny little microchip is in a playing card and only picks it up a certain distance because it doesn't pick up the other cards. I mean, it's, it's really pretty impressive. Neil Farrell, ace king of diamonds. Ten seven of diamonds for Ramon. <laughs> Looks like. Ramon and Neil are going to be nemesi for this session, at least. And it looks like ooh, looks like we're about to go two for two, Neil Farrell. But I guess Melly might throw a spanner in the works. Time to equip those melee weapons. Is a spanner a weapon? You can throw a spanner at someone's head and it'll do a lot of damage. Yeah, right. <laughs> smart. Almost as smart as... Moving to London if you're going to play poker for a living. Well, I don't think you're going to get away with this one, Ramon. Neil, you can never be too careful. I think you should lay it down. It's just ace high after all. It's a drawing hand. Four forty. Four bet from Farrell. Mm -hmm. 
And Ramon folds to 10 7. So far, both times it's been the two of them. Neil's just had it. Yeah. But when it comes to more marginal spots, Ramon is a lot tougher to deal with. They're now pretty much even in chips, although Neil Farrell has the slight advantage. He becomes the table chip leader. And there's not much separating Ramon and Vincent Melli right now. <coughs> to the button. And now the blinds. Sebastian Schultz in the small. Again, we're missing a card. I'm starting to think that this is to do with the deck of cards and not the reader. I think we might have some dead cards. The RFID chips that Joe is referring to occasionally get broken, especially when people peel their cards very aggressively. Great, we've got two dead cards. But the hand's over pre-flop. Schultz is still hovering around the 25 big blind mark. Still 26 players remaining. 15 minutes, nearly 20 minutes now into this level. Mycroft92 asks, how often do they change the cards? At least once per level, often more if cards get damaged. What's that? Once per level, but more often than that if cards get damaged and they necessitate a deck change. But say, for example, there was no problem with any of the cards, yeah. we would still, as a matter of routine, change it at least once per Got level. Got it. I didn't even know that. Nice when you get to open hands like this. Don't get to call that often with them or three bet with them that often, but when it's folded to you and relatively, oh boy. What are these kings at this table? Any ace kings about? Raising. A one fifty. I mean, it's just so it's one, so it's one ninety to call with nine eight suited. 2.2 million? Yeah, come on, let's go. Let's have a spin. What a fun flop. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Ace high ahead right now, but 
Melly with slightly more equity. It is a post-flop flip between these two. Must be so cold on that side of the table. <laughs> wow. Okay then. I mean, things get serious. I mean, Schultz only had 17 bigs behind. Right. So it was a leveraging bet. Schultz deciding not to call all in. They uh, king on that board. Right. Melly now becomes the table chip leader with close to 90 bigs. Mm. I'm talking to Griffin right now and he says he feels pretty bad actually. <laughs> not not emotionally for missing, like he feels ge genuinely. Well, generally speaking, when people are put on antibiotics, <laughs> it's not because they're feeling okay. Yeah. And he swears having fun. it was a coincidence that he got sick on the release day of three new Jack Reacher episodes. But yes, he did watch all of them. Does he think it's a coincidence that he got sick after spending so much time at the spa? <laughs> Maybe. It's too much relaxation. Sometimes if those places aren't kept clean. I do find, actually, and I think this is there's an actual scientific rationale behind this, that when I relax, I get sick. Like, usually within a few days after Prague, I'm sick. Because my whole body's finally, like, just breathes a sigh. So... The, the trick is to stop is to stop relaxing. Don't I relax. think I think Griffin relaxed too soon by going oh. to the spa twice. And he said, by the way, the new Reacher is really great. Cool story, bro. Well, we're actually going to step away from the feature table and go straight out into the field because there is a big hand and we have just seen an all-in from Alex Lapuliak. John Kite raised to 65K. Marley Sprague three bet to 200K. Serge Shashan called and now Lapuliak is all-in for 800,000. So the action's on Kite. Thank you. Kite was the original raiser. Kite then Marley. Then surge. Correct. Okay. Kite folds. Marley folds. Eight hundred. Shashan, the online qualifier. Calls, hands are tabled, and we are off to the races. Ace queen for Alex Lapuliak, pocket tens for Serge Shashan, and tens are holding on the flop. And on the turn, and on the river, we lose Alex Lapuliak in 26th place. Had that bad beat against John Kite. That took most of his chips. Sir Shashan takes the rest. And Alex is going to cash for 27,800 euros. 27,800. And whenever a cab driver asks him if he ever had a straight flush, he gets to say yes. <laughs> Sir Shashan up to 2.8 million. He and Andrea Diaz are the last two online qualifiers remaining in the field.
return to the feature table. So we cut away on the flop. Wagner continued for 75,000. Suffice to say, Farrell <laughs> called. And now we get the second bar from Wagner. <laughs> what if you say second bar? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> That's a pretty sick blind on blind hand here. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big pussy. <laughs> hey, all. I wish there was a better word for that, but I understand the sentiment. And he was right. Thirty minutes into the level, twenty-five players remaining. One more elimination, and we will hit the redraw. Redraw is imminent. Well, there are still a few mm. short stacks out in the field. And Sebastian Schulzer is becoming a short stack. 17 bigs right now. Everybody wants to be able to call home and say they made the redraw. into the blinds, kneels in the small. And again, we're having trouble catching cards. Story of my life. 24, you redraw. Jack, Jack Trey. <laughs> no, after one, one after one player redraw. Oh, one, one, yeah. okay. Who do you think's got the best hand? Uh, probably Ramon. Who do you think has the best hand? I think Farrell's got 9-7. Do you think he has 7-9? That did occur to me. Yeah. Flush draw. Mighty, meaty, matey. One you can't really ignore. And blind on blind, queen high could also be the best hand. Balls the 60,000. River is six of clubs. Well, we know Ramon has nothing better than queen high. It could be the best hand. Could have limped it. Nope, he's checking. Six. Got there. Oh, checks the six once he has some showdown. Oh. Queen high was the best hand. Looks like a replay. I thought it was a replay from the previous hand. It was the same board. Sorry? You played the hand similar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? 
Det är ändå... Det hade gått hända att Check is to get all the money in behind and then when you're ahead just check and don't put any more in. That's how you play the game. You remember? Yes, I remember it. Thank you, Slazner and YouTube chat for helping folks out. Fold in our hand. I'm glad it's on stream. Yeah. You are so good? Hmm? You are so good? No, I'm going to get bullied. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a little something for you. 65. Race to 65,000 with Queens. There's a little something for you. Ten seven. Two gapper. Double suited. It's a call from Van Stamelli. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. And he has a straight draw. Queen's big favorite, though. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack. Nine, ten, Jack. Eight, nope, just the eight. eight. Yeah, let's see one more. Flick him in. Always coming. Always making a pair when you have a straight draw. Correct. And it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense, James. There's four of the other cards and three of those. Although, okay, there's six of those because you have tens and sevens. But when you're open-ended, it's the same deal. And there's eight of those. One of the math wizards going to explain that one to me. <laughs> Nobody answered that person in chat that just wrote, hello, commentary people, and then said, don't ignore the chat. Definitely ignore that person. Do not answer them. You don't get to just show up and go, hello, answer my question, my one, one person. Derail everything just for one person. I won't do it. I won't derail everything just for one person. I'm telling you right now. You think I'm going to make a big thing out of one person and ignore what's happening on screen because of you? No. Another pair. And Wagner has a lock on this. I'm starting to understand why it's easier to make a pair now than to hit the straight because there's a lot more pairs you can make. I think I answered my own question. Does it bring you solace? <laughs> yes, a quantum of solace. Just don't. Wow, 250. Good for him. I'm just like, man, I got pocket queens here, but I'm against a big blind, so I could be against 
Lots of sixes. Seven, nine. Ten, eight. Six, seven. Jack, nine. I'm just thinking of all the big blind hands that are beating me. 250. Of course, you only get action there unless you're up against one of the hand, those hands that are beating okay. you. For you or for him? For him. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately not for me. I hope you had a jack or something similar. You didn't tell me good fold after mine, now I'm worried. <laughs> oh, what did you have? I had King Jack. I was, gonna, I was thinking about raising turn. And then thought about calling turn and then I had kind of, just kind of a bad feeling that you should always at least continue there I just had a bad feeling so I just went with my gut and if it's wrong it's wrong oh yeah you're right okay fine jack nine wasn't being be wrong good call good call chat be wrong good call again. guys <laughs> you mean they haven't changed the rules three nope. pairs still isn't three pairs still not a thing god damn it we asked for that <laughs> months ago After we're down to 16 players, I'm a and that's back, why so. I don't play because I'd be like I'm losing to jack nine here Problem is, even if you had like ace ten, it's wrong, you know. Oh. No. Link. Was it in the hearts? The king's of hearts? No, I I I had the king, jack of hearts. Chat is always right, especially tomorrow. Chat Pro Saturday, if you can hang on, you're hanging by a thread. Yeah, I was thinking about raising. Because you know, if you're sat there with like queens and someone raises, it's pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to remind everyone that <laughs> Chat Pro Saturday is a privilege, not a right. So behave yourselves. Take one of the batteries out, slow it down. Privileges can be revoked. <laughs> Like diplomatic immunity. <laughs> R.I.P. Joss Ackland. It's kind of ironic now that the bad guy is racist in that movie. situation and there is a king on board there is involved the favorite here Times this will go check check, but I don't know if Ramon's gonna let that happen. Show enough. Ramon is not letting it happen. Who calls the fifty thousand? Hand goes to the river. It's the Ten of Hearts. Actually goes check, check, and Ramon is going to ship this pot. No ship. Uh, Ramon will be adding 190k to his stack. Hovering around the 2.5 million mark. That's a million more than the average stack right now, which is 1.5 million with 25 players remaining. 80 bigs. Excuse me. You have Four a remote. pile of this. Ah, I can't see. I thought you had one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. 
it's a bedroom now. No, because it's behind. I was like, oh. Yeah. Tune there. I approve. <clears throat> Hello. Wow. Yeah, no cheap flop. Sorry. Did he say sorry? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean it. Adam Helpless asks, when are they bringing out Joe Stapleton dolls? Have you pitched this idea of a Joe Stapleton action figure? You know, of all the egomaniacal ideas I've come up with over the years, I don't think... I've gotten to that one yet. But you can have the different outfits. You can have Joe in a suit, Joe in a t-shirt, Joe in um, in, uh, in a suit with a different shirt. <laughs> in the same suit. I mean, there is the danger that some of your um, more passionate fans might attempt to use it as a voodoo doll. Mentioning no names of people who might try sticking pointed objects into parts of your body. <laughs> you know, if you haven't mentioned someone in commentary for five minutes, suddenly you feel a sharp pain in your ear. Ace nine versus six four, and it is Neil Farrell who flops best, pairing his six. And away from the feature table to one of the outer tables where there has been an all in. Pre flop, John Kite raised to 255,000. And Grigori Rodin has moved all in for 1.2 million. John Kite's played a couple of time bank cards here. Kite living on borrowed time and is also running out of time. Kite lays it down. The shove gets through. For you. And Rodin chips up. Yeah. Something like that. I guess we're flipping. Yeah. Yeah. I used three turn banks with Aces. Only in Italy you do that. Real but trash talk happening. Back at the feature table, so it went check, check on the flop and check, check on the turn. Uh, Melly has bet the river. Neil still has the best hand with a pair of sixes. Makes the call, good call, and Farrell's going to chip up. Pretty good level for Neil Farrell. Got the better of Ramon a couple of times. Did fold one winner, but in a fairly tough spot. Now 
2.4 million. I'll tell you what, Joe, the uh, Stapes action figure line is getting a lot of love as a concept. <laughs> oh, God. Mainly because of all of the accessories you could get. There's the obvious stuff, right? Like the headset or the microphone. Sure. But what about a single chip and a chair? <laughs> Special limited edition spray tan, Joe Stapleton. Spray That's tan, a sure. Throwback for yeah. the fans. I guess a bunch of crumpled McDonald's wrappers at my feet or in the bedroom set. <laughs> A flat screen TV that's been ripped off the wall of a hotel. That's right. Still using that one. Ball is right. The obvious ban hammer. For bopping. Got to be able to bop. All right, whose lunch is Ramon going to eat now with the worst hand? Hello? Condolences. I think Hulu's going to be all right here. This is a problematic board for Ramon, though. Check, check. Ball 42 says, does it have a speech chip with different lines? Anyone remember the uh, talking action man commander figure where you'd pull the string in the back and he'd say stuff like, enemy tanks approaching. It would be like that, and Joe would say stuff like, hello, my babies. I mean, I only say four things pretty much anyway. So did the action man. <laughs> Give me some cover. What's the password? Enemy tanks approaching. What's the password? Give me some cover. On check calling for 70k on the turn. Well, it's going to be tough for Ramon to win this one, but. How do you get away from this small ace? Seems like such a trivial call to make, but wow! Good fault. He's too good. He either beats you or doesn't give you as much money as he should. I don't know why, but like the check back on the flop, the bet on the turn, the bet on the river, it felt very, I have an ace. And there aren't many aces, if any, you're beating there. Good fold, Ramon, who's third in chips at the table. It was very tight at the top between him, Melly, and Farrell. Schultz is still the short stack at the table. Fewer than 15 big blinds now. So, you know, we, we reference, I think you should leave pretty regularly on the stream. I'm a big fan. You're a big fan. Griffin's a huge fan. Uh, tickets just went on sale for I think you should leave live in Los Angeles. It appears after 10 minutes they are sold out. Wow. Sold out the Greek theater under 15 minutes. Did you manage to get any tickets? I did. Well done. But they're not cheap. 
Nothing's cheap anymore, but no. <clears throat> well, we found out yesterday that you can actually get hoodies relatively cheap. <laughs> yeah, right, the 200 euro hoodie that's cheap, yeah, sure. Hello, first to act. I've raised 60,000. Raises to 60K. You know he has the nine of diamonds. Ace King for Ramon Kalias on the button. Just calls in position. Sebastian Schultzer is in the big blind with King Seven of Hearts. He calls as well, and we are going three ways to the flop. I hope for Sebastian's sake it's not a King High flop. <coughs> Well, for Hulu's sake, nine high seems pretty good. Yeah, he's got at least top pair. Schultz has an open-ended straight draw. Do we think this is going to be top set a lot? Because it's not ace nine of diamonds. One pass. Bet of 80,000, which gets a fold from Ramon. Schultz has 11 bigs behind. That's right, it's a gut shot straight draw, not open-ended. Okay. So Schultz just calls. Mm -hmm. Pot's getting big. A pair. All right, so we got like a pie chart. The biggest chunk is top set, right? But I feel like any other card that he could have been raising under the gun with is doing no, I don't have my phone. great here. Obviously, we know he's already winning, but eight, nine of diamonds. Yeah. Five seconds. 60. Eight, nine would be a very sexy hand right 60, now. Not ace, nine of diamonds. Earth Synchro. We know that the Ace of Diamonds was folded. Correct. Uh, by the way, Schultz has decided to lead the turn for 60,000. And Halu just calls. Queen on the river. So no straight for Schultz, so just a pair of sevens. Five hundred five thousand in the pot. Schultz with two hundred fifteen k behind. And remember, he took over the betting lead on the turn. I'm tempted to say that Halu's range is very narrow here. I do think it's pocket nines. I do think he's got the set. Well, it seems like Schulz may be loading up to unload. And considering how quickly Hello called the turn, I don't think he's folding River. <sighs> I mean, you do have some things to worry about, even if you do have a seven nines from the big blind, right? There's straights possible. But for this amount, I don't think you can ever fold nines and therefore he should have called already. 
Maybe it's Jack Nine of Diamonds. Yeah, just a nine, it becomes a lot more difficult here. Ten Nine of Diamonds, maybe. Good game, says Schulze, and we know it is good game. Oh, wow. What did Halu have? 10 9. The Grafton. 10 9 suited. And Schultz are not happy about it. He does not have any outs, by the way. Eights and deuces not working for him. Schultz is KO'd in 25th place. And that is going to take us to the redraw, Joe. So it's probably more mad at himself than anything else there, hopefully, and not anything else that went on in that hand. No, two nice calls. No, he called 80 to see... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, you don't have to explain it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah? What do you think? Maybe, well, you're maybe. To well, you're trying to see the A, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> but okay, the pot was too big anyway. So 200, it's like, it was like 400. Yeah. Just didn't have enough chips to get him off the nine at the end. Correct. So just checking if play has concluded at the two outer tables. Looks like it. So we are going to go on a short break with 24 players remaining. And we are going to conduct the redraw and seat the remaining 24 players around the final three tables. Everyone is on the move, so he needs to rack their chips. But like when you're short, that matters a lot. How exciting, huh? <laughs> well, the really exciting thing, Joe, huh? is that the redraw is done pretty much instantly in the PokerStars Live app. That thing doesn't look like okay. So, so I can tell you that the three tables have been drawn, and I think it's very clear that we are going to go with table one. Have to go big. Because table one is going to have Tuan Mulder, Ramon Kilius, Anton Bergstrom, Marley Sprague, wow. Adria Diaz, Cheng Zhao, Marius Kutmanis, and Yuri Kachab. So that is going to be the feature table when we come back from break. These are the chips, the players we were just watching. Cheng Zhao. When did he buy in? So got to get the new chip counts into the graphics system. Got to get the players mic'd up, get them relocated on the main stage. Should only be a few minutes. And then we'll come back and play out the rest of this level before the dinner break on day four of the EPT Prague main event. During this break, it's a chance for you to relive a recent interview from the Poker in the Ears podcast as we speak to science writer and poker player Alex O'Brien. By your own admission, Alex, the book doesn't teach you how to play poker. Who is your target reader? Who are you hoping will pick up this book? It, it's really interesting because I wrote a book that I wanted to read. Um, I wanted a book that championed both poker as this multi-dimensional, highly cerebral strategic puzzle game. But at the same time, I wanted to champion sci the scientific method and the scientific process. Um, so I have two camps, but in fact, um, after three and a half weeks of book tours and speaking engagements, it has a huge broad uh, appeal to a wide audience. Yesterday, I was at Saracen's Rugby um, talking to, including the England rugby captain. It, surreal moment. I mean, I had to pitch myself a little bit. Um, but we were discussing the poker player's mindset, which is, I find out, very similar to rugby players, how they deal. There is apparently tilt in rugby. Did you guys notice? I found this out yesterday. But for them, um, thinking, hearing how poker players think and prepare for matches, how to deal with setbacks, how to deal with emotional control, 
they loved all that, that. Yeah. And I was surrounded by these really tall players. And, you know, again, I, I've been very clear all along. I'm a nerdy science girl with fun, one foot in, in the science world and one foot in the poker world. But it was still hugely exciting for them to hear. And we discussed that we will have a poker, poker night at the casino with everybody. It just shows how appealing it is when you deconstruct the game of poker to its core elements. And yeah, and the other other group of people that really enjoy reading it are corporates. So I also did a talk at an international law firm and I'm going to be at Google next week who read it as a business book. So, That's so it cool. does different things to different people, which I'm really happy about. I think this book really does like how many times, Alex, when people find out that you play poker, do you have folks say to you, oh, well, people tell me I'm really good at reading people. So I think I should learn how to play poker. I'm going to slap this book in their hand every single time someone says that to me and go here, read this. If you still feel the same way after reading this, then maybe we can talk about teaching you to play poker, because I think that people hear that as a compliment a lot of the time and automatically think it's going to make them a great poker player, not knowing what it really entails. Yeah, I I, I find that too. I mean, oftentimes um, people say, oh, I could never play it. I don't have the poker face or I'm not good at bluffing. So uh, I really uh, hope it, it does this um, justice for poker, that it uh, pulls it out of this sort of gutter in a way and 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 puts it place it right next to games like chess and go um and and yeah and does that for the general public and the general public is responding really really positively to it because it helps them understand uh via poker how to pay attention how to improve their critical thinking and they see it now you know chapter by chapter yeah the Building sets of what makes a good player isn't too dissimilar what makes a good person, you know, like success in life. So, yeah. But also, and this, please take this as a compliment because it's intended as one. Um, you've not made it sound dry because often when people look at poker as a strategy game or approach it from the point of view of these are the skills that relate between poker and real life often when people go down that avenue it can suddenly become a bit boring and we all know that poker is a game it's a social experience it's meant to be fun and i'm pleased that in your talking about the game you never lose sight of that and i think it's your passion for the game that also comes through in how you talk about it that yes there's a serious side to the game and yes it's a skill game but also it is a game and something to be enjoyed yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm so passionate about the game because it it's about outsmarting people in a way, right? You sort of kind of constantly. And then what happens with me is um, I find leaks and and I was telling this the, the rugby teams yesterday, I said, poker is about being honest with yourself because you have to um, look at yourself and analyze your game and be honest uh, and not blame it on your opponent and go, could I play that spot? better? Is there something that I'm missing here? Um, because your improvement isn't coming through what you've done well. Your improvement is going to come through what you haven't quite uh, achieved or haven't quite optimized. Um, and that's that's what I love about it. You know, I, 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 I've, I, I am a much, much better poker player than I was uh, a year ago. And I, I see that in the results I'm getting. So, you know, now I walk into a certain field and I just expect to do well. Yeah. I have that confidence because I know I have an edge of a, of a certain field. While well, we recorded the last episode of Poker in the Years of 2023, just before we came to Prague, it will be back in the new year. It is the official Poker Stars podcast. Joe and I host it every single week. There are interviews like the one you just heard with Alex. We give you behind the scenes stories of what happens on tour. Plus on air contests, your chance to be a super fan and win prizes. So you can take part and you can listen by downloading, subscribing, following on all major podcast apps. Poker in the Ears, we'll be back in 2024. First episode of the new year, likely to drop in early February. And in March, Joe, we're going to hit episode 300. So we need to do something special 
for our third centenary. 300 episodes. My goodness. How many podcasts have made it that far? Not that many. We're going to be in the top 1% as far as weekly podcasts are concerned. Sometimes it's bi-weekly, and we do take extended breaks, but yes, I take your point. I mean, as opposed to a daily podcast making it to 300. Yes, of course. So yeah, stand by for more news on what's happening with episode 300 and new episodes of Poker in the Ears to be enjoyed from the start of February 2024, just before we kick off EPT 2024. Details on that coming up. So yeah, the early podcast episodes will probably include our EPT Paris preview show. Yeah, and let's uh, let's let's talk about some of the good stuff too that people care about. On-air contests. We've given away a lot of cool stuff, and every week we give away a little bit of cool stuff. But how many platinum passes did we give away on the podcast? Two or three? I think three. We now regularly give away bronze power passes as part of the Superfan Quiz. Oh, should highlight, you can talk about the show on Discord. The PokerStars Discord server has dedicated channels for the podcast, yep. including a general discussion channel and also a Superfan Applications channel. But yes, I did just tease the fact that we are going to be going to Paris in February because the full schedule for EPT 2024 is out there. And... It's exactly the same as EPT 2023, but you know what, guys? If it ain't broke, don't be fixing it. Yeah. So we're going to return to Paris. Now, we know that some people weren't overly sold on the venue for Paris 2023, so it's a bigger, better venue, more space. The Palais de Congrès is going to be hosting the Paris leg of EPT 2024. Then, Monte Carlo in the spring. Barcelona in the summer, two of the traditional old favorites. Mm -hmm. Now, Cyprus made its debut this year and was a very popular destination. So we are going back there next year. And then in December of 2024, it's back to Prague for the Christmas EPT. I hate the way you blow through an entire year like that. It's just so, because I know it's going to be over in the blink of an eye. We're not done with this Prague yet. We shouldn't be talking about next Prague. Full schedule for the next EPT season can be found on the PokerStars Live app. Also at PokerStarsLive.com. So what can I tell you about Paris? I can tell you that the event runs from February the 14th to February the 25th at that new venue I just highlighted. And we are going to be bringing you live cards up coverage on the PokerStars Twitch and YouTube channels. Now, we are putting the finishing touches to the broadcast schedule, but you know you're going to get the main event at least. Maybe, just maybe, an extra final table. But I assure you that we'll bring you live coverage Ooh. from Paris when we get to the month of February. That will be our Valentine's gift to you. I, I have a suggestion for EPT Paris for Valentine's Day. They should EPT Travel should do a thing that if you bring your significant other, you get like a bottle of champagne and some chocolates in your room or something. That's a much better idea than the one you were floating earlier on. What, that I sell 100% of my action to an EPT and move in every single hand to Correct. see how far I can go? Correct. The champagne and chocolate's a much better idea. <laughs> so back to the action on day four of the EPT Prague main event. The redraw has taken place. We are down to 24, and these are the eight players we're going to be watching on the main stage. The biggest stack belongs to Team Pro Ramon Kalias. We've also got Marley Sprague. We've got Tuan and Mulder. We've got Anton Bergstrom. And one of the online qualifiers, Adria Diaz. We continue at the 15.30 blind level, and we still have 32 minutes of this blind level to play out until we get to the dinner break. And it is going to be a full 60-minute dinner break tonight because we are expecting to play at least one full level, if not two full levels, after this one because we're trying to get down to 16 tonight. If it goes quicker, fine. But we have to plan for the worst, and that would mean playing until around midnight. And everyone, including the players, needs to eat. Everyone needs their sustenance, Joey. Well, some of us could afford to skip a meal or two. I'm including myself there. Thank you. There is Marley. 
back on the main stage, playing around 40 bigs right now. Marley involved in a couple of big pots where she had to get out of the way. Turn Mulder playing just shy of 30 bigs. He's had some up and down days. Ramon playing more than 70 bigs and as we established is the biggest stack at this table right now. The chip leader, John Kite, He's reclaimed the top position. Started the day as chip leader, lost that chip lead, was at risk at one point today, but he's back in the catbird seat with 3.9 million chips. Was quite literally walking toward the door when he spiked a major suck out on the river. That's poker, my babies. Thank you. Thank you. So good to be able to follow Ramon on day four of this EPT. Roll neck Ramon. Four pass. Action back underway. And thank you to Tom, one of our super mods, reminding us that now we're down to the final two tables. Sorry, the final three tables. The live updates team from Poker News adhere to the 30 minute delay. So if you'd like to follow the action, if you'd like to see the full list of players, chip counts, get hand updates from the two outer tables, but not have to worry about spoilers, you can now have Poker News open. Carbet on YouTube says, if someone says good luck, just say thank you, noted. It was the dealer who said good luck, so there's not really a huge point in saying good luck back, so I feel like thank you was appropriate. Thank you for your comment. Xiao with king-queen, Ramon with queen-eight, domination, rotation, Ramon pairing his eight. Oh, Ramon. What are you like? You know, Joe, there's many things uh -oh. about the live chat uh -oh. that tilt me. Oh, boy. The casual sexism is one of them. You guys are in big trouble. But when people freak out because someone has a face mask on, Oof. here's a news alert for you. There's a lot of illness going around at the moment. So if someone wants to wear a face mask because they are A, sick and don't want others to get ill, or B, don't want to get sick themselves. That's their decision. Live with it. It's the mark of a really small individual to care about something like that. Sort of absolute loser. What do you do now, Zhao? What do you do now? I got a bigger problem with those glasses, honestly. <laughs> Are we gonna have a runner, runner? No. Winter. Oh, wow. River Bluff from Zhao. And Ramon does not pick it off. Ramon folds the best hand. Well, well, well. Chang Zhao. Now, Maybe a little Coleus Kryptonite. Table chip leader. 
moves ahead of Ramon on the leaderboard. Chess asking, why not check raise on the turn? I don't think a pair of, are you assuming um, Zhao check raise on the turn? Because that Zhao's out of uh, position? I mean, I, I guess you could check raise on the turn, but you don't have to. Eight raise, 60,000. Seems like what he did worked out just fine. 10 pass. one pass. Well, the good news is, Three pass. And trust me, there is good news buried in this. The casual sexism has now advanced to casual racism. Oh, oh, great. But the good news is, Chat Pro Saturday is now in doubt, because you couldn't help yourselves, could you? Oh, boy. Dark Skez says, please stop, we're here for the poker. Yes, if you can get it back on track, guys then you might just be able to save CPS. Six pass. Seven pass. Eight pass. Josh Gondelman in the two seat. Ten pass. Not the two seat, but whatever. One raise, 65,000. Boy, oh boy, two hands in a row. Got him dominated. There's 100, 150. Nice. Three raise. <laughs> chase, chase, twitch, comment of the day. Well done. Thanks to you, Chat Pro Saturday might still happen. <laughs> One seventy five to re raise. I think when you get three bet from this position, you're going to be dominated quite a bit. A lot easier to justify seeing a flop with suited cards. Tune is gonna go for it anyway. Okay, let's have us a flop. Eight, six, four, ace, queen, high, still ahead. And although Tune's gonna be in trouble and on boards that come queen high or ace high, he's probably gonna do really well on boards that come nothing. Ha ha! Now this probably isn't going to work for one bet. Two bets? Three bets? Tickle him under there. And that's the thing is Mulder's not the kind of player that's just going to give up after it not working for one bet. <coughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Zhao is not messing about. He is stubborn. He's like, ace queen's the best hand, and ace queen is still the best hand. Chips up to 2.4 million, more than 80 big blinds. How many players do you reckon we're going to end this level with, Joe? Do you reckon we'll see any eliminations in the next 23 minutes? Uh, I set the line at one. Okay. Or one and a half, I guess. Shall we see what the widget thinks? Yeah. Uh, level 24. Oh, wow. We are. 
So the widget spread, because we get to generally tr prefer to look at options, but then we just take the median. Uh, between 25 and 19 players. In the next 23 minutes? No, we should end this level with between oh, 25. That's a pretty wide and gap at this point. It's a pretty wide gap at this point, but let's let's go with the kind of middle number, right? Okay. So 22. Yeah, I don't think we'll be there. I don't know which is going to be a million miles off. Someone's. All in. Oh well, here we go. There's an all in. Bergstrom's just moved all in with Ace Five suited. And been called, snap called by Kuzmanis. Well, this is really going to mess with my line if Bergstrom doesn't win this. Good luck. If 10s hold, we will be down to 23, and the widget's back on track. There's a five. Well, that gives Bergstrom additional outs. Or should I say an additional out? Just the one five left in the deck, along with the three aces. Turn card is a six. Bergstrom needs a five. Or Barry Greenstein. River card is a 10. It's a set for Kudzmanis, and it's the elimination of Anton Bergstrom in 24th place. 27,800 euros. We have just hit a pay jump. Everyone is now locked up. 31,980 euros. I feel a little bad for Bergstrom. I feel like he really couldn't get anything going the last couple of levels. Kind of got kicked around a little bit. Kutmanis now playing close to 60 bigs. Yeah, no, only big blinds. Yeah. Yeah. Stacks of all the players we're watching right now, seven-handed on the main stage. <coughs> little inside information on Zhao from YouTube. Zhao's been staying in Greece for the past months. I've played against a lot of tournaments. Big bluffs are coming your way. I like it. I mean, he was bluffing with the best of it on that last hand against Tuin. Eight pass. Ten pass. One pass. Action has been folded to Zhao. Queen nine. Good and now Good round pass. two, Ramon on the button. No small blind this hand. So just Marley to get through. He's got ace, deuce of diamonds. Five raise, 60,000. And Marley folds the king jack. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Doesn't want to play against Ramon out of position. Whoa, 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 Muppet Chat 85 on YouTube. Local time zone rules apply. I don't care where you are in the world. It's about where we are in the world. Right now, it's Friday, quarter to eight in the evening. Won't be Saturday till tomorrow. So don't think for one second that CPS starts now. Oh, Lord. This guy so wants to be Sam Grafton. <laughs> <laughs> you 
He's wearing that uh, Indian motorcycle hat and a former member of the poker media. Remember Martin Harris? Yes. He wrote a novel uh, that features an Indian motorcycle heavily. A novel based on his childhood. Huh. And I really enjoyed it. It was called Obsessica, if anybody wants to read it. Short novel. You could probably read it in a couple hours. One dice, 60,000. Three pass, four pass, five pass, seven pass, eight pass. Okay, what am I missing here? So cool says CPS. Can we come up with a better acronym? It's a little concerning in its more recognizable form. To me, the CPS is the Crown Prosecution Service. Ooh. That's the only CPS I know. What What am I missing? Chat Pro Saturday. Well, no, apparently there's another one, and I'm not sure what it is. Child Protective Services. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Dana's from Florida, so of course she would know about CPS. with Ace Jack, just the big blind to get through. That player being Turn Mulder, who's down to 20 bigs. Queen Jack nine. I'm on second pair, top kicker. It's been checked to him. Joey, I'm very excited because in 15 minutes time we get to eat and Jimmy is hungry. Today was going to be the day I waited to eat after we were done, but you picked the wrong day to that's plan that. Be a bad, a bad idea. I mean, I think it's going to take both levels post-dinner break to get anywhere near 16 players. I'm also thinking tomorrow might not be a short day. I know in theory 16 to 6 sounds achievable. They never are. Oh, no. <laughs> Whoa. Marius, calm down. Lithuania to the soon of Maniac. <laughs> Sue me for that. There goes another bottle on the floor. Now in the small blind with sixes. Action's been folded to him. Nice. Three is 100,000. Uh. 
Queen three for Kutzmanis. And he calls. Good luck. From what I've seen so far, I would not be that enthused about this. King five deuce. Well, queen high still the best hand. Yeah, but you gotta get to showdown with it. Xiao betting 90,000. And okay. Kutzmanis makes the queen high call. There's a queen high value here. There's also a lot of back doors that you can turn that you're not seeing. This is one of them. Yeah, yeah, the wheel draw. And maybe your opponent slows down. On an ace, doesn't seem like Zhao's really the type. I don't think this guy slows down. <laughs> Oh, he does. Oh. He looked at his chips. He tricked us, yeah. He tried, that, that's probably intentional. Yeah, I like it. Well, Queen High has been ahead on every single street. I think he genuinely forgot what cards he had. What do we think the reasoning behind that would be? Mm -hmm. Has Kuzmanis got his number? And does Kuzmanis think that Queen High has value as a hero call here? It's definitely sus. 350,000. Three quarters pot. More than. Well, that fellow on YouTube was not lying when he said, get ready for some bluffs. And that bluff gets through. Cheng Zhao now playing 2.6 million, more than 85 big blinds. What does checking his cards first mean? What does any of it mean? Like any of all of this? Life. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. There's another bottle. Being able to hear a bottle drop reminds me of my stand-up shows. <laughs> as long as they're not being thrown. Seven raise, 1,000 feet, 1,000 next hand. 1,000 feet, 1,000 next hand. New blind, 1,000 feet, 1,000 Somali opening under the gun. Zhao calling in position. Ramon folds the big blind, so it's heads up to the flop. So Marley folds the king jack in the big blind, raises king six suited, and now has to play against 
the maniac of all maniacs at this table, dominated and out of position. Well, King Queen is still ahead and has picked up the open-ended straight draw. Marley checks a second time. Marley folds to Zhao's bet of 85,000. Seven and a half minutes on the clock. Dinner break incoming. A reminder, it will be a 60 minute dinner break because we are planning to play two more levels tonight. We'll only stop before that if we get to 16 players. Sprague sitting next to a player who has the Spraggy and pass. justifiably folds it. No, there's another bottle. I think since we decided that Marley is Spraggy from now on, we should choose a new hand for Marley and call that, that the Spraggy. People in chat asking what the benefits are to being a friend of Poker Stars. Well, let's say there's like a bar fight breaks out. Poker Stars will come have your back, right? Let's say you're moving. You need to pick up from the airport, Poker Stars. Just normal friend stuff. And if Poker Stars wants to date your ex, they have to call you first and make sure it's okay. Seems fair. No man's nom nom. And race sixty thousand. One pass. Three pass. Four pass. Raises to sixty thousand. Seven pass. Round to the big blind. Jack six. Raise and take it. David wants to know, will Poker Stars bail me out of jail? Yeah. I've been told on no uncertain terms, no. <laughs> All right, so it looks like my line of 1.5. Strong line. Strong line. One pass. Because there's been one. Come on, roll neck, Ramon. Show them what you're made of. Beige, but sassy. <laughs> Raise and take it for the PSPC 2019 champion. I don't think I've seen so many big blinds folded and the whole rest of the tournament.
get 10% discount and free shipping for any orders placed at the Pokestar store during EPT Prague using the code EPT Prague 23. Promotion ends December 17th. Terms apply. 60? Huh. 10% off, huh? Does that include the brick? 10% off the foam brick? Should we get the brick and just see what it's like? Endless pranks. So now Marley's raising two in his big blind. Yeah, he is called with ace three. A lot of chop opportunities in a hand like this. King, king, queen. Yep. One took. Near enough an 80% chance of a chop. If we get to showdown. Marley continuing. 40,000. That's 40 into 165. Nice raise there from Turn Mulder. Marley forced to fold. Hovering around the 30 big blind mark now. Mulder playing 25 bigs. Spirit of the horse. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. And Andrea Diaz is the table short stack with 14 big blinds. Keith McIntosh says, let me stay right now. I do not live a chop pot. Ah, he wrote live. <laughs> you can know you can't write love after. He said live first. <laughs> nope. Coming towards the end of this session. Less than a minute on the clock. The Grafton for Diaz, 10-9 suited. Ramon has opened with queen nine of spades. That's not how you're meant to play the Grafton. I guess when you got 14 bigs, it's hard. Not my turn. Seven deuce for Mulder. Okay, it's Zhao in the big blind. I mean, this would be quite a matchup. And it is going to be a matchup. Zhao defending with an ace. Confirmation that the other players are going to be leaving the table now because we have hit the dinner break. Does Zhao have two hearts there? Ramon doesn't have much, but he's going to continue. Probably not getting rid of the ace of hearts for one bet, regardless of that other card. He's under the bottle. Break time, everyone's just kicking bottles around the room. The beginning of the Temple of Doom. Cool. All right, we got a guess from Zoomer's Daddy that it's the Ten of Diamonds that's broken. Okay. I like that. Good theory. Let's see what happens. This might do it for this hand. Yeah. Ramon's had enough. 
Remember what the food. And that is going to take us to the dinner break. We're going to be coming back for <sighs> level 25 <laughs> when the blinds will be up to 20,000, 40,000 with a 40k big blind ante. And things are going to be relatively shallow for quite a few players. Average stack will be below 50 big blinds for the first time today. Well, obviously, we just drew this feature table, so we're not going to be changing it during the break. We'll come back with the same lineup on the main stage. Good session for Cheng Zhao. Up over 70 big blinds. Ramon's still a decent stack, hovering around that 50 big blind mark. It's not looking so good for Marley Sprague. She'll have 21 big blinds at the new level. Tuan Mulder's dropped below 20 bigs, and Adria Diaz, the qualifier, is in the danger zone. Danger zone! 11 bigs at the 2040 blind level. Those just seven of the 23 players who remain in the EPT Prague main event. Playing down to 16 on day four. Action will resume in just over 55 minutes time when we come back from dinner. We'll see you then. It's the PokerStars European Poker Tour. Chico. Not yet. Not yet. You got a Vulcan Bronco? Oh, I'm actively rooting against him. He looks so much like my grandpa. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, Frederick on the button? Pass as well, just the blinds. Bona Vena. Italian for the good Vena. I'm liking the scarf he's chosen for this final table. The blinds, you're going to see the flop heads up here. Let's see. If you ask me, men show too much of their necks in the first place. Three of clubs, seven of spades. Salvatore first. Bonavena's ace high, still the best hand. Alexio's got two live cards and a gut shot. By the way, I don't think that it is Bonavena's intention to hide any neck tails here. This is absolutely a fashion statement. Nothing more, mm -hmm. nothing less. Yeah, no, I just think showing your neck is uncouth. Okay. Like, what is this, a brothel? Cover that neck up. So Bonavena still ahead here with ace high. Alexia is still with the straight draw. River is a king. Ace high still good. Alexia is going to bluff River. Bets 230 into 334. Constantinos. My lines make no sense, Alexio. Do you think he's waiting for a sixth street? Because if so, this I like this bet. He's got a gut shot. He's got a flush draw. He's still got a live jack and a live nine. No, wait, the nine's not live anymore, is it? Bonavena folds the best hand. Show the bluff. Show the bluff. Disappointing. I don't think a good name for a poker player is one that ends in I O U. <laughs> a fair observation. Okay, there's a seat open somewhere. Good luck working out who it was for. 
Put a zero pin and one for that for Andrew's going to raise to 48,000. Andrew Chen raising here with pocket tens. Makes it 48,000. Round to the blinds. Nazar El Nazar in the small blind. King Jack of Diamonds. How much you have? 200. Nazar trying to figure out if he wants to call and maybe let in the big blind or just put in the rest of it. Yeah, there he it goes. decides to move all in. Call. Andrew Chen calls, and we are off to the races once again. Andrew shows the ten of spades and the ten of hearts. Good luck. Nasser shows king jack of diamonds. This is a flip that Nasser Al Nasser has Andrew to win. His tourney life is on the line here. Nasser has king jack of diamonds. Let's see the flop, please. Flop is. Ooh, we have got top set against a flush draw. Andrew has flop top set. Nasser has a flush draw. 10 4 deuce, 2 diamonds. Poor Nasser, remember, had those aces cracked by Buena Vena's Kings. Yeah. Let's see the turn card, please. Turn card is the seven of spades. Has to be a diamond on the river that doesn't pair the board. Not the seven or deuce to double through. He knows. Let's see the river card, please. The eight of hearts. That is not enough. And Nasser Al Nasser exits in seventh place, cashing for 99,500 euros, almost 100 grand. We're down to six players at this final table from Prague, 2008. Blinds are now 15,000, 30,000 with a 3K ante. Frederick's under the gun. This is such a bizarre final table. I can't believe I haven't had the opportunity to ask Andrew Chen what was going through his head at this point. I wonder if he even really remembers. Raise. Yeah. Frederick's going to raise. 72. I imagine he does. And he must have been thinking, I'm clearly the best player at this table. Massimo will pass the button back to Franco. Definitely, but remember, you know, whatever his poker knowledge ended up being, he, it was in its infancy as well at this point. Maybe he really looked up to Salvatore Bonavena. He'll pass the small. Andrew in the big now. He'll pass as well. So we're going to go heads up to this flop. So Nugard and Alexiu go heads up to the flop. King flop. nine against sixes. And look at this. Sixes. Quad sixes for Alexiu. Nugard has paired his king. And there go chips into the abyss. 85,000. Don't go all in. Don't even raise. Constantinos is going to make the call of 85,000. Just 85, calls. It's the jack of clubs. How does Nugard not go broke here? I, even if you have a bad feeling, you're just like, what am I going to do? Like, you can't not bet top pair. Oh, Constantinos. Call the announcement from Constantinos. It just never goes down like that when you have a weak hand. You're never like lean back in your chair. Call. It's just not. 130,000 a piece for the river card. Let's see if it was worth it. It's not river realistic. Card. River's a deuce of diamonds. I think it goes check, check here sometimes, James. He's going to check the place. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <coughs> Can I have this take this? Constantinos. Did he ask permission to bet? He's going to bet yeah. Bless his heart. Frederick makes a call. 200,000, snap called by Nugard. Alexiu could have gone so much bigger on the river. He's <laughs> adorable. Another pot, and Nugard is left with crumbs.
So much so that we rejoined the action with just four players because Newgard got schlugged in the ad break. Oh no, Newgard. Sorry, five players, five handed now. Newgard cashing out for 130,000 euros in sixth place. Freddy. Bonavena has raised with ace king. Alexiu is all in with ace queen. DeChico frustratingly folds sevens. What is going on here? Good pass as well, back to Salvatore. And win the tournament and go out. One of them. All right, here's one for Salvatore Bonavena. You ready? Yeah. A bad look alike when we get back to him. Robert Davi. Yes. Oh, it's, king. Mm -hmm. king. it's a great <laughs> bad look alike. You kind of shouldn't. You have say a nice king? Kind of thing to, I, mean, I don't, I don't care. Really. Yeah, it's the same. Special Agent Johnson. I have a nice king. Cool. What? I have a. You know, Constantine turning his hand. Or Is he trying to tell him that he has one hand worse than Ace King? Face up or something like at this point. Can't. He can't. One round. It's None of that. Yeah. Salvatore's gonna pass. Wow. He's gonna show Ace King suited and done. Bonavena folds Ace King! I don't know. <laughs> well, what is going on here? Seems but premature. I am loving this. So, Alexiu, monster chip leader, and increases that chip lead. Notice how Andrew Chen what? has chipped up as well to more than 2 million. And we've lost uh, Francesco Siriani as well. <laughs> Fifth place finisher for 166,000 euros, eliminated by Andrew Chen. And then some more hands are played. And Andrew Chen is now dominant what? chip leader with more than 3 million. Alexiu now second in chips. Cut to major things happening. Blinds, Having had happened. Now 25,000, 50,000. And Bonavena is all in with Ace Queen. Massimo folds the small. This final table is fantastic. He really reluctantly folds the pig. <laughs> Salvatore shows Ace of Spades, Queen of Diamonds. Constantinos has Ace of Diamonds, Ten of Hearts. Well, Bonavena finally gets it in, dominating against Alexio. Constantinos has it covered. All right, let's see the flop, please. Finally doesn't fold the best hand to Alexio. Yeah. Spade, five hearts. Constantinos is the only player with a heart in his hand. Okay. There's a jack of spades. Just has to fade the 10. <laughs> Let's see the river, please. Ten. Double. Ten. Double up for Bonavena. <laughs> so Bonavena back over a million. And are we starting to see the descent of Constantinus Alexiou. I mean, he had enough chips that he could withstand that, but another big hand like that doesn't go his way, and that is pretty much it for him. Well, he's lost all of his blue chips, and those are the big ones. Oh. Well then. Bear in mind that during the montage, he lost the chip lead. How much do you have? Having doubled up Bonavena, I don't think he's particularly comfortable right now. No, Lee. Andrew's going to raise? I know pure Lee. Ah. <laughs> it's a chain, isn't it? <laughs> Too much. Andrew's going to raise to 130,000. Just a raise. Raise is small to beg. I'm all in. Call. Bonavena all in with ace five called by Chen. Andrew's got two black kings. Andrew snap calls before we even have a chance to animate the cards. Two million in the middle. Andrew looks like he's lost his hand already. Why does he have such a defeated look on his face? He's a huge favorite. He knows the adage. Always an ace on the desk. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
Turn is an eight of diamonds. Salvatore now just needs to dodge eight of the remaining kings, and he's going to double through. River card, please. Two big double ups in a row for Salvatore Bonavena, and he's now the chip leader. So Andrew had three million when we started that little bit, just got doubled through for a million. Bonavena definitely has the advantage over him. It's close, but Bonavena's in front right now. King Queen off. He announces raise from the button. Raises to 200,000. Konstantinos Alexiou all in with threes. <laughs> Come on. How much? A million. A million. 1.15. Okay, so there's a 200. Nine, 945 more. 945,000 more is the race. This guy is real good at pre-flop poker. Bonavena has folded so many big hands to Alexiou. This is one there's a, a stronger argument for folding than some of the others, but this time he calls and they are flipping. Well, this time Bonavena is not calling all in. It's Alexia who's the player at risk and he needs to win this flip. Like three doors down versus three six mafia. Three's holding. Eighty-six percent favorite. One more time, he has to dodge the king or the queen. Let's see the river card, please. River card. Is a king. Italian flags in the air, hugging and kissing left, right, and center, and Constantinus Alexiou eliminated in fourth. Cash it out for 199k. These guys just flipping for hundreds of thousands of euros. Yeah, the letters ICM have no meaning in this joint. Three players We're remain. for the win, James. Two of the final three, Joe, are Italian, and the rail are loving it. Please. Andrew Chen actually has a smile on his face, too. Looks like everybody's having some fun. Massimo says all in. Andrew passes. Salvatore makes it. Why not? Bonavena opens on the button. De Chico moves all in. Bonavena calls, and we're off to the races one more time. Like the happening versus the day the earth stood still. One of these two terrible things from 2008 as a slight mathematical advantage. The Chico pairs his ace. Massimo needs to dodge the two remaining fours in the deck and running hearts in order to double through. Let's see the turn card, please. He just disinvited Chico from Sunday dinner. Hasn't changed. <laughs> You come to my house, you eat my scalapine. You do this to me. Guys, guys. No more scalapine for you. All in. Let's see the card, please. Now he's prepared to celebrate. We will go see a man. His name is Di Chico. Massimo, 
Pass him on first. So round to Andrew Chen in the small blind, who's got queen seven. He's going to call option over to Salvatore, who's going to check his option. So Andrew and Salvatore in the blinds are going to take a look at the flop. Hmm. Queen on board. Flop is king of spades. Nope. King of Not a three. Domination rotation. He's going to bet 75,000. That of 75,000 from Andrew Chen. Salvatore's gonna call 75,000. Bonavena calls. Right, so for 75,000 apiece, let's see the turn. It's the ace of hearts. Ace, king, king, three, two hearts, two spades. Andrew's first. Three could be counterfeited at this point. How many more Italians could possibly be in this room? Andrew's gonna bet out 180,000. Oh my God. Should we look up who was winning the high roller at the same time? There wouldn't have been a high roller in Prague. Oh, it's definitely a 1K then, right? Maybe a 500. The 200 euro nightly. Yeah. <laughs> so this hand going to the river. Bonavena, big favorite. Eight of hearts. Board bricks out for Andrew Chen, but he's not going to stop firing. Man, oh man. Andrew's gonna bet 500. Andrew thousand. Chen, he's got the queen high flush blocker. Bonavena with just a three. I mean, really kind of unlucky to run into a three here. Bonavena's just not supposed to have any of this. Wow. Says, nice. Oh, look at that. Caught you with a three, and I'm right. Just very unlucky to meet such a sticky player who just happens to catch his only out. Look at this fancy oh. chip stacks graphic. Chips going up, chips going down. A lot of hands, long final table. I remember it. It was quite boring. Bonavena, <laughs> big chip leader. Chen now the low man. All in. Andrew. Sounds so defeated as he moves all in for his last 1.2 million. One moment. Oh, God. He just, what can you do? Like, everything he does, it doesn't end up working out. Andrew, I wonder if he's as tilted as he looks. <laughs> People not being very kind to Bonavena in chat. And the flop comes. Three, seven, five, two hearts. No help for Andrew. Andrew needs a king or a queen. Does Andrew be drawing dead on the turn with the four? Yeah. Oh, that's a four of hearts, at least. Oh, no, that's no good. That's one of Anna. He's dead on the turn. Right. They could chop. They could still chop. Andrew's like, excuse me. Yes, I have three hearts to a chop. Thank you. Andrew Chen out in third place. 257,000 euros. And this was a huge moment. Bear in mind, there has not been an Italian winner on the EPT so far, Joe. And the final two players are both Italian. So we are guaranteed our first Italian champion. Will it be Salvatore Bonavena 
or Massimo De Chico. Right now, it's Bonavena with the massive chip advantage. 4.3 million near enough, playing 1.4 million. Now, James, I realize you probably didn't think this at the time because everyone's poker knowledge was relatively limited. In retrospect, watching this, do you think that there's still somehow a chance that there won't be an Italian winner? <laughs> I tell you who wasn't winning, and that was the audience. The live stream audience. Oh, yeah. Well, this is really cute, actually. I mean, what a huge moment, though, for the Italian fans, for the Italian audience, yeah. and for Italian poker. And uh, <clears throat> Spain is still going to have to wait another seven years. I actually remember because when we did the live stream commentary back in this era, all of the different commentary teams were on site. I mean, the Italian team were just almost in tears. They were so emotional about the fact they were finally going to have a winner. That's very sweet. I just wanted and to go to bed. Well, lo and behold, the Italian flops best. Two pair against top pair. Wowee, great spot for DeChico to chip up. It's a good question from Tag. Now there's only Italian players left. Are they allowed to speak Italian to each other? No. Not during the hand. <laughs> so yes, this looks like a double up for the Chico. Got two pairs, and deuces, and queen, ten, the hand for Salvador. Massimo in the lead with two pairs, ten, and deuces. Let's see the river card. It's a five, and he doubles up. The Chico. 2.8 million now. See, so yeah, it took a lot of hands, Joe. Nearly more than 250 hands to get heads up. And then this heads up oh battle went on for some time as well. This was a very, very long final table. It was, it was, yeah. Race. Massimo is going to race. You do a good job of not complaining about these. Like, the, I don't have to hear a lot of war stories. I've heard about Copenhagen. But this one flies under the radar. This feels long even on TV. Yeah. Three rays. Three rays. Pauline. Pauline. shoves onto Chico, who can't call it off with King Four. Passes. Pass. You wave that flag. You've earned it. Who's going to be covered in that flag? Who's going to be jumping up and down with their rail? Nice. 8-7 of diamonds for Bonavena. Raises. Who's going to celebrate tonight with a big bull of scallopine? Ace cool. for for Chico, and he calls. Let's have a flop. And it's an eight high flop with the wheel draw for DeChico. All hearts maybe an action killer? No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> DeChico shoves with his straight draw. Bonavena calls with top pair, and this could decide it. If Bonavena's hold. hand holds, and it will do 72% of the time, we have a winner. 
Bonaveda looking to hold Avena. Lots of bricks in this deck. Five or an ace needed for Tachiko. The river card is a Jack and Salvatore Bonavena becomes the first Italian champion on the European Poker Tour. Takes down Prague in season five of the tour, December 2008. Massimo De Chico, the runner up, cashing for 445,000 euros. Bonavena gets 774 grand plus the title and the trophy and a place in the EPT history books. Chip leader back in action with ace queen of diamonds. Adrian Guillaume with ace queen off. Yeah, Guillaume, the effective stack here, 52 big blinds. Looks like he's reaching for the tree vet. I guess three betting the chip leader opening under the gun with ace queen off is in the realm of okay. Oh boy. Bali with jacks. Yeah, look at the action here as well, guys. Under the gun open, under the gun plus one three bet. This is a weird spot. Lots of players back behind. Marley yes. might just muck it. Yeah, I mean, look, we can see the cards, but that action is real scary, and I don't know. And if things keep escalating, well, exactly. you're going to have the fifth best hand. That's exactly. Well, and then things could escalate where you still have the best hand, and you Fourth still got a fold. Hand. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think I'd probably do the same thing there. You're right, Lobster. That might have been the only right way to play Jax. And we're going to the flop. Well, both players, same combination. John's going to have a little bit more equity with the diamonds. Ooh, there's one. Not enough to make the flush just yet, though. Terrible fault with Jax. <laughs> yeah. They both have the back door. They both need running red. And Duncan has returned. Morning, lads. Are we playing to a winner today? No, we are not. We are playing to the final two tables. We will play to a winner on Sunday. That's right. We're going to play down to 16, or we're going to play six levels, whichever comes first. To answer... Emil's question, I don't think you would fold queens there, no. What about Ono's question? Would you have loved to see a five bet to 230K then fold to a jam? Well, first of all, it would have been a four bet, not a five bet. But what do you think about re-raising there with the intention of folding to any further betting? I think the only way to play jacks there is to skip right to the five bet, personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I, 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 I like that idea. That doesn't sound quite right to me. I think uh, I think just giving it up is probably okay. It's quite a specific setup where both players have ace queen. Discount there, not 200k, 195,000. Discount and disrespect. Ooh. Betting 195,000 here with nothing, that's rude.
Man, oh man. Wow. These guys want the kind of pot that everyone loves. So, do we think this goes check, check? That's the coward's way out. Imagine if John turns his hand into a bluff here. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually a great run out for uh, for the for the defending for the uh, uh, three bet defense uh, defend call, but it's uh, also a really strong hand that can still be winning at showdown. So goes check on the river. Does Guion want to fire again? Well, there's 920 in the middle, and he's only got 345 behind. Well, yes, he shoved wow. the river! Guillaume! What a life. Eastern parts? Eastern parts? You can have it. Wowee! Maybe a spin out? Yeah, okay. No heart, I always go. The cheek! Oh! Guillaume loves the Dolly Parton. Calls out of the big blind with 9 5. Ruggieri, a 2 to 1 favorite with Ace King. And the flop is <laughs> Jack 8 6. Seventh size coming. Still needs a seven. Eight, nine, ten, Jack. Queen is good too. Oh! Or a queen. He's now up and down. Queen's not ex not good. Well, it, it will complete a straight yes. that he thinks is good. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about the, the defend with 9-5 here as well, though. Seems like an extremely wide defend here. Does have a good price. It's probably not burning money with the big blind ante in there, but... Oh, okay, oh. that's spicy. That's the one, a spicy meatball. I really hate the defend with queen five. <laughs> with nine five. Man, when you get bet into here, you're just like, really? Uh, you're loving absolute life, and I'm all for in. For real? <laughs> Joe, I'm all in every single time. All of it. Every single disc. Every single I fun disc in the world. I might check my hand here just to make sure that I have the nuts. Then I'd be all in. I like the Hollywood here, though. It really looks like he's trying to figure out how much he has behind. <laughs> for a second, I thought he was going to mark his cards. <laughs> All of it, every single fun disc on planet Earth. There's the all in. Wow. Well, what a real. If you can get away from this, that's pretty impressive, too. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you, you can use more time, man? No? Uh -huh. no? You don't understand? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah? Hollywood, you understand? Default? Yeah. Proud. Sure. Okay. Guillaume does make the lay down. <laughs> Wants Ruggieri to show. Seems a little annoyed that Ruggieri used a time bank and then jammed with the nuts. <laughs> oh, that's an all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rodin's raised with ace queen, Ruggieri is shoved with king jack. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to see a fold here. Ace queen seems like a pretty good hand to call the shove. 
So less than 20 big blinds. And it is, of course, uh, hijack versus cutoff. So yeah, it makes the call. It will be a head. King Jack suited, two life cards, and uh, and the club's working in his favor. One club missing in Rodin's hand, though, of course. Russians are okay with that with that call. Okay, so an ace high flop, but two clubs out there. Ruggieri with the flush draw. Sweaty flop. But right now he is behind. Club on the turn, no sweat on the river. Ruggieri doubles up. How many clubs in this deck? Too much flush. Very crunchy board, James. It's entirely too much tuna. Slaps it out there. O'Neill's putting in the raise. Min raise it is. Would you like some hashtag fun facts about Porygo Neil, Nick? I would like nothing more. 630k in live earnings. Biggest live score came in a tournament in Vegas last March. It's a six-figure score, $127,500. If we rewind the clock to 2012, he made the final table of UK IPT Dublin, finishing fifth for 20k. And this is his third cash in an EPT main event, cashed in Barcelona and Prague back in 2016. Awesome. Sounds like he's doing everything right. We'd love to see Mr. O'Neill going a little bit deeper here, um, here in 2023, here in Prague. Well, he has flopped a set. Just the... Backdoor opportunities for Steve. Might think overcards are good as well. I quite like the, the check on this flop. I think this is the kind of flop where you're going to open a lot from the hijack and end up checking to the player in position a ton. So it's nice to actually have some balance where you have some of your strongest stuff played slow here too. Both players very deep. Okay, well that's a bit of equity for Steve O'Dwyer. Picks up the straight draw on the turn. I think at this stage, you got to start pumping, though. You got to start going big. If you miss the flop bet, you got to go big on the turn. Like 90K? 135. Actually, slight over bet. Even wow. better. Love it. The important point being that you just got to start putting a lot in as fast as possible if you're going to miss that flop bet. And it goes check, check over the first three cards. Wire calls. A lot of bad rivers here for O'Neill. That's not one of them. Quads is usually good, James. Four of a kind. Very good hand. Four hundred K in the middle. O'Dwyer the effective stack, one point four four million. I think I probably talked myself into betting on this river now as well, James. Hands kind of weirdly represented with the check on the flop. And the over bet river, 450K. Quick fold from the King Jack, of course, but shows it. <laughs> you want to show that one? <laughs> 
you do if you win the pot, you show both cards. Both cards, yeah. I mean, yeah. stuff in my dreams can't be no, bought. No, 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 no. 30 seconds. Like twins. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought it's. <laughs> Buenos dias, Adria. Hope I don't get anything, though. Adria Diaz, under the gun, ace five off. Oh, you folded that one, right? I thought I'm under the gun. Then I wouldn't have folded it. Ooh, ho! Uh, year of Romania. Lupuleak. Can I get two waters, please? Pocket queens. Yeah. Mm. Or one big? Do you have big ones as well? The real deal, okay, O'Neill. Then, then too small. Thank you. Folds Jack Ten on the button. Gover Matsal, Ten Eight, and the small and the smile. <laughs> Good boy. Ace Queen for Steve of the Dwyer. In the big blind, will not be folding. I mean, this would be hell of a, a live read, I guess, but it just doesn't happen like that. Well, if anyone can do it, Steve O'Dwyer. I think he just three bets here a ton. 210. 210,000, slightly over four times. Yikes. You get all nervous with queens here, Nick? You get all worried? I think there's always an anxiety with any hand, really. You know, thinking about what's to come, thinking about, you know, how to get max, how to lose the minimum when it goes south. So Lapuliak only about 47 bigs. They say only 47 big blinds, obviously a ton in tournament poker. If you think that Steve O'Dwyer is a very good player, and is a very is a much better player than you. You're gonna to want to put more chips in here, not just call, right? Well, on the flip side, if you think the Steve O'Dwyer is a very aggressive opponent, and of course he is, you could let him blast off with his whole range, including some of his bluffs here. Nah, I, nah, I'm taking. I think I, I was gonna say I think the four bet is probably very conventional here. The four bet is what you're gonna do a lot of the time. Four hundred fifty. Not the biggest four bet. Call. In. Call. Oh wow. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh wow. Things escalated slowly, then quickly. Thank you. Lou Palayak gets Steve O'Dwyer to commit his chips. <laughs> In the words of Candlebox, far behind. Absolute snappy snap. But Pugliak had already decided ahead of time what he was doing and gets the dominating hand all in. Pugliak looking pretty excited, literally licking his lips at the thought of doubling through Steve O'Dwyer. Has to fade aces. Nine, five, four, that is about, well, no, it's not super clean, is it, with a couple of wheel cards there? You're not too worried just yet. Steve's gonna need an ace or runner, runner. Turn card is a four. There goes the wheel outs. One card to fade. River, seven of spades, home and dry, double up, Lupuleak. Steve what? O'Dwyer. Very big sweats. Left with 13 big blinds. Really? Yeah, absolutely uh, amazing spot there for the awesome. Queens. And just a very key pot now for Lupuleak. He's been having an absolutely stellar run. If I'm not mistaken, Lupuleak was the player who made the straight flush against Marley yesterday. Yeah. When she had the nut flush on an absolute tear last couple days. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the year of Romania. It might be the year of Romania. 2.525 million now for Alexandru Lapuliak. That's 101 big blinds. That's got to put him in the top five easily, right? Well, it puts him number two at this table. And O'Neill is definitely chip leader at the moment, I believe. That's correct. So he's got to be close. He might just be second in chips, Joe. 
it's somewhere, I would say somewhere between two and three, yes. Order is 50,000. Papuliak raising King Jack under the gun. Here's a good spot to double up. This is a good spot to get it in. More like Sam Rockwell than James Franco. I like that better. Seven is holding. Steven all in. Eight pass. Ten pass. And as Nick stated, now is in a great spot to double up. Domination situation. It's 195. Lupa Liak translated literally means wolf cure in Romanian. I like it. They got vampires and werewolves there, huh? Mm -hmm. It is the year of Romania. Beware, Steve O'Dwyer. Eight six six, looking pretty good for Steve. Just three outs for Lupiliak, and just two chances to hit him. Lupiliak needs the jack attack. And needs it on the river. River, otherwise O'Dwyer is doubling up. The fifth and final card, O'Dwyer rules. Kings and eights with an ace kicker. There it is. It's your own fault for not watching. Where's the support? We don't know. She's my big blind auntie. Never know. That wasn't on the <laughs> She can't watch. I was out of line once, but that was it. Everything else was fine. I was every single time. Everything does happen, yeah. Once isn't so bad. I have four, four or five hands. O'Neal with the King Queen. Big deal, O'Neal. Five rise, 50,000. This guy's so metal. <clears throat> Crunch tried to dish destroy the metal, but the metal was just too strong. Scrub that. Scrub that one. All right, Mattel's in with the Queen Nine suited. I like it. By the way, me saying I like it does not mean it is good or bad. Just saying it makes me interested. It tickles me. I like, well, what's his name? Guillaume going broke with seven deuce over there. Well, that's Metal. You know, it's more Metal. Going in with one card? Yeah, gambling one card. Diaz has doubled up once already this level. Will be ahead, but it's probably gonna win this pre-flop. Five seconds. Is O'Neill using time banks on this? He has to shove, isn't for absolute chunks here. Oh boy, all right. All right, we're off to the races. Matal gets out of the way. And Diaz is going to be ahead, but how far ahead? That's the question. Not super far ahead.
Big board incoming. Diaz, tournament life on the line. Jack High is good for Diaz. O'Neill still only has kings and queens as outs. Spade on the turn is dubious, however. Diaz fades the spade. Now just has to fade the kings and the lady kings. Does fade them both. And big hold there for Diaz. Gonna be a real key moment for him to remain in this tournament and get back in the driver's seat trying to accumulate some chips. Back to the feature table. Set of Ochos. Second set of Ochos we've seen this level, I think. Yeah. So O'Neill in position with the set. On the button with the set feels just fantastic. Continuation bet in play. We are sub 30 big blinds here. So two and Mulder, about 26 bigs. Goes for a prox one third. Older, yeah, with not a lot of equity here. Does turn some though. Whew. Everything's funner when you hit your card on the turn and river. Nick, I know I want to do this all the time when I have a set, but you, you size up here at this point, right? Straight cards, flush draw. So, so just remember that Mulder actually is getting on the shorter side now. I think you go pretty close to full pot, though. 175,000. 175, that's also good. But yes, sorry, in, in response to your question, yes, you size up, absolutely. I think um, the idea is we just want to make the pot big enough so we can shove for less than pot on the river effectively, and Mulder's got 615K behind. So actually, this is even, an even better as than I was suggesting. This is actually a much better size than my suggestion. My knee-jerk reaction. Holder calls this pot getting real big. That is a full house for O'Neill. Ace jack high from Mulder. Yep, loving it. O'Neill's line here pretty much perfect. I don't think he I don't think it's ridiculous to give you hero called on this river, but I'm not sure what Mulder has in mind or what kind of history these guys have. Uh, the next move is pretty clear. You're all in. And you also definitely want to be all in and not bet another amount, Joe. I think the all in, the statement of all in or all in. What if you just bet one chip? All in. I think this looks weaker because what you're, wait, this looks like you're trying to be stronger and therefore uh -huh. can be perceived as weaker. Mulder folds. <laughs> nice work from O'Neill there. I completely, completely love the sizing. Welcome to EPT 2024. Game on. Yo. Hello, my babies. Oh, ay caramba. <laughs>
Before we kick off EPT 2024, we have to conclude EPT 2023. The PokerStars European Poker Tour is in Prague. We're at King's Casino at the Hilton Prague for day four of the main event, the day when we play down to the final two tables. Right now, we are at three tables with 23 players returning from the break. Now, there's one, two levels left to play, levels 25 and 26. If we get to the end of level 26 and we're not at 16, we'll stop there. But there's a strong chance, especially with a few shallow stacks in the field, that we will get to our target. We will achieve our objective this evening. It's James Hartigan alongside Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Coming back from break, Nick, we have got the big stacks to talk about before we talk about the middling stacks. Who are the five chip leaders in this 5K tournament? But right now, the Catbird seat is occupied by Porig O'Neill. 3.7 million chips. John Kite from Norway was the start of day chip leader. He now sits in second with 3.3 million. Grigori Rodin playing 3.1 million. Now, Cheng Zhao is at the feature table right now. And during the last 30 minutes of the last level, we saw him doing what he does best, which is bully and bluff. He's chipped up to 2.8 million. And then we've got former EPT champion Niall Farrell, a player who won his European Poker Tour title in Malta back in 2015 with 2.4 million. So these players, very comfortable, but there is a lot of players with sub-20 big blind stacks. At our feature table is Adria Diaz, who's got around 10 big blinds. So I don't think, Nick, we're going to get through an entire 90 minutes of poker without losing two or three players. Yeah, absolutely. But as we spoke about earlier, so much prestige on the line. And obviously, so many players wanted to make it to the final 16. We may see a slowdown in action as the ICM pressure increases on these players. Absolutely, because we're reaching the point where the money is getting real. And also, very soon, there'll be limited jumps. We're going to get to a point soon where there's a jump in the prize money with every single elimination. So the ICM considerations will be there. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to play to the final table. And everyone who makes the final table is guaranteed a six-figure score. We're looking at 271K for fifth, 353K for fourth, 459K for third, 643,000 euros for the runner-up, and more than a million euros for the winner of this record-breaking EPT Prague main event. We'll present the main event trophy on Sunday. That's right. Tomorrow we'll watch them play down to six. Sunday we'll watch them play down to winner. So make sure you're with us Saturday and Sunday on the PokeStars YouTube and Twitch channels for Cards Up coverage of the business end of EPT Prague. I referenced already that we have Sheng Zhao at the feature table. Who else is on the main stage? Well, Ramon Kalias took a little bit of a drop during the last level. So coming back from the dinner break with a 49 big blind stack. The blinds are now 2040. Marley Sprague did not have a great session either. So she's now playing around 20 big blinds. Tuan Mulder is one of those players now sub 20 bigs. And I already really referred to online qualifier Adria Diaz as being in the danger zone. Danger zone! So we'll continue with this feature table for the next 90 minutes. Looks like we're going to get the action restarted now. This is level 25 of the main event. All right. It's all or nothing now. If you want to make it to the final 16 and 136 of today, funds are 20K, 40K, 40K ante. There's Marls. 21 big blinds, nothing to sniff at. Still a very playable stack with the luxury blind levels we have here in Prague. The usual suspect, Mr. Mulder, is going to play his button. Raises with Jack 8 offsuit to 80,000. Ace deuce for Zhao in the small. Now, who's in the big blind here? We got Kuzmanas. And 37 bigs behind. I was going to say there's a chance that Zhao is going to push back with the ace combo there. But ace-deuce-off, not so hot 
from the small blind with a player to act behind, who's actually about 37 to 40 big blinds effective mm -hmm. to start the hand. There's an ace combo you can push back with. Max pressure on Mulder, and he's going to lose a big chunk of his stack now. About 16 big blinds playing the cutoff now. Marius Kutsmanis from Lithuania. Can you put uh, Brown in front? Yeah. Okay. Asking Zhao to keep his big chips on display. <laughs> Mali with ace eight. to Diaz, king four of hearts in the hijack. Okay, Fold is Zhao on the button, ace three. Right. Zhao, of course, our table chip leader. Absolutely not going to miss this opportunity to get involved with an ace on the button here in absolute position. Because Manus has a very nice hand, though, here, James. Small blind, queen jack suited. It's the prettiest of all the queen jacks, Nick. The queen and the jack of strawberries. You're going to want to play this regardless, but uh, calling, I think, is, is fine. Maybe even some three betting there. Actually, you don't, don't know what the frequency is at this specific stack depth, but obviously Queen Jack, just a really pretty one, especially the strawberry variety. It's a great flavor of Queen Jack of Hearts. King, Queen, eight. Interesting. So we've got second pair versus a three high flush draw. See that Kitsmanis is a fan of Sundays. That's my fun day. <laughs> my I don't have to run day. With the action check to the pre-flop aggressor, Zhao continues for 110,000. Well, he's looking good right now to make it all the way to Sunday with that stack. Minus calls and still has the best of it for now. That three of clubs, definitely some equity though. Four pairs on the turn and Kutzmanis is now a two, sorry, a four to one favorite. Checks a second time. There it is. Oh, the jack of clubs. Kutsmanis with a decent two pair. Zhao with a baby flush. It's the classic checking for a club move, James. We've seen it before. This is a straight eat, flush eat, paired board. It gets checked to showdown. Queens and Jacks, no good. Three of clubs will do it. And the rich get richer. Cheng Zhao now playing 3.1 million, 77 big blinds. He has the table chip lead by quite some margin. Yeah, doing what he does best. Like the glasses too, interesting shape.
psychedelic Harry Potter glasses. <laughs> what do you think, chat? Nines. Yeri Kasab. 17 bigs to start the hand, guys. What's the line? You're going to want to play them. I think you just open here, especially this stage in the tournament, guys. Imagine you just rip nines and then two players wake up with monsters behind you when you could have just raised, played a very playable hand that realizes the equity very easily post flop as min raise. This way you can raise, you can play the hand just fine. Sometimes a couple advantageous situations for you in the big blind defense with two undercards, etc. But if you open and there's a bunch of action behind, you can still get away and find yourself a pay jump without putting the whole stack at risk. And indeed, sometimes, raise and take it, as we see here. Four of the seven players at the feature table, sub-20 big blind stacks. They're not the only ones in the tournament. There are some short stacks at the two outer tables as well. Diaz has 11 bigs, ace king under the gun. I think this is just a shove now, James. We're getting a little bit too shallow from way out of position. Don't think there's much option. All yep. you can eat. <clears throat> oh, that's all of it. Round to the blinds. Marley's folded the small. Here he's folded the big. So, yes, picks up blinds and ante, and that's going to see him now playing 13 big blinds. However, he now has to post. Yep, straight in the big blind there. But uh, a free big blind and a free small blind from the previous shove. So, you know, staying alive. A7 suited for Mulder. So two in here, 16 big blinds effective, very accomplished player, probably just going to want to still be involved here, though, regardless. Does open none all in, and I like it a lot. You can feel the tension, though, now, James, right? A little bit less jovial. People really sweat in these series pay jumps now, and the opportunity to come back tomorrow and battle it out down to the final six. Well, we've got ace-queen in the small blind. All in, and I believe, yeah, he has Mulder covered to and quickly folding the a7. Well, October, you like him opening off, opening a7 off of what? 12 big blinds? No, it was actually 17, but that's fine. Yes, I do like that. I, absolutely. Even when he runs an ace queen, still approve. And, uh, I'm also pretty confident that he's got about 30 million in winnings. So I guess he agrees. What is the number actually? How much, what, what's, 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 what's two and Mulder's lifetime earnings? Well, bear in mind, Nick, that you're probably going to find his live earnings. I'd be interested to oh, know not if plus you online, yeah. combine that with online, it's going to be a, a pretty decent amount of money. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolute Omega Crusher, live earnings. 6.2 million, but yeah, you're quite right, obviously. Significant portion of that is online action as well. Or not accounted for there, that Correct. would also boost that. Yeah, but well, well spotted. Yeah, no, 
absolute monster, but. Just because it's a little bit tricky to play doesn't mean it's not the right move. Manus has opened under the gun with King Jack. We see the Spraggy folded. Announces call from the big blind. Looking for a little set mime here. Great flop for Jack, 10 of hearts. 10, 7, 5, top pair, flush draw, near enough 90% equity. Fairly stellar board. Pretty difficult not to be winning on the flop. And then if you're not, tons of equity against many hands that have connected. Zhao not going anywhere. He's like, ah, I still got a pair. You're not going to get away with that too easily. And deuce spades in the turn, no change. I'm assuming Kids Minus wants to continue here. Uh, Let's see, Kuzmanis, 32 big blinds behind. SPR, three and a bit. Let's say 60%. What is that, 190? Absolutely ginormous. This is a really interesting size, guys, because like you, you'd really love a call from a seven or a five still, maybe even some worse flush draws. But if your opponent is sitting here with, you know, eight, eight three suited, that's definitely a hand that the big stack can still defend at the big blind. What's wrong with your blind, man? No one wants to play with you, or...? Yeah, I mean, obviously, big size, pretty prohibitive to get called by worse there. But just wanted to end it, it seems. And uh, yeah, fires away, takes it down. Nice hand, sir. <coughs> Marius takes down a really chunky one there. Now third in chips on the future table. Walk off from one of the outer tables. That is Ran Elani, eliminated in 23rd place, was knocked out by Neil Farrell. <laughs> Elani cashing for 31,980. You can hear Farrell laughing in the background. 31,980 euros for Elani, and we are down to 22 now. <laughs> wow, speaking of tune, we got some excellent stats here from Statric. Talking about two and 6.7 million in total PokerStars earnings. 
once did a three-way deal with P.T. Fisherman and Prak478 in the yeah. WCube 2020 main event. Eventually came third for $1.1 million. So that was the first big series that we streamed cards up from the PokerStars Arena. We did stadium series in the summer, but WCube 2020 was where I remember seeing that online handle, Tino Mulder, so much and seeing that horse avatar at so many final tables. Yeah. And yeah, third place finish in that prestigious 10K buy-in main event. Huge score for third place. Yeah, so combine that with the number we just gave you, about 6.2 live. We're looking at about 12 million total. And three cash is already here at EPT Prague for a total of 485,000. That's just this event. First place for in the 25K for 180. Third in the 25K for 105K. And third in the 50K super high roller for 200K. Came seventh in March in 2022 Prague main event for 138K as well. Just an absolute omega crusher. So... Looping back, a seven of clubs, 17 big blinds, still going to find a min raise. Boom. Thank you, Statrick. I appreciate it. about taking your seats table four. <laughs> I'm getting better at working out what the hell is being said on that tannoy. Yeah, it's language in itself. Hand number 144. Tomorrow's going to fold. And Diaz will be folding as well. Round to Mulder. Pocket fours. Starts the hand with 18 big blinds. All in. He is all in. Cheng Zhao has ace eight on the button. Fault. Marius Kutamanis in the small blind with jack three of clubs. Out. Ramon Kalia squeens in the big blind. Yeah, that's a big wake up. And it's a domination situation. Mulder at risk and way behind. This will be an 80-20, James, in the favor of Kalias. These two have to tangle. Not even a plus throw. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Diamonds and spades both cover, but there's a four <laughs> on the flop. A set for Mulder. Domination rotation. Spirit of the horse. Kalias now needs a queen. Turn card. Is the six of diamonds? Well, that creates the opportunities. Ramon said it. There is the adage that it is always coming seven. That would see this pot divided. A queen on the river would see Mulder eliminated. It's always coming. Oh, unbelievable. Always coming seven. <laughs> the straight on board. This will be a chop pot. You know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. Especially Ramon. Oh, what a time to find the Chopperino. Nice work, Ramon. Nice work, Team oh, Pro. Now you. <laughs> so, Mulder survives, but does not double up. Let's get the Let's get
action on Diaz with King Four of Clubs. Folds. I'll tell you what, James, you just never see that stuff live. Classic Joker stars, am I right? Guys, 46 bigs, Marl's 17. Quick fold. Sorry. Yeah, I like the steal here from Ruon. Applying pressure to Marley, definitely feeling the squeeze now with the 16 big blinds. Yeah, she's the second shortest stack at this table. Yeah, Black Elf, you're right. It's so rigged, you just can't make this stuff up. One of my one of my favorite my favorite uh, chat bro comments on the internet. That was good. That was a good one. We have got an all in at one of the two outer tables. Let's head over there. It's John Kite against Caesar Garcia. Kite betting eight hundred and seventy five thousand, and Garcia moving all in for one point four million. Kite makes the call. Garcia showing ace, king of diamonds, and kite tabling queens. The sickest, classicest of races, and a jack, jack, six flop. Oh, wow. Jack on the turn. Five on the river. That is going to see one-time chip leader, Cesar Garcia, eliminated. And it's going to see John Kite retake the chip lead. He's going to have about five million. Garcia cashing for 31,980 euros for that 22nd place finish. Oh, man. Bummed for our elimination friend. However, my friend, Jan Kite, very pleased to see him doing well and have so many yeah. chips. By the way, guys, pretty nice. prolific social media poker content creator. If you guys don't follow him, check him out on Instagram. He likes to post a lot of detailed analysis of the hands that he plays and the tournaments that he plays, and he tours all year round. So pleased for this guy. Really, really want to see him uh, taking it down tomorrow. We'll see if he has it in him. Garcia exiting the arena. And yeah, just to clarify, John Kite just shy of 5 million chips. He is the chip leader now with 21 players remaining. Back to the feature table. Ramon winning a pot with aces. Name on Insta. Pretty sure it's just John Kite. Just like his name. Xiao, still table chip leader. Kalias, second in chips with just over 50 big blinds. Nearly 30 minutes into <coughs> level 25. Blinds will remain 20k, 40k for another 60 minutes. Aces for Zhao. Oh. This guy is a wrecking ball. Starts the hand, 72 big blinds. Makes it 80K. 9-6 for Marley. She folds the button. Small blind out, big blind. Andrea Diaz was 7-4 off. No. Wanted some action, didn't get it. Still chip leading uh, on our feature table. Man, so many big names still in here. James, we're in for a real treat. Loving the action for uh, the unknowns as well, though, of course. Huge moments for all players. So close yet so far. We all know what it feels like to be down to the last couple tables where the money starts to get really serious. 
This is where it counts. Ramon, queen five of hearts, he folds it. Oh, he's out. Jack 10 on the button. Suha, you are correct. Max Neugebauer, who is among the final 21, did recently win a bracelet at the World Series of Poker Europe in Rosvedov. So here we have Diaz in the small blind with Jack-7 offsuit. <coughs> you know how much you have? Not much. Mm. 25. Yeah. Jack-7 versus Jack-Deuce. I know it's not a great hand, but this is not the most ridiculous combo to ISO versus limp. When you have absolute position against the small blinds. And these are pretty high value spots, really, when you think about it. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like you, you get the button back in many respects because you know that you're always gonna be in position against the last remaining player once it's folded round here, but decides to check it. And I think that's reasonable. Jack Deuce, obviously not a great combo in the first place, but playability not so hot either. Diaz can probably just go ahead and just fire right here on the flop. Yeah, just the one third into queen eight six. I think that's the clearest way to win there, James. I just think, you know, with that, with jack seven off, the can's not really going to develop in a way that naturally well, well, gives you an opportunity to bluff more, uh, more, oh, more efficiently yeah. than just on the flop, I imagine. Probably. Did you have cold? Maybe. Why, you wanted to steal my, my big line? Oh, I, I, I uh, yeah. Gutsmanis <laughs> opening with queens under the gun. Raises to 80,000. Diaz has King Jack on the button. 11 big blinds. I don't know, James. I think I'm probably just getting away from this one. Yeah, it's a hand you can open jam with, but you don't really want to three bet with it. I think he's just ha gonna have a quick count here. He's, he is very short, right? 11 bigs, I think flatting is. Oh, okay, he's gonna go for it. And he's going to get cold. Cold. And he's going to have one over card, one live card. And if Queens hold here, we will lose online qualifier Adria Diaz in 21st place. Understandably looking a little bit forlorn right now. <laughs> no king on the flop. I guess a heart would be a sweaty card. Sure. Diaz does have the king of hearts. If it's not a king, he wants a heart for sure. No heart. So it's the ace of diamonds. So three outs for Diaz. Needs a king on the river. Or we're down to 20. River card is a four. So Adria Diaz busts in 21st place. Cash is for 31,980 euros. There is now a money jump. Next player out gets the better part of 37 grand. Diaz departs. 
And Marius Kutmanis now playing a 52 big blind stack. Jow, table chip leader. Mulder and Sprague, now the two shorties at the table, both with around 15, 16 big blinds. Yeah, done very well last couple rounds. Marius on that 50 big blind stack, as James just pointed out, I believe, coming into the big blind. That's why, yeah, right. So came one that uh, ended that hand with about 52 bigs, puts two in for the big blind and the big blind ante. But yeah, done really well to chip up here. 50 bigs at this stage, a whole lot of whole lot of chippies to play with. And on the button, Mulder has complete napkins. Chow with the five tray as well. Might even get a walk now. Hey, hey, easy game for Kudzmanis. Now second in chips at the table. I'm enjoying the pace of this game though, James, right? No messing around, a lot less tanking. These guys here to play, get the job done. We play to win. Start with Marley Sprague. Ace King. Eighty. And a min raise <laughs> from Marley. Not jamming the Ace King. Yep, six handed. She is. I think deeper than you want to be jamming Ace King at this point. Not dissimilar to the Ace Seven of Clubs that we discussed earlier from Two and Mulder. Very similarly stacked here. You're gonna do it with some of your medium strike hey, stuff, some of your weak stuff, some of your strong stuff. I disrespect a little. Bigs for Marley Sprague. She's going to be in the big blind the next hand. Action folded. The turn Mulder. He's out. Table chip leader Cheng Zhao folds queen deuce. Marius Kudzmanis is on the button with kings. He can't be stopped, James. <coughs> Don't stop me now. Raises to 80,000. It's Ramon small blind. Oh, and no. he's got ace king. Oh, man. Ramon here, 49 big blinds deep. I don't think he ever misses an opportunity to three bet this. There is the re-raise. Fistful of 25K chips. He's made it 300,000 total. Aces for Marnie Sprague. What is this? What is this? A three-way all-in. That's what this is. All-in. So... She shoves, and that does reopen the action. Katsmanis wants to see what Ramon has behind. We can see that Katsmanis has him covered. So question is, does he flat and try and get Kolias in, or does he raise and try and get Kolias out? Because he ain't folding, that's for certain. What an absurd dynamic. Button against small blind against big blind. This is unreal. This is a setup of behemoth proportions.
I'm all in. All in. And there's the ISO. So now it's all into call for Ramon, who's put some time bank cards out and is clearly going to think about this situation. I mean, if Ramon does call here, he's going to be in terrible shape. And he does and call. He does. It is a three way all in. <laughs> what a dream spot. <gasps> Marley Sprague set for a triple up. I know, I know. And Ramon on the verge of being eliminated. <laughs> Good oh my for God. TV. Good for TV, yeah. Oh, yeah, I have to give him a reaction for TV because it's just like. <laughs> oh, pure. It's pure. Sorry. Speed's a lie. Ramon looks sick to his stomach. Well, this has been a sick hand so far. Are we going to see more brutality, more vomit-inducing action when the board cards are dealt? Here comes the flop. Jack 4-4. Four, four. One percent chance of survival for Ramon. Oh, man, this turn is going to be sweaty. doesn't matter. Any of the cards coming out are sweaty now. Such a big pot. Deuce on the turn. That is Ramon done. But Marley gets the triple up unless the case king hits the river. Oh, please don't do it. River card is a 10. That is a triple up for Marley Sprague. She wins the main pot. But Kudzmanis wins the significantly bigger side pot rude, and eliminates Ramon Kalias. <laughs> wow, uh, that is that's just no words. That kind of thing just does not happen that often. And look, Marley's reaction goes to show you what an incredible setup that was. Dream spot. Just final 20 players now going down, now decreasing after an incredible triple opportunity. Aces versus Kings versus Ace King. That is one I will remember forever. And some people may question Ramon's call there. But one thing you can't take away from him, he's made another deep run in a major MTT, another deep run on the European Poker Tour, a 20th place finish which earns him yeah, 36,780 yeah. euros. He just, he just he has 2 million, he has 1.9. Yeah. Marley now with 55 big blinds. Marius Kutzmanis with 65 I know, bigs. Sorry. It's okay. It was cute though. It's a big spot for me. It's a very big spot, yeah. Looks like the dealer is just confirming the stacks here. Well, just figuring out the main part, the side yeah, part. Right, right, right. Oh, man, what a huge spot for Marley. Very pleased to see her doing well there. Not a lot anyone can do, as you guys yeah, saying in the chat. Ace King potentially could find a fold. I, it's such a weird dynamic, guys. It's so difficult to describe how different the game is at the highest level. You know, the ISO shove from the button can be a lot wider than I think you guys imagine in your, uh, in your local games or some lower stakes games online or live. And look at this. We're balancing the tables and the tournament chip leader has just been moved to the main stage. Yes. No, I won. I tripled up. Oh, I was sure. I win as well. I'll just but he won't pay at the side the side side. Side. You got okay. the side yeah. Here he is, Jan Kite. Current chip leader, or at least I, we think so. I assume so. Crazy. Yeah, with four and a half million. I'm happy. Yes. 
yeah. chip leader, <laughs> official. Yes, here he is. Yeah. Nice. Man from Denmark. He's a big man, yeah? Yes. Okay, these are not mine. These are yours? No. no. <laughs> uh, I can take them. <laughs> that was a bit, right? You know he's Norwegian. Yep. <laughs> Least convincing bluff ever, Nick Walsh. <laughs> A bit more. I actually did that as a bit for. Could we? Um, oh, who was it? Oh, it'll come to me. I actually did that as a bit, and now I've cursed myself, and I and I accidentally oh, yeah. did do it as a bit. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to see. Six? Yeah, it's okay. Classic. I think six. Six five. Blind v blind, but we are going to one of the outer tables oh. where there is significant action. Steve O'Dwyer all in and at risk. O'Dwyer with deuces. Umberto Ruggieri with fives. And that run out means that Steve O'Dwyer is KO'd. We lose a former EPT champion. The most successful player on the EPT. He's won more money on the European Poker Tour than anyone else. Cash is in 19th for 36,780 euros. We are down to 18. Umberto Ruggieri, back up over 2 million. It was KN Mockery, James. I did a bit with KN Mockery about how he was the king of Denmark. And now I was glanced at the flag and he did the same bit, but then forgot that the flag looks different. Easy game, eh? Now you have the whole table to lift your card. Sorry, John. I prefer win the first. I prefer win the first. Wow, this has been a very eventful 45 minutes. We came back from dinner with 23 players. There have been five eliminations, and we are two away from being done for the day. Remember, when we get to 16, it will necessitate another redraw, but it will also bring day four to a close. The redraw will be conducted overnight, and we'll come back with the final two tables tomorrow. Flags are pretty similar, though, to be fair. Well, that was another pot for Kutzmanis. So I've been advised that what this stream needs right now is some geographical expertise. So we welcome back Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Wow, we. You know, I I um I ran that hand through the solver, and it turns out you're not supposed to run ace king into aces and kings. Really? Yeah. 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 He did the math. Crazy. So that is basically how all of these top pros using these top programs on these high-end PCs are so successful at poker. <laughs> They're able to get algorithms to tell them not to do what Ramon just did. Exactly. Napin says, Mockery is Norwegian too. I know that was the joke when I did it with, with Ken. Nick, never mind. Nick, I, I, look, you it's, can't win. I, I'm never, I'm never going to come back from this, I know. You cannot win. <sighs> come on, chill. I have 6.15 until... Thank you. Blind v. Blind. Well, thanks for bringing me in for the last two uh, eliminations of the night. You guys done great. What did I miss, seven? Five. Five? If there'd been seven, you wouldn't have come back at all. Right. Math is hard. raise from Mulder will probably be met with a fold. But we are going to the outer tables again because we have another all-in. Oh, boy. Mark Hilo is the at-risk player. 
He's got it in with ace queen against jack 10. It's an ace king six flop, king on the turn. Brick River, and that means Halu doubles up. That is not an elimination. That is a double up for Mark Halu. Halu, more like a. Oh, no, wait, he doubled up. <laughs> Feature table chip counts six handed up here on the stage. Cocab and Mulder both on around 16 big blinds. That's your relevant information. Marley might look like she's third from the bottom, but at 58 bigs, Four plus. she is doing just fine. Oh man, better than fine. Fantastic after that setup. Aces all over the joint. We've had aces like four times this level. This is madness. All right, this guy starts to hand with 16 big blinds is going to open. Kite folds. Zhao suited hand. Sorry, Joe. That's all right. Nine do suited for Zhao. And look at that. You can fold suited cards in the big blind. I guess so. Unbelievable. How do you feel when uh, the 25k didn't run because you were in the main? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must really feel like the fish then, huh? No, I'm joking. <laughs> They're like, no. Nah, Good thing he said here. he was joking. No 25k today. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like that time I was joking about how he's from Denmark. You remember that joke? All right. Yep. <laughs> Seven pass. Oh, I guess they didn't play because they couldn't swap with you. Eight pass. I guess that's the reason. One of the two. Yeah. So it's one of the two. Come on. Action's folding around to JK. Just joking. Ten just rates. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding when I said just joking. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just joking. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Raise and take it for just joking. That's right, Joe King. Just Joe King. Thank you, Dark Skies. At least the TV table is quicker now. Huh? At least the TV table is quicker. Yeah, y'all got and goosed. And that feels like days ago. That we were this morning. Yeah, I know. JC on Twitch asked, did Spraggy double? I missed it. Nope, tournament. she did not yeah. double. Like eight hours feels like a day or two. Thank, Thank you for your question. And Pilots on Twitch that says, it's Norway, not Denmark. Are we you know. Are, are, you, are you talking about my favorite Finnish player, Jan Kite? Ace check off under the gun for Jiri Kokab. Just joking. Marley in the large blind. King seven off. Got some chippies to play with now. I think this is fine to let go. I mean, she folded King Jack a couple of levels ago. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're Last six, level, I should say. We're six-handed, so that open under the gun isn't as wide as it would have been if we were eight-handed, of course. But she's uh, she's not feeling this one. Let's it go. I think that's totally cool. In a pretty fantastic situation to find some ladders at this point, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, have any issue playing a little bit more snug if I were sitting in that seat at this stage of the tournament. No, get away from me. <laughs> Ten rays, maybe thousand. Martin Vanderbin, yeah, we're talking about Kite from Sweden, that's right. 
All in. Mulder jamming for those last 16 big blinds over this under the gun open. Ain't gonna get called by it. Hopefully nobody else wakes up with a better hand. Nope. JK, you win. JK, just joking. Mulder. Did he say Denmark? Mulder has his own holiday here in Holland, says Danny on YouTube. I'll bite. <laughs> Like Sprague or? Yeah. yeah. Tank, Your friends. Tank of yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Honey. Mulder with King 10 now. One raise, 90,000. And someone has woken up with a better hand this time. Pocket tens for Zhao. All the way back to Mulder, gives it up. Mulder now firmly short a stack at the table. I'm enjoying watching Mulder navigate this sort of short a stack play here. Like, we're so used to just seeing have him have all the chips and just beasting everybody, right? And you're like, ah, cool, he's got all the chips, he can do whatever he wants. But he's had to navigate this short stack, and he's been facing a lot of pushback as well. Obviously got lucky fours versus queens to find that chop against Ramon after flopping the set, but obviously I think that's a fairly standard shove under these circumstances. It's moments like this that the best players find a way out of the hole. They find a way to duck and dodge, sneak in a couple opportunities to double, a couple opportunities to pick up chips at non-showdown. Before you know it, they're back in the lead again. Yeah, I mean, Mulder did it the other day where he, like, quadruple barreled directly into the nuts, the rivered nuts. <laughs> and uh, and then, like, two levels later, he was, like, over 100 big blinds. Yeah, again. exactly. Never give up, never surrender. Mulder with a hand he can certainly see a flop with, especially given that there was no raise. A 10 right in the window. Interesting a flop here. Top pair, good kicker for Mulder. Open ender for Kite. Who checks it? My God, you rube. Steve O'Dwyer is out. Enough. Mulder trying to get some flop value. Succeeds. And Kite does make the nefarious pair when open-ended. Yeah, Queen Ten's not gonna like that. Not completely out of the realms of possibility that Kite has a jack here calling on the flop. Feels like you just got to check turn a bunch, but Mulder is one of those players with great instincts, lots of experience. Maybe he has other plans. Okay, we agree. Four, five, seven, eight, nine. Nope, not even a straight. So the question you ask yourself is, is Mulder the kind of player that's going to check a turn straight here 
Do I turn seven, which is showdown into check. a bluff? And I, the answer is no. Check, check. Queen 10 takes it. Nice little pop for Mulder. I think that puts him above 20 effective. Yeah, just over 21 bigs now. Who's playing? Who's playing the mini EPT right now? Anybody in that 815 tournament? Get in touch. Let us know how you're doing. If you're not, check it out. We're running mini EPT all week long in conjunction with EPT Prog, guys. And Sunday's mini EPTs, both the $5 version and the $55 version, have gold power passes added. If you don't know what that means, it means a free ride to an EPT stop and a main event buy-in. Oh, yeah. Okay, 18 big blinds and ace queen suited. The min ray is coming in from the cutoff. Kosab, is that how we're pronouncing this, guys? How much you're playing? Seven. Seven total? Kotsab. 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 Optimus Clan cashed in the first mini EPT, but not in the last one, all right? More opportunities this week. I'm gonna let you order next time. Small buy-ins, added value. Okay. I'm gonna let you, you order. I can put you on line. Check it out. <laughs> Mulder all in is definitely gonna get looked up here. I'm just saying, she, she takes By Kotsab. Oh yeah. <laughs> How do you miss this opportunity? I'd rather call him Code Cat because I'm a huge fan of Check Taxi. Like oh, 100%. Yeah. We went, last time we went, we were at UK. Oh. Oh. Mulder is live. What is this, a 60-40? Ace Queen might actually be a little bit more this time. I think you made a video. Nine, ten of hearts, lots of equity yeah. usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Two and Mulder somebody, uh, banking well, on the Grafton. I think they with it or shared it. Or Grafton Aww. pressure. It's like everyone. Yeah, yeah. Everyone do this. Yeah, we spent like... 20 minutes outside disputing a bike, uh, rented some bikes, yeah. he charged us an extra like 50 cents or something, and we, yeah. <laughs> and we went and fired like six bullets in the 2500. <laughs> Here we go, Mulder's fate on the line. Misses the flop pretty hard. Huge flop for Ace Queen with the spades. Mulder is gonna need to hit a very specific card. One of only three of them. Very Pacific. Deuce of clubs is no help whatsoever, but at least he's not drawing dead. Still one last shot for Tino E. Mulder. Spirit of the horse does not connect. A heck of a good time watching to and Mulder in this tournament. A lot to be learned. The sweat is real though, Joe. That was not a nice, that was not a comfortable moment, I should say, for Ace and Queen of Spades. Guess he wasn't covered. I'm talking like he's out of here. Uh, no, it, two and had him covered by just a smidge. He's got like two big blinds left. He, do, he does indeed. He's got a chip and a chair. You know, Nick, yeah, I no haven't one. brought up my catchphrase in a while. Sure. No. So if you're new to poker, new to the stream, I it's... I don't know if it's been him. Okay, I don't know. In all likelihood, Toon Mulder's about to be out. But as long as you're still in the tournament, you still have a chance to win the tournament. You can make a comeback from a stack like this. And I came up with a phrase for such a situation, and that phrase is, all it takes is a chip and a chair. Yep, you can uh, you can take that one home with you, but Joe wants royalties. It. it ain't over till it's over. Yogi Berra had that for baseball. Mine is, all it takes is a chip and a chair, and I came up with that phrase in 2017. Do you remember like the date and the time? I just remember the year, it was so long ago. 
You know, and it's just it just kind of feels like it's been a part of poker for so long. But all I remember is that it, it was in 2017. But was it like on stream that it was born? Uh, no, it's something that I noticed in my in my real life, and then I brought to the stream. I see. Okay. Yeah. I was like, we can go back in the archives and find the moment. Do you remember what the weather was like that day? <laughs> I can't. No. <laughs> no. No more questions. Just enjoy it. <laughs> Kotsap breathing a sigh of relief after winning that hand. Up to 37 bigs now. Is involved in this pot. Mulder is out. One buff. I thought you were using all the time banks before. No socks on Twitch is saying. That's an old saying, my guy. I know it seems old, but 2017 really wasn't that long ago. Kudzmanis with a very fun hand, but is dominated. Queen, nine, Trey. Kudzmanis somehow pairs the live card. Domination, rotation. And a pretty slam dunk calling spot here, right, Nick? Oh, yeah. I mean, actually, probably even a check raise spot, to be honest. Okay. So, Kosab, he's a little bit on the deeper side. It is king queen with the back door hearts, though. So, I think you probably do want to have some raises here. Raise. That is a raise. My man. Once we get under 35, the Guan's effect, if we check raise the top pair a lot more frequently. Not all the time. Still tempered. They're still very conditional, player dependent, etc. It's not simple enough just to simplify it in that manner. But when you have a hand this strong, with some backup equity as well, I think you just go ahead and pump it in. Nice hand, sir. Gutsmanis continues to have a Banger of a level. Still above 70 big blinds. If you got like some weaker Queen X, which of course you will have there some of the time, we flat a little bit more often. We got to check raise top pair some of the time, otherwise, we're not going to be balanced enough to check raise with bluffs too. Martin Vanderbend says it feels like that phrase is much older than 2017. All the uh, all iconic phrases do feel like that. They feel like they've been with us. Yep. Forever. Feels like, feels like, you know, they've lived with us in our hearts forever and ever. Just like that phrase. Timeless, really. Timeless, yeah, timeless. Yeah, it's a timeless phrase. Kite, ace, queen. One day I'll have a catchphrase like you, Joe. You've got predictions. Yeah. Doesn't live in people's hearts. And You've minds. got some catchphrases. You've got. Uh, does he ever lose? Is that my catchphrase? I don't hear anyone else ever say it. I, I guess you're right. I hadn't thought about that. That never happens online. <laughs> I think that's been everyone's catchphrase. Anybody that's ever played on Poker Stars. I mean, everybody uses my catchphrase. All it takes is a chip and a chair, but I still know it's mine. True. Maybe the mods can chime in on this. So rigged, you can't make it up. Is that one of yours? Uh, well, that was actually something a chat pro said that I kept banging on about. But again, I don't know if I can claim that one. Keys to the Lambo. Hey, Lobster. Next game, please. That's definitely mine. For sure. <laughs> That's definitely mine. And, and I think only people that play spinning goes and other ver high variance formats will understand where that's coming from. Hashtag next game, please. I will, I will claim. Uh, yeah, that's definitely something I made up. Mulder giving this a serious think with King 4, knowing that the blinds are coming round. Boom Shock Locker says, all those live online earnings and he's still tanking for day three, lol. At least they know what day it is. <laughs> We're on day four and tomorrow is day five. Who's tank? What? Which VOD are you watching? <laughs> I love that. It's day four, buddy. Good Lord. 
<laughs> Imagine being so hungry to criticize someone that you don't even know what day it is. Hey, I, He's the most useless time traveler ever. Well, yes. <laughs> Vaish. I don't know. I can't really talk. I don't know the difference between Denmark and uh, Norway, apparently. Wait, what now? Yeah, they're the same. JK. Just, just joking. <laughs> okay, are we going four ways to this flop? Heck yeah, we are. Five, deuce, deuce. Does anyone have a five? No. Does anyone have a deuce? No. Does anyone have a pair? No. Does anyone have ace high? Yes. Two people. Ace six. No. Ace queen. Best hand. It's your kids, Joey. We got to do something about your kids. <laughs> Mr. Fusion. Checks around. Okay, that's a spade now. Uh-oh. Zhao and Kuzmanas both with spade drawers. And Eastraw says you should just claim colorblindness. I am actually colorblind, so that's that's working in my favor. Don't even need to lie about it. Oh yeah, if you're colorblind, what color is this? Put it away, Joe. <laughs> Seven, six. It's true, he can't see color. <laughs> <laughs> he would have reacted differently. <laughs> Three checks. Is Zhao gonna check the nut flush draw? Or bet into four opponents. Check. River. Goo! Wow. Nut flush versus second nut flush. Good joke there. Damn, Nick must have amazing vision. That's good. That was a good one. It's Manas. First to act. Now, it does not have the nuts, but man, you'd be damned if you think that this ain't the best hand Yeah. right now. Yeah, look, here, here's the situation. My parents went away on a week's vacation. These are, this is going to be the best hand a lot, of course. It's not even close to the nuts anymore on a paired board, but given the action as well, lots of passive checking, checking, checking. It's uh, it's one you're gonna feel real confident about. Oh, this chicking, chicking, chicking. What the, what the heck? What the heck? Thank Kite is making the call with ace high and the queen of spades blocker, which by the way, isn't real. I mean, Zhao actually might be tempted just to, just to flat now, Joe, on the paired board. This is weird action, right? This is weird action. Uh, it looks like flatting chips are being cut out. That black chip is 100K. That's 190 exactly. You have ace 10, of course. Ace 10, not even close. Oh. King high flush. flush. Ace know. high flush. Good and call, John. Uh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> ace high, no good. Yeah, ace high, no good. Yeah. What a river. If I don't call, maybe he race. Yeah. He should be happy. Maybe. If I don't call, maybe he race. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, nice pot for Cheng Zhao. I'm happy. King deck of spades? Only call? Oh. I like how he's finding criticism with the guy who called with the second up flush, <laughs> deflecting the attention off of him. You're in a strong third there. Yeah. Oh. You're in a strong third place. <laughs> I think they had those two hands. I was Jesus. On yeah. the river. Yeah. <laughs> like, only on the river. Yeah. Well, Almost naturally. Tang, believe it or not, who asked, can you explain why <laughs> Zhao wouldn't raise? It's actually one of the few things I can explain. Okay. The board was paired. And so the only way you can really get called there, unless you somehow are up against I think he's more disappointed than the me. second not flush, <laughs> is if someone has I'm a full house. <laughs> Dick wants to add to that. 
No, I, I just thought you were going to say, this is actually something I can't answer, but I won't. Thank you for your question. Oh, no. No, no, no <laughs> it's rare that I can actually <laughs> no, I, I, answer that. I, I, I think there is some merit to thinking about raising there, given the fact that there was so little action on the previous streets. But, yeah, I, what, what Joe says is pretty much spot on. Yeah, I mean, it's if you raise in that position, can Steph still call you that you're beating? Sure. Are you beating quite a lot of stuff? Yes. Does the stuff that you're beating want to call a raise on that river when another player is already flatted? Probably not. Are you sometimes going to raise to a boat? Yep. <laughs> it just gets a bit complicated. And I guess even uh, very, very rarely also you do open up the action again to just get bluffed. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it yeah. seems unlikely, but sure. possible. Yeah, that is that is another consideration for sure. Uh, I, I don't know if I just flat there, but... Um, it's yeah. There's a lot going on on that paired board that's uh, a little bit freaky when you're in, sitting pretty in the catbird seat already. Okay. Um, this person just said, "Like for real, any explanation for that call?" Uh, it's explanation, and we just gave you one. Thank you for your question. I like this one, bro. If he risey, the other guy was call for sure. All right. I mean, <laughs> Matt's not wrong. King Jack of Spades probably does. What Joe's saying is that's a very specific combo that's very difficult to have when you have the nut flush. Anyway, moving on, guys. Pair of fives, good here. Yeah, Arcadia needs a better explication. Jakana says, I'm sure if he knew everyone else's hands, he would have raised for sure. Yeah, exactly. That was exactly. some serious missed value. Oh, God. Just go touch grass. How many time banks is this on? Ten minutes. It's probably going to be my uh, three out of four. Three out of four, yeah. yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. So John just uh, looking over at two and Mulder's two big blinds and going, how, how hard are you going to tank here, brother? I promise not to look if everyone folds. We are on a pay jump as well, guys. Remember, 18 to 17. 86,780 locked up. Goes up to 42,320. Five seconds. <laughs> the nonchalant time banking while he takes a peek at the other table. Make no mistake, it's going in, my babies. Yeah, this is about as good as it gets. Ah, two and Mulder actually under the gun, not in the big blind, hence the tank. I thought, uh... oh, wait a second. Oh, well, he's certainly looking at something. We do have an all in and a call. Max Nugabauer all in against Porig O'Neill. Nugabauer, King Jack, two tens for O'Neill. If you ain't flipping, then you must be tripping. King high flop. O'Neal already counting out the payout. No 10 on the turn. Ace on the river. That's a double up for Nuka Bauer. Aren't you fucking? Not the ladder that Tuan was looking for, it seems. And he is all in. The red triangle of death is in front of him. I actually have a good hand. I stay by my promise. Good hand. Thank you. I, ha I haven't looked. One by one then. I hope I have two, <coughs> two live ones. Eight is good. Oh, very good. Two live cards. It was only another big blind to call. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, how much? 100? 100, 100 exactly. 100? Pay the man this money. <laughs> That's 
not one of my catchphrases. That's from Rounders. All it takes is a chip in a chair. And Mulder's first chance to double up is now, and it's looking pretty mm. good. Above average. Above average. <laughs> Trip dance for Mulder. That is an above average flop for East 10. Oh boy, that is a sweaty turn. That is always a sweat. Kite can now make a straight to eliminate Mulder. River is an eight, not good enough. Double up for Tino E. Mulder, Spear of the Horse. You know, up to four big blinds. Yes, Andre, Spraggy is still in. Hey, Joe, did you figure out the other 11 noises that horses make? I mean, I'm, it's, I'm good. Right? Yes, the white big line. <laughs> And Mulder's in the big blind this hand. Kudzmanis with ace king. Four raise. 110,000. Marley with sevens. Thinking things decides to get out of the way. Oh, wow. Potential to just call there. I mean, she's just going to get aces and ace king versus king's <laughs> hand anyway. I, I think the other thing, though, here, Joe, is that two and Mulder might re reopen the action if he goes all in here. Uh, so one, two, she flats. Yeah, because he has four big blinds behind, right. not and, four total. Correct. Yeah. And he is also in the big blind, so she might have been concerned that by flatting there, if Tuan, who's more or less committed to this pot, goes with his hand in the big blind, Kutsmanis can then ISO her out, which is a bad, bad spot for sevens. You're not seeing the flop as frequently as he would be if you were closing the action, for example. And that's an astute pickup. I think some people might have missed that. Yeah. Especially someone that hasn't been at this stage of a tournament, uh, a tournament this big before. I certainly probably wouldn't have picked that up. But also, by the same merit, flatting with aces there would be real sneaky, right, Joe? Because the big blind's kind of like, all right, Well, cool, she doesn't have ball. aces for once, does she? <laughs> Five seconds. One pass. Mulder does, in fact, have to fold 6-3, despite having a third of his chips in the middle already. But what has Kite got in the small blind? They, Obviously, speculation is on ace jack, pocket jacks, but I don't think it even has to be that good for him to take a poke here. Five seconds. 750. Four raise, 750,000. Not messing around at all. We're about to find out if it's jacks. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Hai Chihuahua. Hachi Machi. Oh, everybody loves the fold with sevens now. Executing some time bank cards. Aw, 
Austin claiming Kite is gonna ICM pressure him off. I don't think that's possible after this raise to 750,000 has been made. All in. Tennis all in. Kite shoves. Cool. We're gonna be seeing that other card. You can hear the fear in Kuzmata's voice. It's gotta be Jax, right? Big <laughs> Yep, oh, sounds man. like it. Big flip, two black jacks. How much is this worth? 5.3 million pot. Like Krampus versus the Bell's Nickel. I don't know, by love. <laughs> one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. This one for Kuzmanis, tournament life. Rooting for pay jump or double up? Um, <laughs> no. I need I'm some rooting heat. for both of you. I need some heat here. And we are on a pay jump. Good for just under 16,000 euros. Here we go. Jack 10 oh, 10. Wow. That's a boat. Unbelievable flop. Talk about above average flops. Flops Kuzmanis nearly dead. From Svet, yeah. Like, above average. Let's do a king, yeah. Unreal seen, uh, scenes here in Prague. Can we get a sweat like, on the turn? No, AC is for a minute. Yeah. And that turn is not sweaty. Fuck that runs off. GG, Marius wow. Kuzmanis. That King Jack. I know, it's insane. I've never had that in my life. Uphill from there. Yeah. Eliminating. You are blessed. Eliminate Ted. Having 7% so in day four. In, in 18th place. You are chosen, blessed. It's insane. The noble gentleman. For 36,780 euros, and I would have pulled it if he didn't open time. That flop just, benefited yeah, everyone in this tournament. Uh, yeah. He can only blame himself. Team Sweden. Yeah, I mean, he can no, also. JK. He can also <laughs> just do this, and then, like, maybe you'll sometimes you have uh, ace five or something, you know? Yeah, no, I know. But if he have ace five, it's okay. I fold. But like this time, I'm only afraid of queens. Only. And I think like Ace King like 99% of the time. S yeah. Sort of saying that he thinks the sizing indicated Ace King and Ace King alone, apart from maybe Queens. Because it was such a big raise. <laughs> I think I think that was that's kind of the thinking here. And oh I, I sort God, of I, run hot. I sort of uh, tend to agree with that because it wasn't your classic 2.5x or lower. It was, it was almost like a four, a three right? X. Yeah, three. Yeah, it was like. Three hundred and fifty K more or Money something. Jump. Money jump. Yeah, 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 yeah I got it. Yeah. You're and welcome. Two and Mulder, the <laughs> most direct beneficiary of that money jump, considering he still has only four big blinds behind. You have two hundred K total? I have um, one eighty. With the big blind or small blind? With the small blinds, yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, you had two twenty left. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Mulder's all in with King High. 180. The good news is Cheng Zhao can't bluff him. Yeah, I take it back actually, Joe. It's 390k from Kite and then up to 750. So actually not as big as I remember it in my brain. So perhaps just a direct live read. Blessed. Yep. Shouldn't be, uh, I think he was talking about the initial raise. Oh, do 110? Yeah. Ah, I see, okay. okay. Yeah. That was almost a full 3x. I see what you're saying, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Zhao does make the call. Mulder is a favorite, but can't love this spot. Zhao pretty much had a call with any two cards. And Jack Two Softsuit is any two cards. Yeah, two live cards in this case. Are we gonna have the spirit of the horse or are we gonna have glue? Oh, we are having glue. <laughs> it's all over. Bring out the screen and the shotgun. Mulder 
very likely to be drawn dead on the turn. Just a 7% chance with two cards to come. That's it. Another oh, full house. Well, I started doing the what a joy it's been to watch Tino Mulder play speech, but he didn't actually go broke. Can you explanation this hand strat? I cannot. Tino, Tuin Mulder out in 17th place. 42,320 euros. It has been a pleasure. What a fun player to watch. It's been an honor, sir. And that means we are done for the day. Jesus Christ. Cheng Zhao. I mean, what an exciting table this has been. Only four-handed here, but doesn't matter. Absolutely insane. I think there might still be action at the outer table. Yup. Or at the turn. This is Neil Farrell versus Preben Stocken. Action on Farrell. Checks, Farrell in position. All right, so the board reads eight, excuse me, eight, 10, nine, five, 10. Action on Stockenblocken. Yeah, why not? You're time bank rich. You get six more tomorrow. <laughs> and that's a bet of 65,000. Neil before Zod. And Neil nods and mucks. Pair of aces good for Stocken. And that's going to be it for poker today. We thought it might go into the sixth level, but it just about took five. Three and a half minutes left on this level that we'll finish out tomorrow. After the final, not the final redraw, but the penultimate redraw of the tournament. Yep. Let's not forget Feraldo potentially looking for his second EPT title. That is 100% correct. Guys got chunks. Jan Kite representing Norway. 162 big lines, absolute mountains. He's having a great time. Love this guy. He's on the tour all the time, travels all around the world playing all kinds of games, mixed games or otherwise. And he's going to be bagging an absolute monstrosity of chip stack. And let's not forget relative newcomer to the 5K circuit, Marley Sprague, on a very deep run here in some pretty memorable hands. Got coolered yesterday, straight flush over nut flush, and then coolered the pants off of two players herself today. Aces over kings over ace king. And Cheng Zhao, also at least a newcomer on our scene. Fireworks. Bluffs McGee. Yuri Kotsab, a local. Taking 33 big blinds into the Second to last day tomorrow. 16 players remain tomorrow, playing down to the final six, ideally. These are the final chip counts of the four players who have survived this feature table. Tomorrow we'll be back to eight of them, and there will only be two tables in play. No more field. Table on the stage. Outer table, that's it. And tomorrow is when we start getting into the real money. 
Everyone now guaranteed 42,320 euros. But as we start to approach that last table, the jumps get bigger and bigger until the official final table starts earning six-figure paydays. And the real money starts right around what? Fifth place, more than a quarter million, 350 for fourth, 600 something for second, and 1,030,000 euros for the winner. We encourage you to check out the Poker Stars blog for any updates you might have missed today. If you prefer to read a recap or get in between the lines a little bit, the Poker Stars blog is your best place to do so. Some great writers on the team. I prefer reading myself. Join us tomorrow. You heard them. 12 o'clock for the players, 12.30 for you. 30 minute delay, day five of the main event. We'll catch you then. More from Prague, later on. <laughs>